Well, this is Mobier. This is dedicated to the gallant heroes of the Nigerian Biafra War and IPO families all over the world. I remember the Nigerian Biafra War mm, in the thickness of the Biafra genocide. Hey, one my revive the vanishing hope to life. Ah, uh, let the great Biafra army the fight. And they were singing out. Holy, 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 holy. Well, this is Mobier. This is dedicated to the gallant heroes of the Nigerian Biafra War and IPO families all over the world. I remember the Nigerian Biafra War mm, in the thickness of the Biafra genocide. Hey, one my revive the vanishing hope to life. Ah, uh, let the great Biafra army the fight. And they were singing out. Holy, 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 holy.
How about now? Can you hear me now? All right, let me know if you can you can hear me now. You can hear me now. Let me know in the comment section if you can hear me now. Oh, all right, brilliant. So, so, so there it is. Uh, technical difficulties. I am an your man after all. I, I probably just pressed something that I shouldn't have pressed, and and there it is. So let me let me take you just straight to the headlines now. Then, so uh, the headline. Um, uh, hold on. Uh, bear with me. I'm I'm just with. Aha. Uh -huh. So so the headline, as I was saying, so indicate. Hello. You, you you should be able to hear me now. Can you? Yeah, it's okay. All right, brilliant. Okay, so I press on. Thank you. Thanks, Alexander. All, all, all right. So so the headline, as I was saying, talking to myself, but now hopefully talking to you. Buhari regime threatens to sanction BBC over documentary on banditry. So that's the headline that is leading this particular session. A lot of you, of course, already up to speed, I, I think, with this narrative. And there it is right there. So the, the BBC have been able now to identify uh, these bandits that the Nigerian state claimed that they have bounties on, but alas, uh, it only really required the BBC to go and find these people. One of these bandits that the BBC interviewed, the Nigerian state actually had um, 5 million naira bounty on this guy's head, but the guy was nowhere hiding, so I'm not quite sure why they even put They were asking for band for for 5 million bounty on uh, on information to capture this guy. But the guy was in the emirate of his own locality, being, being ordained, being Toban the chief, and he was doing interviews with the BBC. And let the, the, one of the bandits that actually took one of the girls from several of the, for, for one of the endless school kidnappings, one of the bandits, the BBC was able to, to interview this guy. The government told us they did not pay them a penny. The guy told the, told told the BBC that they paid him sixty million naira. BBC asked him what he did with the money. The guy said he used it to buy more weapons. So all of this expose by the BBC. But the bandits, according to the Nigerian state at large, but according to the BBC, they just live at number five down the road. So there it is, right there. But the Nigerian state, as ever, of course, wanting to repeat the Twitter treatment. Regi uh, Buhari regime threatened to sanction BBC over a documentary on banditry. So there it is right there. But there are ebbs and flows in that argument because uh, uh, journalists of no uh, less uh, of uh, prestige as uh, Kadira Ahmed, they are actually back, back in the Nigerian state to say that the BBC documentary was unprofessional. And Kadira Ahmed, by the way, she was BBC trained, but then of course she's at the core a Fulani person. So she backs her clan to say the BBC are in, in the wrong, but the vast majority of Nigerians, of course, they take an alternative view. So there it is right there. Buhari regime threatened to sanction BBC over, over documentary on, band, on banditry. Now, uh, so on to the next. Nigerians drag Lai Mohammed over threats to sanction BBC, daily trust over, uh, over documentaries. So there it is right there. Rather than address the matter, they go after, you know, the, the soft targets. This is it. They, they are asking the, the media space, especially not to report on banditry, rather than them bringing it to an end. Documentary on banditry. Gumi attacks federal government over sanction on media houses. So there it is right there. And, and that is the totality of the Nigerian state wrapped into one. Nigeria's earning from rising oil prices wiped off by subsidy worsening naira world bank stating the obvious so we go to that as well uh governor el rufai reconfirms that he was the first to tell president buhari about viral video of terrorists threatening to abduct him and president buhari so this comes uh really as quite an instructive note it was just a couple of days ago that we were speculating that um 
that are they keep Malam Buhari from the news. And we were speculating that that is why they fly him out of the country anytime that the news is about to go sideways. And we notice that with increasing frequency, they will say that they are opening a supermarket in uh, Dubai and it has to be there because that is a trade embargo or something. And they are doing independence in Liberia. He has to go there. But it's always off the back of um, some major incidents. So we've been speculating about this. And it looks as though that speculation, we may well have gotten that right. Uh, Governor El Rufai reconfirms he was the first to tell President Buhari about viral video of terrorists threatening to abduct him and the president. So there it is right there. So uh, that's pretty much stating the obvious because we already knew that that was most likely what was going on. Non-remittance of dollars by NNPC behind Naira crisis. So CBN, so quite how the uh, uh, NNPC uh, is able to withdraw money from the Nigerian state is something that I have really never really been able to wrap my head, my head around. Uh, so it's something that I have not really been able to wrap my head around. So on what authority with what other audacity is NMPC able to withdraw money from the Nigerian state, it being a parastatal of the state? So this is what they are blaming the Naira crisis on. And that, that secrecy that clouds the NMPC is something that is long overdue to be unraveled. Non-remittance of dollars by NNPC behind Naira crisis, M.A. Fele passes the buck. So this is a story that we spoke about the last time we were on, but it looks as though fresh developments now. Our attackers didn't come to kill or kidnap. Governor Akere Dolo speaks on recent attack. So quite why they came then, uh, I hopefully he'll, he'll explain to us, and hopefully it's not another full of the incursion on that space. Our attackers didn't come to kill or kidnap. Governor Akere Dolo speaks on recent attack. So uh, the Nigerian state, of course, he bleeds the, the last drop of blood out of the Nigerian person. Nigerians to pay more for phone calls and data in new federal government tax. So they'll loot the money, and then as soon as they've looted the money dry, they will squeeze the Nigerian person for, for, for more money via the way of tax. Increase in electricity, increase in petroleum, increase on your data that you are using to... to try to keep yourself together, increase in everything, except, of course, in the quality of your life. Uh, Nigeria has to pay more for phone calls and data in new federal government tax. So there it is right there. So that's the menu. So lean back, kick back, take it easy, relax into it. The usual uh, the usual protocol, uh, click on the like button as you're coming in. Click on subscribe if you, if you haven't done that already. And uh, if you feel inclined, if you want to come join me on the screen, click on this hyperlink that says StreamYard. And as soon as I finish reading out the talking points, I'll let you onto the screen and engage you in a conversation around the talking points. So that is how it works. It's an open microphone session and the open microphone, of course, that hyperlink that says StreamYard. So click on like uh, uh, and subscribe and click on the hyperlink if you feel inclined to come join me. So let's come in now via the K-Guides, your calabash to the ready. Show you can't hear it. Oh, 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 you can't hear it. Oh
And there it is right there. Iku Koneru Agwese, the Kegite. Iku Koneru Agwese, as guys I bring you this. Buhari regime threatens to sanction BBC over documentary and banditry. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, says the Mohammed Buhari regime will sanction the BBC for their documentary on banditry, accusing their platform of amplifying the voice of terrorists. Let me assure you, they will not get away with this naked glorification of terrorism and banditry in Nigeria, Mr. Mohammed said on Thursday in Abuja. When otherwise, when otherwise reputable platforms like BBC give their platform to terrorists, showing their faces as if they were Nollywood stars, I want to assure them that they won't get away with it, the appropriate sanctions will be meted. Mr. Mohammed's statement comes days after BBC's Africa Eye published a documentary featuring interviews with bandit leaders. In the documentary, Abu Sani, a bandit kingpin, said banditry has become a business. Everyone wants money. That is why things are deteriorating from top to bottom. Threats of uh, threats of sanctions against media platforms have become commonplace with the Buhari regime. Before now, Mohammed had threatened to sanction uh, CNN for their documentary exposing how Nigerian soldiers opened fire on NSAS protesters at Lekito Gate, Lagos. So there it is right there, attack the, uh, the media rather than uh, attack the bandits. This seems to be the technique. Nigerians drag Lai Mohammed over threats to sanction BBC Daily Trust over documentaries. Nigerians have dragged the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, over his threats to sanction the BBC and Daily Trust over their recent documentaries on terrorism. Correspondents have reported that Mohammed on Thursday threatened that the federal government would sanction the platforms in due time. Mohammed accused the news platforms of glorifying bandits and terrorists with their interviews and showing the faces of terrorists as if they were Nollywood stars. Recall that the BBC on Monday published a 50-minute documentary titled Bandit War Warlords of Zamfara, which captures the booming kidnap for ransom industry and other terrorist activities. In the documentary, the BBC interviewed a bandit leader who confessed that they bought more weapons with the 60 million naira ransom paid by the federal government for the release of schoolgirls abducted at the government second at the government girls secondary school in ja, Jangedbi town in Zamfara State in 2021. Ado Aleru, a notorious Fulani gang leader who is wanted by the Katsina State Police for leading a massacre in the village of Kadisau in June 2020, was also interviewed. However, Nigerians have taken to social media to berate the minister and the federal government for threatening to sanction the media outlets over the documentary. So here are some of the reactions. So the worry isn't about the insecurity menace the country is faced with. Lai Mohammed is more concerned with saving face and sanctioning the fourth arm of the constitution. This is a joke. Another commentator, been waiting for Lai Mohammed and he didn't disappoint. Always trying to cover evil and change narratives. There have never been consequences for terrorists. There will be consequences for the media doing their job. Another commentator, maybe because it was revealed that Zamfara state government paid 60 million for ransom. The, the soldiers shot and killed a civilian kid that only came to welcome his abducted sister. The government know how to reach the bandits, but are intentionally not doing anything. Another commentator, 
It's obvious why Mohammed made the statement without consulting with NBC. Lack of information didn't cite any law that was broken or state the exact punishment. The whole video was him assuming what they did was illegal and guessing he could do something about it like a village chief. Another commentator, why, why does the Nigerian government desperately need to control the narrative around terrorists and bandits in northern Nigeria? It is now obvious they don't want us to have independent opinions about the violent impact of the country, and this is unacceptable. Another commentator, the, document, the documentary highlighted the conflict in Zamfara as about government neglect and intra-tribal misunderstanding. What makes, what makes this bad? The government is not being honest. Why keep people willing to speak out hidden? Who takes those ransoms? At least now you can't deny their location. Uh, another commentator, how did the BBC get access? And this is the real question that we want to know. How did the BBC get access to the terrorists? Nigerian armed forces need to answer the question. These guys are not ghosts. They have phones and they are even chiefs in Emirates. Shame on our security system. And there it is. Another commentator, this Buhari government have completely gagged our media houses. Have you noticed that our media houses don't really carry any investigative or expose news? All they do is report news that is already in the public domain. News has now become boring. It is sad. Uh, and this is the last one. It says, uh, this was how they banned Twitter. You all are still supporting them. Now they are saying SHIT about BBC again. Uh, 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 and there it is. So, so there it is. Uh, but still on that space, Documentaries on banditry are uh, Gumi attacks federal government over plan to sanction media houses. Renowned Islamic scholar Sheikh Ahmad Gumi on Friday condemned the federal government's threats to sanction media outlets for their, co for their coverage of prolonged bandits' attacks across the country. Correspondents recall that the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, had threatened to sanction two media houses. Trust TV and the BBC over documentaries on banditry. Uh, reacting to the threat by the federal government, Gumi on Friday urged the media not to be intimidated or succumb to official blackmail and to always make the government accountable, especially in view of their failure to protect lives and property. Gumi, whilst, co whilst commending local and international media organizations for their boldness in reporting the magnitude of insecurity in northern Nigeria, said the happening in Nigeria, especially in the Northwest, as clearly captured by the BBC, is more of an ethnic war and reprisal killings and attacks due to government's failure to address well-documented instances of injustice that were initially done to the Fulanese. According to him, the government's intention to blackmail media houses to cover its failure and divert public scrutiny into high-level corruption in military spending and budgetary allocation has been exposed, Gumi said. Uh, what do you expect from a society, Fulani, that were left in total ignorance and lack of education, especially when their primary means of li livelihood, cattle, has been completely rustled by other criminal elements within and outside our security agencies without any effort by government to address the injustices, adding that, adding that till date, Castle Rosling has not stopped. He said many law-abiding Fulanese have fallen victims to official extortion of their cows, claiming that he has claiming that he has well documented, he has Sorry, let me take that again. He said many law-abiding Fulanese have fallen victims to official extortion of their cows, claiming that he has well-documented evidence involving some security agents in which he personally intervened. How do you expect as a government to address insecurity, especially related to Fulani bandits, without addressing such instances of extortion and rustling, he said. He said the frightening development now is that Boko Haram terrorists 
have infiltrated the Fulani bandits and that the bandits are gradually being indoctrinated into Boko Haram religious beliefs and mission. So there it is right there. That just tells you then that it will never end. Nigeria's earnings from uh, Nigeria's earnings from rising uh, oil price wiped off by subsidy was named Naira, uh, the World Bank. The World Bank has projected that Nigeria will not benefit fiscally from the recent rise in global oil price this year as the country continues to struggle under the weight of heavy subsidy payments amidst falling Naira. The global financial body stated this in its Nigeria Development Update report shared via its Twitter page on Thursday, saying that the continued payment of petrol subsidies and the decline in the country's current uh, value will prevent the country from benefiting financially from the global rise in oil prices. In 2022, as in 2021, Nigeria is not expected to benefit fiscally from higher oil price fully. In 2021, whilst our oil price rose by two thirds against the backdrop of global economic recovery from C19, net oil revenue in Nigeria increased by only 4% as production, including condensates, decreased from 1.8 million barrel per day in 2020 to 1.68 million barrel per day in 2021, the report reads. According to the report, this, the disconnect between global oil price increase and the country's earnings exists because the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC, deducted a significant portion of the, federal, of the Federation's oil revenue to pay for the petrol subsidy. The report further projected that the decoupling will continue in 2022. Owing to low oil production, the large sum spent on petrol subsidy, the weakening value of the country's currency, and the higher apparent gasoline consumption than in the past. So the higher apparent gasoline consumption than in the past. So you have to read into that. So what they are telling us is that the increase in petroleum consumption in Nigeria has spiked up significantly with no apparent reason to justify it. So that is to tell you that a lot of this uh, subsidized oil that they're importing, they're actually now even smuggling it out to sell at a higher price. So that is what that paragraph means. So let me reread it so you can understand it fully. The report further projected that the decoupling will continue in 2022 Owing to low oil production, the large sum spent on oil subsidy, the weakening value of the country's currency, and this is the pertinent part, and higher apparent gasoline consumption than in the past. So what has led to a higher consumption of gasoline in Nigeria than in the past is the question. I cannot think of a reason. One of the major oil exporters, uh, as one of the major oil exporters, Nigeria is supposed to be one of the major beneficiaries of the rising price of oil, which has been largely tied to the sanction on Russia following its unprovoked invasion of Ukraine. The Central Bank of Nigeria CBN on uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria CBN stated in May that the recent increase in oil price does not, however, translate into higher revenue or any improvement in the country's economy in the country's external reserves, I should say. The projection comes as the president, let, let me take that from, from actually a paragraph above, above. The Central Bank of Nigeria CBN stated in May that the recent increase in oil price does not, however, translate into higher revenue or an improvement in the, uh, in the Nigerian economy's external reserves. The projections come as the president, Mohamed Buhari regime, drastically depleted Nigeria's excess crude oil account from 2 billion left by former president Goodluck Jonathan in 2015 to $376,000 in July 2020, 2022. Meant to be a savings cushion that stabilizes government revenue 
and acts as a lifeline for the economy in difficult times. The ECA is a federal government health savings account that is funded by the, diff by the difference between the market price of crude oil and the budgeted price of crude oil as provided in the appropriation bill. Also, correspondents reported that the Naira crashed further in the parallel market, trading for 710 to the dollar in, ex in, in the exchange platform Aboki Forex. The price of 13 crude oil samples, the price of 13 crude oil samples in the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Country OPEC basket was 123.21 per barrel in June. But on Wednesday, it fell to 100 per, per barrel as concerns over a slowing demand over road reports from the sector that showed a larger than expected decline in US crude stockpile. Recall that the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the World Bank have repeatedly urged the Buhari regime to stop paying subsidy, stating that doing so would worsen the nation's fiscal deficit and debt situation. So there it is right there. So there it is right there, convoluted and uh, whatever. But as the price of oil continues to spike up, Nigeria's uh, uh, fortunes continue to dwindle. So that, if you ever wondered what an oxymoron is, that is what it is right there. As the mainstay, the breadbasket, the breadwinner of the Nigerian economy, as its price continues to rise up, the Nigerian uh, economy continues to, to, to debate. Uh, <laughs> so there it is. Uh, Governor El Rufairi confirms he was the first to tell President Buhari about the viral video of terrorists threatening to abduct him abduct him and President Buhari. Governor El Rufai has reconfirmed that he was the first to inform President Buhari, uh, pardon me. <clears throat> Governor El Rufai has reconfirmed that he was the first to inform President Buhari after the threat made by terrorists to, ab to abduct him and President Buhari. A statement released by his special advisor on media and communications, Muywa Adekeye, reads: Malam Nasir El Rufai hosted a live media chat in uh, Malam uh, Malam Nasir El Rufai hosted a live media chat in Hausa on Wednesday, the 27th of July, 2022. One of the questions he fielded related to the deteriorating security situation. His response includes a reminder of the fact that he has for at least five years advocated for robust action against the terrorists that are menacing our people, including bombardment of their locations. He further disclosed that he briefed President Buhari last Sunday about the gravity of the security situation and informed him that the terrorists had made threats to abduct the president and himself. As a digitally active press, uh, as a digitally active governor with a significant presence on social media, he was the first to draw attention of Mr. President to the viral video making the rounds that day. It is incumbent on him to share information with the president without producing without prejudice to any security or media reports that the president may receive from any other sources. The president had not seen the viral video at that time, uh, at that point in time. The suggestion and storylines by a section of the media that this amounted to a failing by the security agencies to brief Mr. President is not what Governor uh, El Rufai expressly said in the House language interview. At all times, it is important that the media exercises restraints and ensures contextual accuracy in reporting and avoid issues that may arise from or be lost in translation. We must not, by acts of commission or omission, 
glorify the terrorists or demonize officials charged with the duty to contain or, and destroy them. Nigeria's security challenges should neither be politicized nor deployed to mislead our people. So there it is right there. There it is right there. Uh, so Buhari the first then to inform Malam Buhari that the terrorists want to capture him. So from that to this, non-remittance of dollar by NMPC behind Naira crisis, CBN. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, says the non-remittance of dollar, uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, says the non-remittance of dollars to foreign reserves by the Nigerian National Petroleum Co Corporation, NMPC, is responsible for the Naira's free fall in the official and parallel markets. On Thursday, July the 28th, the Naira traded for 700 Naira to the dollar at the parallel market and 415.96 to the dollar at the official market. In a report released, the Apex Bank said the NNPC and its subsidiaries are the sole managers of crude oil which accounts for more than 80% of Nigeria's foreign exchange earnings. The CBN in the report pointed out that it does not print Forex and cannot be the ones to make it available. The report titled, uh, The Forex Question in Nigeria, Fact Sheet. So this it reads in part. Domestically, there has been zero dollar remittance. Uh, domestically, there has been zero dollar remittance to the country's foreign reserves by the NNPC, insisting that the CBN does not print dollars. As noted by the CBN Governor Godwin MFLA, monetary policies alone cannot bear all the burden of the expected adjustments needed to manage these difficulties. It is our collective duty as Nigerians to show up the value of the Naira. According to the Apex Bank, Nigeria earns foreign exchange from four sources, proceeds from oil export, proceeds from non-oil export, diaspora remittances, and foreign direct slash portfolio investments. The bank noted that the past six years have been characterized by two recessions triggered by a slowdown in the global economy, as well as the effect of the C-19 pandemic. Considering Nigeria's heavy dependence on oil export for foreign exchange earnings and government revenue, the impact of the oil market crash severely affected the government's Naira revenue and other microeconomic aggregates, including economic growth. Hence, the rate of exchange between the Naira and other currencies have widened over the past few years, the report said in part. Uh, in the key uh, uh, on the key facts about the economy, the Apex Bank said the CBN issues legal tender in Nigeria, Naira, and does not print foreign exchange. It said the pressure on the Naira has both local and global perspectives. There is an abating demand for foreign exchange for both goods and services, thereby creating a demand challenge. The current exchange rate of the Naira, like other major currencies, is not driven by cryptocurrencies, uh, is not driven by cryptocurrencies, given the volatility in the cryptocurrency space, which lost over two trillion in the past two years in the face of high inflation. The high inflation in other climes and the hike in interest rate has heightened pressure on the exchange rate. This has triggered capital flow reversal from emerging markets and developing economies to more advanced economies. The United States dollar is gaining against all major currencies in the world. The imbroglio in the Nigeria's uh, tertiary educational sector has triggered an exodus of students from Nigerian schools with its attendant payment of fees in foreign exchange. Summer travels by Nigerians has also impacted on the demand side 
of foreign exchange markets. It said, according to the Apex Bank, Nigeria is not producing, hence the propensity to import uh, is directly affected. Uh, according to the Apex Bank, Nigeria is not producing, hence the propensity to import is directly affecting the value of the Naira, but the Apex Bank has attempted to address the challenge through policies such as the RT200 FX program, 100 for 100 policy on production and productivity, Naira for dollar schemes, anchor borrower, etc., 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 etc. The bank said all these and many others, uh, uh, the bank said all these and many, many of its other initiatives were aimed at diversifying the economy, stimulating production, enhancing inflow of foreign exchange, maintaining the stability of the Naira against other currencies, and reducing foreign exchange demand pressure. So a lot of nonsense, but there it is right there. The Naira continues to drop. So now, this are uh, now the goings on in our war. Our attackers did not come to kill or kidnap Governor Akere Dulu speaks on recent attack. Governor Rotimi Akere Dulu of Fondo State, Governor Rotimi Akere Dulu of Fondo State has reacted to gunmen attacking a construction farm in our community on Wednesday night. Correspondents reported earlier that two security operatives were injured in the attack which caused panic in the community where Catholic worshippers were killed by gunmen weeks ago. Uh, commenting on the attack, Akari Dunu said the gunmen had no plan to kill or abduct anybody. He also urged residents not to panic. I want to allay the fears of our people. Clearly what happened here on Wednesday night was not an attempt to kidnap anybody because they went away with nobody. And we have on the premises over 100 people living there. Yes, there were sporadic gunshots at the wall, but they never went inside to kill anybody. The only two people who had some gunshot wounds were security men who they saw outside the premises. So it is clear that their intention was to attack one or two equipments there, which they did. Their explosives affected the tires and windscreens of another vehicle. So I'm not quite sure what that means. That doesn't really add anything to anything. Uh, so no, 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 that doesn't add anything to anything. Were they there to rob? Uh, what was their intention? So you say they're not there to kill, but what were they there to do? Nigerians to pay more for phone calls and data in new federal government tax. The federal government is set to implement 5% inclusive excise duty on telecommunication services in Nigeria, a move that will make Nigerians pay 12.5% tax on telecommunication services. Minister of Finance, Mi Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, made the announcement on Thursday, July the 28th. As a stake at a stakeholders forum on implementation of excise duties on telecommunication services in Nigeria. Speaking at the event organized by the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, Ahmed, who was represented by the assistant chief officer of the ministry, Frank something or the other, said the 5% excise duty has been in the finance. Uh, Act 2020, but was not implemented. The delay in its implementation, according to the minister, was as a result of government's engagement with stakeholders. She said, payments are to be made on a monthly basis, on or before the 21st of every month. The duty rate was not captured in the Act because it is the responsibility of the government uh, uh, the duty rate was not captured in the Act because it is the responsibility of the President to fix rate on excise duties and he has fixed 5% for telecommunication services, which includes GSM. It is public knowledge that our revenue cannot run our financial obligations. 
So we are to shift our attention to none or revenue. The responsibility of generating revenue to run government lies with all of us. So they want to squeeze you to lose. So so there it is right there. So there it is right there. So those are the talking points. So let's now see who's available to take them on. So um uh Ovie, I see you. Uh uh, uh Sonny, I see you. Saki Fida, I see you. Somebody coming as great. I'm sure that's somebody that's changed their name to come and uh, annoy people, I'm sure. Uh and I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this. Uh but agency, I see you, and then Thomas, I see you. So good to have you all, gentlemen. Uh, let 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 me, let me kick it off with uh, let me kick it off with Thomas. Let me kick it off with Thomas. So Thomas, let me come to you. Uh, are, are you ready, Thomas? Or yes, please, I'm here. Oh, all right, brilliant. So so let let let, let, let me let me come with you. Let, let me kick it off with you, Thomas. And uh, to kick it off, then uh, so Buhari regime threatened to sanction the BBC. For reasons of uh, carrying out a documentary that uh, you know exposes uh, where the bandits are. Oh man, good evening, everyone. Uh, we miss you, one man. <laughs> yeah. So we greet I, we greet everyone, the panelists and our listeners. Please share, um, like, and subscribe. Uh, God bless. Uh, one man, I did. I was. I wasn't aware of that video until the last session that uh, you mentioned it, uh, then I, I, in my spare time, I, I tried to look at the video. One man, the video is well duty. What is still, uh, what, what I'm still baffled about is, one man, how come this BBC uh, news, uh, in investigative journalists or what they do, did, how come they walk around, drive around in their cars and did this video? And Nigerian governments are telling us they don't know where these people are. They can't tell us that the police or the army or the soldier didn't see all this thing going on, all this documentary, because that documentary is well detailed. And they were moving around in their cars. Those guys are flaunting their weapons. They are going around. It, one man, I, I, I think I am finally listening to what Inamde Kalu is saying now. Maybe that guy is really right in something that is said about these bandits, that these people, they are there, the government is not ready to do the, the job. Because they can't tell us that they don't know where these people are. One man, in a nation, not in, if, when I watch the video, my, I'm telling myself, is this Nigeria or Benin Republic or Kotonu? Are they sure this video was shot in Nigerian soil? It is it's very disgracing. I, I, I don't I don't even I, I watched the video. Come on, which video? Is it the video that was dark in the night? No, the no, BBC, no, no. The, 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 BBC, the BBC one. I have not watched BBC one yet. Uh, you should go and watch it. Um, you should go and watch it. Well, well, it's true, was, though. Is it not the, true? What is true? It's going on in Nigeria right now. What has been uh, all this kind of Boko Haram shooting? War in the north. From the videos <laughs> me have seen, they were invading uh, Abuja. That's the video me I saw. Oh, oh no, that, there's a BBC video that came out uh, about two days ago where they went to actually interview these bandits. Ah. The, uh, yes. And one of the bandits that they interviewed is a chap called Ado Aleru. So this guy has a bounty on his head for reasons of committing a massacre uh, in, a, in a Katsina state. So, uh, so they put a bounty on his head, the Katsina Police Command, which is to say that that guy is wanted by the Nigerian state. The uh, information to capture him, 5 million naira. But the BBC were able to easily get to this guy and mm -hmm. this guy was boastfully telling the BBC 
that he doesn't kidnap people, that his boys kidnap people, that yes. he just kills people. So if he's wanted for a massacre, they are both the, the BBC is able to get him and is boasting of a massacre, and there he is still on the street. And what does the Nigerian state do? They want to sanction the BBC, but uh, let's hear from Thomas. Uh, no, no, I'm one man. They also did a party for him. I think yeah, no, they, 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 they turbanned him. They to, yeah, they turbanned him. Uh, yeah, so I followed it, but I didn't really follow. So, him. so they, imagine that the Nigerian uh, security forces that is funded by countless billions of dollars every single year. There's nothing they say they want that the Senate does not sign off. They say they want this guy. But the, it's been turbaned in his Emirates with, with uh, security personnel, being interviewed by the BBC, boasting about killing people. <laughs> but they are fighting. It's a, it's a joke. But you I'm back to Thomas. Uh, man one man. And you remember when they turbaned this guy, you said that he's commissioner for police or something for a fear for police in that turban, in that gathering. So, so one man, if if Lime, one man, Lime Mohammed, I don't know, I don't know what, I, I, did, did that guy has children? Because if, if, if people, if, uh, I remember uh, last time, um, what they call it, uh, Senator Ogunlewe, one man, you need to listen to Senator Ogunlewe's interview um, on channel, maybe Channel or Arise. He said, these people doing damaging control for government, that is what they were paid for. That, but in their heart of art, when they got to their house, they know that what they are saying doesn't make sense, but that is what they were paid for. That's what they were paid for to do damaging control for government. One man, I don't know why how Nigerian government will sanction BBC. I don't know. I don't know how they can do that. It doesn't make they any can, sense they to can me. And they will, if they want. How how will they sanction them? They, they will ban them. Yes, they are recognized government. Anything North Korea has done, Nigeria too can do. You know, okay. just use North Korea as example. All right, Thomas, let me show you this snippet from the BBC uh, interview. So the, I fast-forwarded it to this space. The guy you'll be seeing is a guy that I went to kidnap. Uh, um, anyway, you, you listen to his own words. This is one of the bandits who led the attack on the girls. It took me five months to contact him and another four to persuade him to meet. I eventually met Abu Sani deep in the forest. Can I take you in the Sukkot Oka Yara Ajengebe and Mata? Correct. Can I take you? Yara no Kukat Oka, Mata no Kukat Oka. That you do that, Tamani. Like a game with the lead in the South Kadoka and Matana. Because you want the Kakata, you are so key. Akahara two room in a jam in the Muki, the Mukati to very move down. How many views does he have, please? Namari Mosala, I keep some just some of the rules and give Muka for your Maka and Tatunda Sohana Mumuchi and Muzugida, Luli Mokata Matar. Because you look at Loko and Maka and Tanjan gave. So, okay, can I get any token? Yara, the boss, somehow, was so covered. They didn't eat to move a business item that had dainty. She knew who couldn't see the dash at a boom net. She sent a woman of boom net. A gun is going. Then that was a tidy move at a woman of course. She won it a mutual day. She got Nike, they are a matter of your point. Yet, of course, the there is a good must allow the age of one. No, but you might only miss Ali on the killer. She's a keeper and dirty. That's an auntie, you don't kill a he there. That I'm a cone, you go to the rich here. You don't cut car on his eye, Maka Dibu. The Haka Daka, I give you a magic chatter than the beginning. The one that came in order to have a cook to buy the yard down. The duty of the one that came was over the wool she was doing. Mamudi, Ila, one of the Simuna was happy. I'm moving with you, what a damn one day. 
Kamu dah muzik, abang dah muzik ni muzik, abang nak timu fata mata lagi sih ni kau. What does it mean by the all of this is inflicted disgrace on the government? Sorry, sorry, what was that? What does he mean by all of this? He said he doesn't care. Okay, that then he said all of this is inflicted disgrace on the government. Oh, 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 I, I would suggest that maybe later you go and watch the documentary in, in full. Um, it's on the member section, on the registered member section of the community tab. And you are a registered member, so you'll be able to. I've posted it there for 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 the registered members. Uh, but uh, but uh, you have watched it, have you, Thomas? The documentary. Yes, I yes I did. Uh, I so did. so 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 that guy you saw, of course, he kidnapped three hundred uh, uh girls from a girls' school, and the um the the interviewer was trying to plead to his conscience that how do you sleep at night? He says, look, I don't really care. You know, my heart is darkened. You know, and I want to embarrass the government and I've inflicted humiliation on them. The government told us they didn't pay them a penny. They, uh, he's telling us they paid him 60 million naira. What did they do with the money? He bought more weapons. So there it is, the story of Nigeria. Uh, uh, one man, I, it, it, it's a disgrace to Nigerian government. And one man, I noticed something about Buhari. Because these people is, is this people. Maybe that is why they are not trying to go after these people frontally and 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 just curb this menace. One man, it, I listened to that man. I said, ah, does this happen in Nigerian soil? In our country. And BBC went, carry camera. Enter car, go to their call, call, call places and did this video. And nobody, nothing happened. They were not captured, they were not disturbed. And Nigerian governments want to sanction BBC. Sanction them for what? As they threaten as well to sanction CNN about the answers. What what really happens? Nothing happens, one man. BBC is different from the Twitter, the one they banned the other time. So we should be giving BBC kudos. And you said now, one man, you said Ahmed Kadira. He said the what they did is unprofessional. And you can see this now. That is another tribe on that soon. Why would Ahmed Kadira, as educated, uh, informative, uh, informative person that she claimed she was, she, she, she is, and saying what they did is not good. It's not, it's unprofessional. What is unprofessional? And one man, why will our own mainstream news uh, house, why can't they do these things? Are they not given opportunity to do this investigation, if investigative journalist? But they are not, they, they are not, is the thing. I, I, but but somebody came outside from somewhere, somewhere, maybe from Europe, from UK, and did this details, very detailed information. It was some things I don't think Nigerian government even know about these things. One man is it, very, is it very ugly, very ugly, and is a slap on Nigerian face. Um, um. Let, let me let me share another snippet of that video with, with you for the benefit of people who may not have seen it. You are wondering why we are alarmed. This is why. So this next guy that you will see is the guy that I was telling you uh, is a bounty on his head for reasons of massacre in Katsina. So uh, the state say they want him, but the BBC are able to find him, and here he is boasting of his ways. Authorities in Zamfara think there are as many as 30,000 bandits out here, split into around 100 heavily armed gangs. Ado Aleru commands one of those gangs. He is one of the most feared warlords in Zamfara. The police have put a bounty on his head of 5 million naira for his role in a recent massacre. 
Aleru sees his violence as the only way to attract the attention of the government. So, so you had him right there. Uh, you, uh -oh. you, you had him right there. I don't kidnap my men, kidnap. I, I just kill people. So, uh, uh, just casually, <laughs> you know. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, sometimes I will, I, will, I will ask myself, am I from Nigeria? <laughs> because something that we hear, we will, I, I will just be saying, it, can this be happening? Countless it, millions it, of dollars it, to hunt down these people. The BBC uh, was able to track them down and uh, they, they drink, uh, drink, drink in tea and chat about killing people. Uh, uh, one man, it, it's to, to me, they, they are not the Nigerian government don't want to do it, they don't just want to do it, they don't want to stop this menace because these people we are you are you showed now one man they are not in the pluto they are not in the mercury they are in that same soil nigeria so uh, one man is it, is sometimes we 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 you remember one time one man i asked you don't you see any good news and you asked me said if there is good news, you will you will, you will, you will at least share it for us. You even told us that any good news you see in Nigeria, post it to me on the comment section or on your Instagram so that you can bring it. So, one man, I I hope the next government, and I'm not sure, maybe this thing will even stop. If a full man, a military man, a prudent man, a so-called... Um, so called, uh, uh, what the, what Baba Baba goes what, to, what, or what, 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 what the BBC has, what the BBC has exposed is that there is no war against banditry in Nigeria. There, there is none, no, not a single one, because you see how confident those people are. You see how energized they are. You saw, you see how easily they are strolling about in communities, taking chieftain titles, being hailed and celebrated, and openly talking about their atrocities. Confidently, boastfully. So, so uh, uh, these, these people are not hidden. They are not hidden. They are not hidden. hidden. That's what. Remember what I said earlier on that. How can they be walking on the street, and our, our operative security said they can't capture these people? And you remember one time you brought us a news that they will even collect taxes before they allow people to go to their farm to farm collect taxes from people, from the citizens. 
Uh, so now they are they are too they are, well, man, I can say they are government on it, on their own because it's all the government is the only one that have the right to collect taxes from the citizen. But if they can collect taxes from the citizen, they are small governments on their own. Well, man, I it, this thing is not going anywhere. And you rightly said it. You you make that comment comment very good that there is no fight against terrorists in nigeria we are just we are just joking we are just joking one man oh uh, let, uh, let's just move on to another question one man oh, 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 hey, I'm, I'm being frustrated now i don't want to make some derogatory comments oh, 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 um ho hold on um all, all these things are coming up again no i don't know how they cut through all these uh adverts for uh so let, let, let me take you to the space then uh Niger nigerians to pay more for phone calls and data a new federal government tax so yeah it's just this endless squeezing of the nigerian person uh you know so so really uh everything goes up uh, apart from the quality of life in nigeria <laughs> well man if people are paying more on fuel they are paying more on diesel one man kerosene now is 850 per liter Kerosene that we claim is for the poor masses. That if you are, if there's no how you are poor, at least you will be able to afford to buy kerosene for your stove. Kerosene is now 850 naira per liter. Diesel is going to 900 now. Some, in some instances, they sell it 800. Some places, they sell it 850. And now they want to add to the tariff of the, what they call it, of the in, um, internet or when you are you are subscribing or you are paying um, subscription on your phone. Uh, uh, it, 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 one man, it, the, I don't know why people in Nigeria are not ashamed of what is going on. When I got here, that is when I discovered that I don't need to pay for internet on my phone. Immediately you subscribe, you, we, we don't buy data. Immediately you subscribe for your phone monthly. I pay $55 monthly. Everything is there. Yeah, but you're paying it for it now. What do you mean you don't buy uh, No, no, no. What, what I mean in Nigeria, and even call, calling. You know Nigeria, you have to buy call card differently to call out. And you have to, sus you have to buy data differently. It depends on how you buy data. Some people don't buy it. We can't hear you. We can't hear you, man. As I said, he's buying data. I said, I level with that. I level when it is not to buy data. People, they will do it the same way they do it for abroad. The same day in Nigeria. No, no worries. No worries. But back to the matter. So if they want to increase the tariff again, they've increased, they already increased the petrol, uh, the, the NEPA, PHCN, um, something. Um, the, the, uh, one man, is Nigeria is going to a level that even for people to hit will be very difficult. One man, sometimes when I send money to my mom, mom, I sent money last week. You said, my son, the money is finished. And we started, we, we want to be saying this is how we spend. I said, don't tell me how we spend the money. When he started telling me this before, I said, how much is the liquor of rice? We, I, when I left Nigeria, this is how much they are selling it. He would tell, tell me how much they are selling it now. I would just, I would just keep quiet, one man. I said, no problem. When I get home, I will, tell, I will, send, I will send another money to you. And we, we say this often. That if Nigerian in the diaspora stop their remittance in that country, we don't know what will happen. But can we leave our children, our, our our parents? Can we leave them in hunger? We can't do that. One or two people on this platform, we want to build something in the house, like something to fall back on. We we can't do that. We will still have the cause to send money to Nigeria. So, uh, uh, one man, it, it is it is just it is just a, it, it is it's, it's unheard of and is unfair for all Nigerian um, citizens 
wallowing and swallowing in um, in poverty every day. One man, let's just move on. Yeah. Oh, all right, thank you. So, Thomas, let me go on from you to Ovie. Uh, so, Ovie, are you ready to go? I hope your system is a bit, uh, because we are sounding a bit woofy just now. Uh, are you ready, Ovie? I think so. Oh, all right, brilliant. So, so Ovie, let me start you off with uh, where I started uh, uh, Thomas from. Uh, so, so, there it is, and there it is. So, really, the war against uh, uh, insurgency and banditry in Nigeria is a non-existent war. I think we can categorically say that now, because not even the top most top flight bandits, the ones that you could easily capture and parade as a success, they are working freely on the Nigerian uh, soil, uh, boasting about their atrocities, inviting international media to come and inter in in interview them to celebrate their ways, but the Nigerian government is telling them that there's a bounty on their head. So there's no such thing as a war against banditry in Nigeria, obviously. Uh, well, man, I think I question the motive of BBC. My question to them is that why, what is the point? What is the reason for going out with the documentary? I mean, there should be a reason why they are doing it. I really want to know, are they doing it? Is it for the Nigerian people? Is it for the government? Why are they doing it? Because for- Why, 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 is, it, why is a news outlet broadcasting news? Well, I mean, if you want to go there, there's a business, they are business entities to make money. If you want to, if you want to reduce it to that, to that definition, that's what they are there for. <laughs> it's to make money now. B B BBC, BBC is not actually a business enterprise. It's a public service broadcaster. It, it's a, it's, a, it's it, yeah, it's, it's actually paid for by tax. Who, who are they serving? What do you mean? So the Nigerian people. Yeah, I need I mean because these are the I think you need to understand where the federal government is coming from this too. Because for me, just from based on what you even just showed, the first thing that you showed there, I think there is a phrase there, the guy the, where the, the BBC was saying that it took them five months for them to even agree on that, another four months for it to them to agree to sit down. That means there's a lot of negotiation that was going on back and forth. Right. So what is the reason? Because now, now look at it from the terrorists. Because, because, because they are doing an expose. What do you mean? What are you talking about, my guy? They are doing an expose on a topical issue. Is that not what news platforms do? Good. Now, let's let's look at it from the angle they are doing the expose from. What are they exposing? What are they now? For them, for the terrorists to actually come to that agreement, that means they have their own set times. This is what I want you guys to put out. This is how I want it. This yeah, is how they I want it. They, they have a, their own what? They have yeah. their own demands. They have their own demands. This is what right. you want. This we want. This is what we want out. This is how we want want it out. Before they agree, because he said it took them months back and forth before they agree. So now, if that if that is what play out, that means you are coming. You are heavy the kind of the propaganda. Today, as we speak, they are over. They are about sixteen to seventeen million people in the north are listening to BBC House every day. Every day. That's how much they, 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 you know, they, they want. Sorry, you said huh? they want something. What is what do they want? They wanted what? The, the bandit, the terrorist. What did they want? Just can you just listen to me before you ask? Uh, you 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 are listening to interrogate me. You are not going to get anything from oh, me. If you listen because we're saying something, and I'm asking you, can you repeat what you just said? And I, think I am I'm asking you what to watch. I am just insinuating what they could have asked for. If if I'm a terrorist, if that's if you are bringing the camera to my face, I will tell you what I want out before you even agree to sit with me. He said it. They went into November. What are you What are you saying, my brother? No, no, what let are him you speak, saying? For goodness' sake, no, let, let him speak see. now. Let him. If, you, if he's not said anything, then what was he been carry on over, please? Good. So for them to enter negotiation for that long, that means they actually made part of their bargain, if not everything. Now you are showing that kind of a documentary that seems to be glorifying what those kind of lifestyle those guys are living. Out of these 16 to 75 million people that have been consuming this niche network in the north, there are few people among those people that say, you know what? I think I love this kind of lifestyle. If this guy, based on what they are doing, how much they are making, how they are spending the money, and they can be hearing all over the world via BBC, I think I should take that part too. They are not listening to that. Now, the man himself that they interview, one of the goals of such individual is to reach the pinnacle of their career, whatever that career may be. Everybody is talking about it now in the world. 
So it's a win-win for them. So that's the question. That's why I, that's why I, I raised that question. Why are they doing it? What is the motive for them? What, what, what are you, it, sometimes you don't seem to understand these things. BBC is a news outlet. Okay. Their, 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 their stock in trade is to, is to do uh, expose news on topical issues. This is an expose. This is an expose news on topical issue. So that is that exactly is, their stock in trade. It, it is. It's, yeah. it's nothing to do with Nigeria. It's just a news item that was pertinent to space and time, and they got the opportunity to present it, and they did. And you are saying they negotiated back and forth. Of course, of course, they will negotiate. Do you think they will just phone the guy and we say, "Come down"? What exactly. Are you, that one man, you, this you even, one man. Sure that you understand this. You thing. are talking about BBC. It's a British corporation. However, right. you want to put them, it, they it, have interest that they are serving. They are not serving Nigerians. They are not serving me and you. However, you want to put it. Oh, I don't care. Right. Free all right. Just, just, just do that. I don't yeah, think you get this. It's an entity, either government entity or private entity. There is a reason why that corporation has been set up. <laughs> so, of course, it does have to be questioned. Anything they do, we have to ask. Why are you doing it? For which interest? For the Nigerian people, I for the government of Nigeria, who we need to know. I think that's where that uh, question is coming from. From for, the for, 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 for the for the the BBC was set up as a news platform to disseminate to, to disseminate information. So is who as, set it as, up? As, as, uh, huh? Who set what, it up? What do you mean who set it? What nonsense? The what British the, government okay, okay, it up. Just, no, just do just do that thing you want to do, and then let me move on. No, this, what this is it British corporation. It is British corporation. It's an entity started oh, by okay. some people. Oh, 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 right. go, go, go on and do it, man. Uh, no, 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 nobody is impressed. So nobody is impressed by this storyline that you adopt, by the way. Nobody has to you be can impressed. Do it, nobody, that, you know, it, it I'm not, I don't have the financing. Nobody should have the financing. Why, why did they set up I'm the BBC? They set it up to attack Nigeria. That's why they set it up. No, if no, that's no, how you no, work, that's no, how you no, put no, it no, in no, fine. No, then you just do you just no, agree no, to my point. If no, that is no, how you see it, what of you is a big old entity for government What of you is saying is this. You see, if, if we check what led to this issue of banditry in Nigeria, and that makes it a real business now, is the press. And I'll make a, a, a reference to what happened with Evans. Evans. Oh. It was when they were showing, oh, the houses he has in Magodo, how much he has made, you know, those life and he has left and everything. And most, some people will look, oh, I don't even have to work much. I don't have to go go and rob a, 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 an home or a bank where I can be killed. I can just calculate myself with a group and we go into this act of kidnapping and before you know it, we will get a lot of money. And so I can is it, wait, it, wait, wait, wait. Can I, can I interject? So you are saying is the price for... That led to those that because they saw what kind of life Evans was living it before it was happening. <laughs> so, so <laughs> what he's wow. saying is... is, is, is I understand the angle you are coming about that. Yes, no, no, you don't understand anything. Do, 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 do you know what a non sequitur is? A non sequitur. It, it, it's an argument that is lacking in logic, especially in relation to what is being discussed. That's a non sequitur. It's a oh, but carry on, just do it. I don't want to get into well, my, all I'm yeah. asking. I'm just asking questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm asking questions. Yeah, they said, that they set up the BBC to attack Nigeria. Like no, BBC is an entity set up for a reason. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I'm I'm to, I've told you why they set up. I've, I've told you why they set up the BBC. They <laughs> set it up to attack Nigeria. So carry on. Okay. Okay. Well, if that is how you and if that's how you put it, then that you've just just made my point. <laughs> no, you didn't make. You didn't. You didn't make this point. <laughs> Over here, you are trying to say that BBC is some kind of spy agency. I didn't say that. He said no. that. I asked a question. Why is it set up? He just told me. So don't okay, put it. Don't okay, put the word before but, me. But, That's not what I okay. said. Okay. I'm only agreeing with what he like said that BBC is about. But okay, okay. what of the substance of the report? What of the substance of the report? No, you don't no, want no, get anything. Of the report. Oh, no, nobody denied that report. report. That's another thing you need to have. Not deny that what the content they show that is not true or is not a fact. That's not my contention. My question is that what is the motive? Because the, the because there is more. You are not addressing not the content. You are not addressing the uh, content sorry. of the. Sorry, Thomas. If I muted you, I did not, it for a reason. That is not the question that was asked. Now the question is that why is the federal government say they are going to sue BBC? If I might paraphrase, one man, am I right? That the fact that the federal government is questioning it, that is what we are discussing here. Just to, no, for the, me, no, just no, no, the, the, go on. 
They just they three start to sanction, to sanction the BBC, not sue them. Oh, exactly, because they see something wrong before they make that bold statement. Whether they are going to carry it out to all, they are just bluffing, you know, but they have said something. And there's a reason why they said that. And I'm trying to see why they say that. You know, they say, ah, <laughs> this is what I just questioned. I'm asking the question that I believe that the first also federal government come to, but, you know. Why, why are you asking why the BBC was set up? Then that, that already is, you know, is not consistent with the conversation. What anything do you mean why that is in existence, one man, any institution, anything, there's a reason that it is in existence now. Yeah, everything now, all reason. right. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Everything here is in now, and I'm asking, what is the motive? That was my first question because there must be a motive. What is the motive? Man, can address, of the BBC? What man? Can you allow me? What man? I must say the motive is bad. I don't want it to spiral, though. What man? I have not said. I have not said the motive. I have not said anything bad about the motive. I have not said the motive is bad. I have not said more BBC. I have not said anything bad against them. I only ask questions. He just stood at this to see from that angle. BBC why could be good for all I care. I'm not. I'm not saying that is not a fact. But that's no, my did, question. Why, is that. why, why? Why did they set up the BBC? I, I, what, 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 anyway, what that's man, the question if you I know, ask. if I know, I will not ask you. <laughs> I'm, oh. see, I'm not asking. Don't forget that I'm oh, they, set, they, set up, they set up the BBC for all of the reasons that news information is set up to 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 disseminate information to to the general public. That that's, that's the purpose of. Uh, Okay, okay, and I said that, 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 that and I said the documents they show who is it for is it for the general masses, is it for the federal government? That's, those are my questions that I no, have. No, it's for but private viewing, it's for private viewing for select people. because yeah. one man there's three sides to a coin, there's the oh. air detail and the edges. BBC just told their story. What the federal government says or other story, but there's the truth, and that is what I'm, uh, I'm concerned about. So I that's that's what informed those my questions because what you are showing me you are showing me a warlord who's pretty much living an average life who is succeed you succeeding in whatever he's doing I'm not saying it is your prerogative to to say that is wrong or right but I'm telling you the reaction that that is going to trigger among the people that you are showing it to it's not necessarily going to be positive there's also negative that of these uh, the things that you are showing us too and one of the negative aspects yeah, is that they are going to be people out there that will say you know what. If this is how this is being rolled, I think as I find a life here, I will do it. The people Ovi. are thinking like that too, and that's what I'm just pointing out. Ovi. And the man himself, what is his gain? The guy that is killed, he said, I don't, I don't kidnap, I only kill. What is his gain in all this? Ovi. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Can I, can I give you an example? When people okay. make video games, some people will watch it, play it, and become violent, and some people will just enjoy it. You can go on and on and on and on. Oh, what was the purpose of the game being said there? Because some people will watch it and become violent. That's not why they made the game. They made it for people to enjoy. They made the broadcast for people to view and have understanding and knowledge of what's going on in the country. Yes, some people will use it as an opportunity. But some people use it as also something good and be aware of what is going on because without that thing people will not be aware people will not raise alarm people will not want to protect themselves so you are trying to make it seem like there's an agenda people always have okay, their own this, this thing. what you just okay. said so people it's always have their own different points of view Sorry. at the end Sorry. of the day there's no Sorry. propaganda or agenda behind it it's just Sorry. a situation what you just narrated, there's no way I'm going to argue with that. Yes, you just say there's a reason video being is we put it out. But you should also able to stand the criticism that is going to come for that because everything is not going to go your way. And that is what the federal government is doing. Questioning why you are doing that. If you cannot give me a good explanation, I'm going to sanction you. So what is what is okay. what is so oh, out of place okay. in, the, in that? Okay. Well, we all know we all know why okay. we are what? sanctioning them, don't we? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can I hear you. you. Okay, what is your own view to this? Are you are you are you looking what are you looking at it the government way, or you're looking at it as a Nigerian that this thing is really affected? I swear to God, if you guys actually if you guys actually if you guys actually listen not to attack me, everything that you just as no, I no, narrated no, 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 it in I'm my not, story. I'm, I'm not attacking <laughs> you. I'm not attacking <laughs> you. Because I'm also curious why the federal government is reacting the way they are reacting. 
I'm also no, curious. You don't, you, don't, you don't have to be. The, the government what? has always been this. They've always shown this side to every story that doesn't go in their way. It's, 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 it it's not something that we know today. My guy, but, my guy, point, my people say, oh, 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 on the Nigerian government's successes against the banditry, what do you think the government's stance would be? Ah, uh, exactly. <laughs> but if, if no, sorry, if the if 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 government approve uh, the documentary, no, is that no, 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 no? If the BBC did a, a documentary on the Nigerian government's successes against banditry, how well the Nigerian government are doing? How do you think oh, the Nigerian oh, government will do? What will how react? do I think the Nigerian government will do? Will react. Oh, of course, if any time, any time anybody produce positive side of government, of course they will only react positively. That's right. that's not uh, that's not. Uh, of course, right. that's why I'm saying. That's why I'm saying when when I when I when I see uh, the so, government so, criticism. So. Wait now, one man. I ask myself, why is these people criticizing this documentary? I do ask myself too. Yeah, so and I'm you've not already answered to... now. You've already answered the question now. Yeah, so you, you, if, 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 uh, can you hold right. on, please? Let, can you let Ovi speak, please? Uh, you know. So um. You've already answered the question of you. If you are saying the, the, if the BBC had produced a documentary to celebrate the successes of the Nigerian government against banditry, that the Nigerian success, the government would embrace that. So if the BBC now produced a documentary that is critical, shows the Nigerian government's ineptitude, then conversely, they will react in the manner that they are reacting. So you've already answered your own question. I, I think Ovie is lost. I think we've lost Ovie. Uh, there it is. So, so, so there it is. So we've lost Ovie. He's frozen somehow. So it's let's let, let's go from Ovie to let us go to let's go to uh, Emilokon. Let's go to Emilokon. Uh, uh, Emilokon, are you ready to go? Yes, I'm ready. One man. Uh, brilliant. Did, did you did you see the documentary and do you have a reaction to it? Yes, I saw the documentary and um, yeah. I. I think um, my reaction to it is that it is it is okay by me. I'm telling you, uh, and one way or the other, the truth must come out. And the truth is that the government have demonstrated um, ineptitude towards the situation. And will I even say ineptitude? Maybe I will say um, this lackadaisical uh, attitude towards solving it. I think there's this inactivity. This. Uh, uh, how will I even put it? You know, it is it is a conscious inactivity, in my opinion, towards this towards solving this problem. So, and if they don't want to solve the problem, and they've tried, you know, they've succeeded in nipping the the media space in Nigeria from doing any form of um, uh, investigative journalism that can really shake and rock their boats. So. <laughs> It is it is good that an outsider should come in to come and show us what is really happening. That this thing is not difficult to solve. And of course, we all know, everybody knows, except if you're not just if you don't have the common sense to make judgments like this. Everybody knows that you can solve this thing if you truly want to solve it. It doesn't take too much of a commitment as a nation to to, 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 to tackle this kind of issues. But they've shown that they don't want to tackle it. I don't know. Maybe it's because it is a source of um, it's an avenue for them to 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 you know to embezzle monies. Because okay, I heard of the news the last time that over a billion US dollars was allocated again. You know, just to tackle insecurity. What is this insecurity we are talking about? Here? <laughs> that they needed over a billion US dollars, and it is in that money that we heard that the former uh, chief um, Alvami staff was able to, you know, he had the cash of over one point something billion naira in, in both his office and his home. And this is how they've taken this opportunity to, you know, to just greedily put themselves in position that they can't even exhaust whatever they've got they've gotten early. It is it is just not done that way. So it's it, it doesn't matter the way BBC got it because I believe this is this must have been the work of an independent uh, reporter who went in the who have been and maybe sold it to ISB. That BBC is a, is a business entity as well and wants to put their name in there for every nation to know that oh, they are doing their job. So it does, <laughs> they can as well just say, okay, they have no side to the story, it doesn't pay them in any way. There's the only thing they, they, are, they are gaining here is their own name that oh, this is we 
what we do, and we can go to the nooks and crannies to get information. I think that is their own gain there to put their name into the space of people. But the fact is that that is the truth. These people are accessible, but the government doesn't want to. And I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's just a crop of few people who, who are who we call the government because we call the government as if it's it's ill, but definitely it's just a crop of people who should make the right decisions who have just refused to do so. And now it's getting out of hand gradually. That is it, in my own opinion. You, you see, what really, what, what the BBC documentary has exposed is that um, these bandits, and this doesn't come especially as a surprise to anybody, but it is it has been exposed, that these bandits are actually... They're, they're walking about in open glare. Yes. They're, not, they're, they're neither true. hidden nor are they hiding. So they're, they're there on display for anybody and, and quite rested and known in their own society, community. Yes. So, so yes. <laughs> boasting about killing people, it, it's quite staggering. Quite staggering. It, it, is, it, is, it is really sad. Seriously, one man. It is sad that this is happening. It is, it is sad, but that's just the state of the nation we found ourselves. That is what the, the corruption they brought onto this government, that is what it has, it has to, to this nation. This is just the result of it. And the, the, the generations now are suffering because of that. It is really sad because I don't know even why it was Buari even brought in the first place. It was brought in because we believe that he could solve this problem after he has the experience as a general in the army, you know that, okay, you'll be able to put one or two together and use common sense to make judgment, like, say, okay, we can go this way, let us go this way. But throughout his tenure, we've heard of, you know, I have a younger brother who, who, who went to war in the military. And the news he told me, you know, the stories he told me before he had to disappear from there, one man, it's not something that one can just continue to see open up, you know, openly like that. But it's really, really crazy. Is it from training some members of the book who around themselves, you know, even to giving uh, wrong, um, uh, what do you call it now, wrong information, passing wrong, uh, you know, even they, they even sabotage the information they give these guys. Oh, go this way and they vote. those people we are going there to meet have already known that, yeah, they are coming. And you can just imagine what will happen. So, you see, there are a lot of things that, <laughs> if when you just look to, to the common citizens, you, you don't really know what is going on. But but it just boils down to what the head of this state is doing. What is this man doing? And how is he even tackling these issues head on? Does he really want to solve the problem? But I don't think Barry is even ready because apparently maybe he, just, he was just there to enjoy the accolades of presidency to wave hands when he's traveling out to say oh this is the president of nigeria and nothing more i don't think he was he's even ready to you know obviously he was not even ready to contribute anything in terms of intellect or to advance the nation someone came there and yet in six months he couldn't produce in uh, his minister saying he was trying to comprehend this whole situation of things and yeah when he brought in the ministers who are the people you can just imagine. R it, R me amici. He brought Rote me amici. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can see. Uh, left again, God doing the mafia there for, for over seven years. Doing what? Now, look at what's happening. Running, down, running down the economy. So, look, you, you just see that it, it is the Nigerian space to, to govern Nigerian space is not too difficult, if you understand. But you can realize that what we are with the problem we are in now, it is. It is something that someone has intentionally put in, put us into by their conscious inactions and and their deliberate wickedness. That is just it. But, but you, are, you, you are saying, Buari, he may not even be aware is what we are starting to conclude. Uh, Governor El Rufai reconfirms that he was the first to tell President Buari about viral video of terrorists threatening to abduct him and President Buhari. So uh, uh, Buhari was the last to know about this video. I think we all saw it when the bandits, when they were flogging the people they kidnapped on, uh, on the Kaduna the Abuja. Abuja. Uh, yes, yeah. and, and saying that they are going to come after Eruvai. Uh, Buhari did not know until a couple of days ago when, uh, when uh, on Sunday actually, when Eruvai met him and then told him, uh, look, what, look at this is what these people are saying. So it looks yeah. as though they are, they are even shielding this guy from the realities on the ground. This is what we're oh, seeing. Man. The people will shield him from the reality, but it's because they've known him to be a dunce. That is the truth. They've known him to be a dunce who won't go for information himself. Look, the 
problems of Nigeria now, who should not even be able to sleep? Who should be able to, who should be the one sitting down and listening and trying to get, because after, at least, you should be able to know now that one way or the other, your people are receiving information from you because maybe they don't want to know. They've been praising you. They give, you know, this cycle fans that you keep around you. But you should be able to now sit down and question yourself. What are people saying outside? For instance, when they were opening, uh, you know, launching the new NNPC limited issue um, company like that, look at one of the singers that they brought there. The lady performed sorrowfully. Now, what was the news later on that the presidency said it was a disrespect? Come on. That is a pointer for a, a leader who is in introspective, who is insightful to say, come, okay, what is happening? There are little, little pointers. If my people around me are praising and giving me uh, wrong information, I should question myself if truly I am wise enough to lead this nation. But apparently, the guy is not even concerned. He is not, he is so aloof, and I think it is deliberate. <coughs> he, he, he just wants to enjoy the, the, the accolade that comes with being the president. You know, the real Emile Kong, Emile Kong, he has, he's the one who have even done that. Nothing more. Nothing more. It is, it is, it is sad. He should be able to understand that oh, this is what is happening. Okay, pick little, little information. Listen to the news yourself because I know there was a time, you know, they said he listens to the news every day. He doesn't want people to, he wants to know what is happening first time. But we can all see that it's a lie. It's a lie. Uh, 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 all right. So the Naira continues to hemorrhage and the uh, central bank governor are called to come and give account. And he is telling us that uh, non remittance of dollars by NNPC behind Naira crisis. So, uh, I mean, just a lot of things opened up there. What, what, or what audacity or what authority does the NNPC, uh, a parastatal of government, have to withhold funds from, gov from government? What is being done about it? What sort of auditing uh, facility is that a uh, portfolio under? And why is the country being, uh, is that, and is that even sufficient enough? For, for what we're seeing, the, Nor the Naira hemorrhaging, I think it's nearly 800 to the dollar now. So people excuse again from every feeling. Well, man, look, <laughs> you can't be tired of people excuses because even we've seen the worst of that. When when somebody can confidently tell a whole 200 million people that um, snakes swallowed over that something million Naira in the office, <laughs> a gorilla took this number, you know, we have we have been denigrated to that point. We have been disdained as a nation that we 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 can be, you know, we can be gullibly told a lie to our faces and nothing will happen. We are we have been shown that we are just that coward. We don't we don't we know everybody just moves on on the average. So so it's it this this you see there's this set of people who have understood the system to the point that they are like gods in Nigeria. They can do and undo. And nobody questions it, nobody interrogates it. If you want to try and interrogate it one way or the other, you'll be silenced. You see, how can how can Emifile confidently say that? If not that, he understand that nothing will happen. Because actually what he said, even, even a, a secondary school student knows that it is a lie, and not just that it's a lie, but it is foolish to say that. You know, but the fact is, they know nothing will happen. Look, to run a con uh, an economy to make the Naira strong, it is not rocket science. Even though it is, of course, if we say it is not rocket science, it's not that it doesn't come with its challenges. But for those who call themselves skillful in that line, it is not really rocket science, it is basic economics. It is basic economics. How do you manage to uh, parallel markets? You you might you call one the 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 uh, what do you call it? the 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 you say this is this is the true this is what you want to define as a currency and you let the parallel market run freely because of corruption. How do you want to stop? Now there was a time he came. He said there was a a a website that was projecting falsely the naira and that was why the naira was going up. Aboki FX then, he even said he would fight anybody. You know, he was so shameless about it. 
But that is what the Bari government has brought upon us. Shamelessness is the other of the day for all of these guys. So you see, do, do you think the disparity between the um parallel market and the official rate, do you think it is something now that they should correct and they should let the free market dictate the value of the Naira? Because what tells us is that uh, if they are changing Naira at the uh, CBN desks at uh, 415 thereabouts to the, to the dollar, and the parallel market is selling at 760, 780, then that just, that just, that just leaves that window for, for arbitrage, for round tripping, you know? So yes. the, the, the cousin yes. between the two should not be more than two Naira, or there about, be... or, or, or let the market just decide the fate of the Naira. It's, the just, it's, just, it's just a recipe for, cor for corruption. That is it, one man. That is it. That is just the thing. It, is a, it, is, it has been a recipe for corruption, and it is now a full cost meal of corruption. That for you to tackle it, you have to fight the, the Tom, Dick, and Nari who are involved in this. It is now a full meal of corruption. The thing is that. In order to cope this, we have to stop this Buru Joshin business and let banks take over this exchange. Anybody that wants or, uh, foreign exchange should go to the bank. Go to go to do go to countries that uh that they have good economies. This is how they protect their, their currency. If in fact for you to even bring a dollar into the current into the system, you 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 will give details of who you are, what you're doing, and how you came about it. At least, oh, this is why you are using the dollar. This is why you're bringing the dollar to the system. And if you want to take it out, you know, you have to go through a process. It's not that you just go to a corner and then there's an abuki somewhere doing it and exchange. Of course, there's a demand for it. Yes. Let me look up. I understand. There is a demand. Yes. The Hello. The problem, the problem is not the road exchange as such. The problem is it's a systemic problem. Uh, you see, uh, a CBN that is not totally independent from the control of the executive. By the executive, I mean the presidency. Uh, the presidency has some cabals uh, who have interest, and they use this guy. I mean, it's it's a whole lot of um, it's a whole lot of um, issues that are connected that are intertwined. Uh, but the thing is, it's systemic in the sense that uh, a country that is not producing, uh, at this point, I don't even know if you guys listen to our rise, when some people were trying to compare what uh, the governor of CBN tried to did, uh, do. Uh, with, with the Russians. The CBN of um, Russia. Russia, right? Mm -hmm. I, I listened yeah. to the news. Well. But, that, but, that, but then that, why it worked in Russia is because Russia has, uh, they have a very good, uh, I mean, they don't, they, don't, they don't import fuel, they don't import gas. They have refineries that people refine this product and sell it. They don't have a whole lot of capital flights like we have in that country, Nigeria. Uh, a lot of money moves out of that country. But, but rational mind. Rational mind. Right, can I, I want to, my question is... Up, no, no, what you're, what you're saying is already wrong anyway, because that was... Yes, I agree with one man. It's wrong. Yeah. You know? It's wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. That's it's wrong. wrong. It's wrong. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. But continue. What are you guys saying? You say it's wrong. I mean, let, let, let one man speak. You say it's wrong. Can, I can I explain? Uh, well, okay, go on, go, sorry, but you will probably well, get it wrong as well. Only, no, only no, I get no, it right. From my right. point of view, yeah. I know what Russia is doing, you know. Yeah. It's not about import-export. Every country mm. can do it. Every country can even export, in, sorry, import as much as they want. It should, it, if you stop yeah. it and you slow it down, it won't really affect the currency that much. It won't really cause much change. The currency has to be backed by something. What Russia is doing is they are now using their resources as a standard to back their currency. They are using it based on their gold reserves. They are using it based on their oil reserves and natural resources, which will not really favor Europe, you know, because that means they will not be dealing in euros anymore. Now Germany has to start paying Russia in rubles, you know, so right. they are increasing the economy using common so, sense. So wait, 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 let me finish. Said, now let me finish I, i'm explaining it to you which which uh um, no no what, what what you're saying is also wrong let me tell you what the russians are doing it's very simple the, the russia russia is the 
main exporter of gas to, to, to European Union and one of the largest exporters of oil to the Euro European Union as, as well. So the denomination of our, of our trade for those uh, commodities uh, traditionally has been the dollar. But now they are saying that uh, for the purchase of, of Russian uh, uh, oil and gas, that um, it has to be paid in rubles. So that, that, that is what is showing up their, their currency. Because now this, what, yeah, what people, people what then, said. yeah, people then have to move the dollar to the ruble, which strengthens it. Also, they've got, and this is a policy that forward suggested for Nigeria and Africa. They've also said that any company that are uh, that um that that is uh, trading in in Russia, uh, eighty percent of of their revenues, uh, it has to be. It has to be it has to be converted to, 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 to the rubles and, and and within the country, uh, you know, which is a policy that Africa should also uh, yes, be, be, be doing. Yes, so, so, this is what I said too. That I said Gaddafi too wanted to do it when he wanted to set up an African Union and be trading in one currency, you know, before they so gave. Woman, the, so, 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 yeah. The point. <coughs> you, have, you have a way of saying something. Can I say something real quick, please? But that's what you I have I a way of saying. Oh, sorry, sorry. Can I say something, please? You have a way okay. of saying certain things here, but um, you give a you give a very very wrong impression to so people who listen to us. Right. You said we are wrong. We are wrong in what we're saying. Like what you are saying is right. And what Solly yeah, just said well, to well, you, well, well, what I said was right. What you were saying was wrong. Well, man, can I just continue? <laughs> <laughs> it's the fact that everybody is right. It, it is we are saying the same thing in our own different ways of understanding. You know what saying, then? Saying you are you're wrong. Like I see, uh, what we're saying is even totally out of what we're talking about. No, no, no. What you were saying is wrong. It won't work. What 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 did you say? Can I say something, please? I, I will allow you, please. What did what did you one man say that is different from what Solly said or what I said? What is wrong? No, with no, us? What you what, said? What 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 what, 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 what I said? What, what, what I hold on. What, what what I said was more frontal and more explanatory of the yes. It, it is more oh to the God. heart of it than that. That makes what I said wrong. What, they, uh, they it, 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 well, okay, but okay. It makes it not. It makes it not quite not quite right. Okay. It's it a delay tactic for the currency. Yeah. One more. Let me continue, please. Uh, no, guys, no, let me no, oh, oh, Sorry, it's okay. Oh, it's okay. Oh, oh, it's... All right, back, back to you, Emilio. This is rational mind. Thank, uh, thank you very much. Yeah. This, the fact is that we have all said the same thing in our own different understanding. So, if you understand the economics, we are still saying the same thing. Basically, there's the demand for the ruble. Oh, please, can I let me? There's no need for when it gets to your time, you can just please. Thank you. Huh? You see, there's a demand for the ruble. That is it. Either we the in every way Russia has tried to make sure that the demand for the ruble is higher than that of the dollar. They don't even want to deal with the dollar. And in that regard, so far there's a demand for it. It comes says that when there's an increase in demand, there will be an increase in price. It's a normal thing. So it's not a big deal what Russia have done. If we understand the basic economics of, of life, it's not a big deal. They've only just done it with will. And that's what we are lacking in Nigeria. That's what the government is lacking to, to do it, it will, because there are cabals who are siphoning the system and who doesn't want the system to be right. The moment the system goes right, those people will be in trouble. So, and those people are, are they, they are the ones who have and want for budget. That's what the Yoba called them. <laughs> understand the point if you don't understand. It means the kingmakers, the people who are there, okay, it is your turn. All you know, this these people are just there to, to siphon the, to the economy. Because okay, I'll be explaining somebody stealing the resources of the whole nation. As I was as I heard, and it is alleged that over 75% of, of the oil is in Nigeria is stolen every day. And nothing is done, no news on it, not, not even if there is no what we did, what would they even do? But where is the will to solve the problem? It is because there is no risk, there is no reason to solve the problem. They are not ready to solve the problem, they just want the system to be like this. And that is what, and that is why the, the Naira is crashing, they don't care. Go to those houses in Abuja, you see empty houses where they have stolen dollars doing what? Run the dollars that should run the economy, but some greedy people have just you know that's but that is just how how crude their thinking is because it is crude to be greedy, 
when what's your your general your tenth generation can't finish spending, but because of this our culture of materialism and 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 subjugation, because when when you are rich, you subjugate other people to the point that you become their god. You know that is what is ruining the country. Oh, oh, so oh, oh. in terms of immediately, not he, he, the guy is he should have been taken out of the system. He should have been you know he should he should have been sacked and bringing somebody who can do the job. But they don't want it to be like that. And until Nigerians wake up, and that's why I say we should get our PVC. It doesn't matter if we vote Tenumbu or P2B, even though I support p 2 It doesn't even matter. But what matters is that people must become aware politically of, of their future. I know that their future depends on who they vote in, so that that person can be accountable to them. Oh. And that is, that is my submission. All right, brilliant. Well put. Uh, so before I take you on to another talking point, let me just clear something up. Uh, that little contract huh, with a uh, with a uh, uh, rational mind. So this is why I said you were wrong. Only because I listened to the explanation. But uh, uh, here it is uh, in the words of an expert. So listen to this. Every day it's the same headline. Your fuel is more expensive. Your favorite food has gone missing from the shelves. Your domestic currency is losing value. Tonight, let's focus on the last one, your currency. Chances are it has lost value in the last few months. Take the Japanese yen, for example. It's down 18% compared to the US dollar this year. One dollar now equals 136 yen. And this is a 24-year low. Compare that to February when Russia invaded. One dollar was equal to 115 yen. You see the difference? Same story in South Korea. Their currency is called the won. In February, one dollar was trading at 1,200 won. Today, it has reached 1,300. The Philippine currency also crashed today. One dollar now equals more than 54 Philippine pesos. It's the lowest value in 17 years. No currency has, spared, has been spared in this crash. The Indian rupee we've been telling you is down. The Chinese yuan is down. The euro is down. But guess which currency is not down? The Russian ruble. Let me show you some numbers. On the day of the invasion, one dollar equaled 85 rubles. Then came the sanctions, the trade embargoes, the boycotts. All of it was supposed to break the Russian economy. Do you remember what Joe Biden said back in the month of March? He said the ruble is now rubble. Well, that rubble is now the best performing currency in the world. It is up 35 percent this year. One dollar now equals 53 rubles. The question is how? How did this happen? The sanctions were supposed to make the ruble worthless. So why is it setting new records? Because of three reasons. Number one, Russia's capital control measures. The central bank has designed policies to keep money inside Russia. I'll give you an example. Imagine you run a company in Russia. You have business operations outside the country as well. Every year you earn $100 million. According to new laws, 80% of that revenue will be converted into rubles. In this example, $80 million. Such measures have increased the demand for rubles. It kept capital from fleeing Russia. Reason number two, gas payments in rubles. European companies used to pay Russia in euros. After the invasion, Russia changed that policy. They demanded payments in rubles. So once again, demand for the Russian currency has gone up. Reason number three, import controls. If you import more goods, you need more dollars. But Russia has done the opposite. They cut down on foreign imports. And the result is this. They've needed fewer dollars in the last few months. Well, I believe, uh, you know, they made a lot of valid points, Rufai. I mean, you know, they credited the, uh, you know, capital imports, also, you know, gas prices, and as well as um, all the measures that have caused the currencies to deplete. They were saying it had to do. Uh, okay, let me skip you through Rufai's commentaries because it's usually some brainless nonsense. But let's hear from Dr. Abati, who, who usually talks sense. Uh, so let's hear Dr. Abati. Who have spent the prime of their lives in the past. And that's another brainless nonsense. So let's go to somebody that has a brain. Okay, let's go. Let's hear Western from... countries impose sanctions on Russia. Banking Singh, every central bank governor, CBN, everybody should take a leaf out of her book. Dr. Okay, <clears throat> let me start with Russia. <clears throat> as pointed out, as of March, after the uh, Western countries imposed sanctions on Russia, yes, within a matter of days, the ruble uh, went down. 
Russia was kicked out of the uh, international payment system, the SWIFT system, so it was affected. But by May, the ruble had recovered. It had become very strong. Now it's at a point where it, is, uh, it has moved from 139 to the dollar to 52.3 uh, to the dollar, and the uh, best performing currency in the world. Okay, so you cite that as an example, but is it necessarily a positive thing? She has pointed out some of the measures that uh, was introduced, capital controls, uh, increase in uh, interest rates, but the most important perhaps, the fact that Russia, despite the sanctions, continues to make a lot of money because it's the largest exporter of gas in the world, the second largest exporter of oil. And those European countries that have imposed sanctions up to about 60% on Russia, they're still buying oil and gas from Russia and they pay. So Russia has a current account surplus. It has a very good balance uh, of trade payments. Now it's not trading with the rest of the world because his goods have been banned everywhere. So he's trading uh, with itself. And he doesn't need the dollars. They are not looking for dollars in Russia because many of those countries where their currency have been having problems, their debts are dollar denominated. Yes. And with the Federal Reserve <coughs> having increased uh, uh, interest rate by uh, 75 basis points in the last two months, back to back, and with inflation in the US up to 9.1%, uh, uh, then of course other countries whose currencies are tied to the dollar will suffer. That's, that's the reason. But you know, what they have in uh, Russia, the, uh, the Kremlin is saying, oh, this is very good demonstration that sanctions do not work and that Russia will not be affected by, uh, by uh, sanctions. But economists have described it as the Potemkin rate. Potemkin rate meaning the strength of the ruble doesn't really mean much because Russia is just trading with itself, okay? And it has other issues. It doesn't necessarily mean that the Russian economy is resilient. It is not resilient. In fact, it's a sign of weakness rather than a sign of a strength. And that economy has been contracting. And the projection is that it could contract up to the rate of between 8% and 11%. So I don't think there's anything to celebrate that. And there is no comparison with Nigeria. As for uh, President Buhari's interview, that interview with uh, Mo Abudu was on February uh, 18, 2015, right? And he, he said in that same tape, he talked about uh, exchange rate, subsidy, he even criticized the... Oh, 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 oh okay, so... Oh, okay, so I think that that, um, that covers that. So that, that, that's why I said you are wrong, because the experts say you are wrong. They, 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 call, it, they, they call it a Potemkin, uh, a Potemkin structure. Which is a Potemkin oh, structure, which is, which is essentially set to the same. A sleight of oh, hand. Boju, boju. Oh, can, I boju, boju. Oh. can I say something, please? You see, one thing we do here, all of us, including oh, myself, is that yeah. when somebody speaks, we don't allow him to finish. Like I was speaking when Solid jumped in, and if I had prevented him from talking, you see, maybe I'm just, I just don't want him inserting or whatever. And then trying to make my point, and he jumped in because we are always eager to show off or whatever. We, I don't know, some of us here, we do that a lot. Because what you said, what Sonny said, what Emilio Con said, what I said, there's no difference in it. It's so just there's the a difference. The, you, you were deviating from... from... The perspective or the angle from which I'm coming from. You heard that lady say capital flight, which I repeated here. Before Sonny jumped in, he wouldn't even allow me to speak on, on that. So, But then you elaborated more. He had elaborated too. So the point is, when we usually use this word like uh, wrong... What you're saying is, wait, let us take our time and listen to the other person. No, you were, your, your trajectory was already wrong. It, it's a no, Potemkin. No, 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 uh, hold on. Was, if you listen, you, you will understand. It, it's, what what's the Russians is. are, it, for, it's for the purposes of propaganda. Please, uh, let, me, let me come in here. Uh, there's no need to even argue. Uh, but I, please, know, Oman, I, want, I, want, I want to point something out. Yeah. That then, what even Ruben about said is is faulty, and right. this is it. Yeah. Look. Yeah. The the point is there is this there is this five nations that are also coming over. I think they call them the BRICS, right? Yeah. Brazil, Russia, India, um, China, and um, South Africa. Look, 
if you look at the crop of population in this world, gather these people, you that's a, and a significant amount of the worldwide population is in that group. If they trade amongst themselves, they are sufficient. So if if they if if Ruben Abad thinks that um what the, what 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 terminology did they even use to qualify the Russian economy? Russia is already in in good terms with China, is in good terms with these other guys, the South Africa, and look, there is trade going on. And if these people choose to in, in, in which currency? Yes, the point is now that they don't want to use currency, they now want to use values uh what do you call it now valuable uh you know v valuable materials like um resources trade, and minerals. Trade by butter. Trade no, by no. Butter. Trade trade. 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 so look i don't understand the economics of that perfectly but i know that that's where they are going and they don't want one particular currency that's no, for example Robert, like the us no, dollar it's, no it's, as, it's, as, it's in the us as, dollars as in, no, no, no. The, the thing is that they want to crumble the US dollar. And if you look at it, why they the US dollar now? Been they've been wanting to crumble the dollar for a long time. Who has not been wanting to crumble the dollars? Everybody it's, wants to crumble oh the man, dollar. It is normal. Of course, dollar has been strong enough. It's because some people have supported it. And when, when it becomes, when, when people don't want to gain, it's going to be gradual, but it can come down. That's the point. The thing is that the dollar has been supported by petroleum. And because petroleum is a worldwide need, of course, the dollar is the basic currency for petroleum. But the moment people start to say, okay, they don't want it again, even the United, the, the Saudi Arabians are having issues with, with the US now. And they are the chief behind the petrodollar issue. So if Saudi Arabia begins to have issues with the US, of course, the US will fight for a while. But it's cheap. if the US is not careful, the US will also crumble. And that's a so Yes. You see, the, what we're talking about here is we're talking in the Nigerian context. Let's just forget this Russia thing. What we're talking no, about must... is why, hold on, hold on. Why was Russia successful in being able to show up their economy, even though we know this is not just well, Russia is, was not economy. successful. It, it's not successful. You see, that's why I said you're wrong. It, it's hold not on, successful. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on now. Successful yeah. in storing up their currency, making their currency look as if it's powerful. Yes, but, but it's only temporary. Falling. Only yeah, let me speak. Right. Yeah, let me speak. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, go on. Now, now why is it that their currency seems to be successful? Because that's, that is just a premise from which I'm coming, the angle at which I'm coming from. Well, so you're coming from a, from a false premise. Okay, hold on, on, hold on. It, 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 that's, that's, that's your own opinion, one man. No, that's so, actual now. But that is your opinion, one man. That's your opinion. Now, the angle from which I'm coming is that they were able to show up their uh, robos. So that, so that it doesn't fall like other currencies are falling. And like it's mentioned in that, uh, that extract, I mean, that extract, that, that extract you took off I mean, from Arise, they gave us three reasons, perhaps. Now, in the Nigerian context, that is what my, my point is all about. Why is it that the Nigerian uh, CBN governor is not able to take measures? So in the Nigerian context, a lot of things is wrong. Which one of them is the capital flight? Money is not staying in Nigeria. Our dollars is moving out. The dollars are even the little dollars we have in the system is being mopped up and being siphoned through some other. If, other if the Russians are, if, if the Russians are led back into the international space, they will have to dollarize their economy. Yeah, they will fall. I agree with you on that. But in and, the and, their currency in the will, and their and their currency mm -hmm. would fall. And their okay. currency would uh, yeah. fall. I agree with you on that. But in the immediate, just to stem that tide, to I mean, to kind of hey, that's make a sure false that. Oh, let, let, let me let me spell this word for you. Uh, uh, let me see one more. I don't know what you're talking no, about. No, no, let, let me spell this word for you and then you, you look it up. Uh, P O T E M K I N, Potemkin. L look it up because that is what the Russians are playing. Oh. Uh, 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 yes, so so look it up. P O T E M K I N. So so if you look that up, then you'd understand. But uh, back to you, Emiloko. Yes, thank you, woman. Yeah. So, um, uh, I think I've lost thought on my train of thought. <laughs> oh, all right, do you want me I to like... take you to another space? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us move on. Oh, 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 all right, Nigerians to pay more for phone calls and data in new federal government tax. So, as as though enough blood has not been squeezed out of the Nigerian person, the only thing that is not going up, of course, is their wages. But what that wage is to be spent on? Is, is is already a hundred three hundred 
even 500 times what it used to be. But to yes. boost up their wages now, they are out demonstrating. So there it is right there. They are squeezing you for another 5 6% on every text you send, every phone call you make. So uh, the, the last blood, when is that going to be squeezed out of the Nigerian person? When are they going to take to the streets? Amy uh, Lokon. One man. Well, <laughs> when we did take to the street, that is a, a, a that is a difficult question to answer, because I believe if if the if there is an iota of um, will to take to the street, uh, that should have been demonstrated during the NSAS issue at least to corroborate with the youth. Then the, the elders of the land should have come. Everybody that can foresee what the future portends should have joined that struggle to to blow it up and make sure that. The, their voices, not just the youth, but now the voices of the common man in Nigeria is right. But since then, me have lost to that term. Uh, Nigeria is just like the proverbial man that you push the world instead of him to fight you back. We do what we pour into it and continue to run away. So I don't think that they, I believe that there will always be blood to draw from the Nigerian body. So <laughs> this six percent is just part of it. After six percent, uh, that is like I'm six naira in a in, in hundred naira. So well. Let us see how it goes. Let us see if, if they'll fight. Because the thing is that it is as, for example, as the Bible always says, sorry to the Muslims in the in the, in the mid saint but the only book now says, and the, the Bible says something that it is from those who don't have, that those who have will be taken, you know, it will be taken from those who don't have again to give those who have. And that's exactly what is happening right now in Nigeria. Because how do you solve your problem? And you think taxing the people who are already improve, impoverished in poverty is the solution. But, you know, the economics of Nigeria is just, is just peculiar. That is just it. It's just peculiar. They don't, they don't care that people are hungry. And, for example, look at the, 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 the COVID period. Companies, they're gathering money. They were buying foods. And this food was, was meant to be shared among people, but you can imagine some people just went down somewhere and, and kept a whole warehouse of, of meal until those food get destroyed. They prefer that it should be destroyed. And that is that same mindset that is translated into every other thing that we see. Those who have more than enough prefer that those who don't have should be, you know, should, should be suffered to, to, to the grounds. But... Apparently, the Nigerian ground is an endless pit. So, <laughs> the, the, the do, do you think do you think the Nigerian person has fight in them? Do you think they have fight in them? Oh man, I don't think so. Of course, they, they must have demonstrated fight in the past. They are they have been uh, histories to that. But the fact is that that will has been broken down, and you know when the will has been broken down, and there's no there's no faith because how do you even solve the problem? Now the, the problem has been systemic. So for you to solve a systemic problem requires that you raise system to solve this problem. How do you raise a system to solve this problem? Where you won't have someone somewhere who will do what, who will simply frustrate that system. You get the point? How do you even get honest people? And the average, there are no honest persons if you put them in positions of power in Nigeria. There are no honest persons because some way or the other, if there is one particular honest person, there will be like 10 people surrounding down this person that will simply drown the honest in that person and eventually the person becomes dishonest as well. So how do we even fight a systemic problem with the system? The system is, everything is just, you know, everything is simply, people are confused, people are just like, there's, there's depression, there's lack of hope, there is, everything is just scattered down. So how do you solve it? Except if the number one man. Let me look. Up. Can I? Can I interject? Ah, Joel, please let me just finish this statement. Sorry. Except if the number hello. one man, hello, if the number yeah. one man takes it upon himself to begin to tirelessly and gradually solve the problem, nothing will happen. Joel, you, you can have the floor to, to talk. You, you want to? You want to make a contribution? Hello. Okay. Yeah, Joel. Yeah, carry on, Joel. We can hear you. Please, I'm having I'm having some connection issues. Well, probably after I finish talking, I would um maybe uh, get out and try to get in. So yeah, probably... I, I, I see you dipping in and out. So so carry on. Yeah. Yeah, please. Sorry about that. Um, no, it's fine. Yeah. Emiloko, I was just trying to you know add to what you were trying to say about the economy of uh, of Nigeria. 
you are asking about you're asking questions about the system. The system is like the structure we have always been talking about. The structure depends on the system. And the system, the structure depends on the system, not like it is feeding the system, it is taking away from the system. Every yes, part of Nigeria that we see is taken away from Nigeria. Nobody is giving back to Nigeria, except for some of us in the diaspora. So I'm just trying to support what you're trying to say, you know, about how the economy of Nigeria is being run. And do not forget, we have two systems of government in Nigeria. We have one for the Northern Nigeria, and then we have one for the entire Nigeria. Let me I tell you why. You know, there was a time we were talking about money, uh, VP, sharing money, sharing money, right? Where was a lot of those money shared? In the North. They have a way of giving them palliatives from time to time. Oh, we've lost Joel again. Have we lost you again, Joel? Okay, there you are, back. Carry on. We borrowed money, all right, during um, uh, Buhari to pay this monthly 5000 6000 uh, Trade that money. Huh? Okay. Trade, trade the money. Trade to money. The foreign. I think yes, that's also you good. ask people in the south, in the you ask people in the south, what happened? Uh, and did they get it? Many of them will say, I did not get no money. And they <laughs> based off the uh, sharing of that money based on income, and they found that the poorest people in Nigeria, according to them, or still the reality, is in the north. So they share those money, in, you know, mostly in the north. The COVID, COVID palliative we are talking about. In 2019, um, uh, um, you know, it happened around, COVID came in around 2019. Yes, 2019. They started bagging those foods for election. That is what is going on. I'm surprised none of you understood that. Most of those food, those storages that you see food in, Apart from the one that got spoiled, if you remember during the SARS period, when they barged into some of these uh, uh, warehouses, yeah. some of those things were already spoiled. But recently, we started seeing pictures, people going in there to take pictures, and they have started bagging those same food for politicians for election. So that is why I said nobody is giving to the system. Look, let me tell you, forget about what is happening in Russia. I believe that when it comes to an economy, what is your present economy is what matters. Mm. What, what are you doing now is what matters. So whether you like it or not, whether you call it Potenkin, whether you call it Volemkin, it doesn't matter. The issue now is that Russia economy is doing well. It is not, <laughs> is the thing. It is not. Well, you see, see, one well, man. By the time we get to where you guys are talking about, there might be some negotiation. Exactly. That's as it. There will definitely be negotiations. <laughs> so, can I, can I ask one more question? Go ahead. If you can ask one more question. What, what man, if Russia mm. had not done what they did, the policy they adopted, their CBN governor, I mean, the central bank governor did, lady, if they had not done what they are currently, the immediate solution they feel right now, what do you think would have happened to the Russian economy? What, what is happening now? Because I, I follow the Russian space I, I, and I follow it domestically. And what they, what they are reporting is that they are rationing food now. The, the food in the stores, they are no longer there. And if they are in the stores, they are f three, four times what used to be uh, the, the price. Because it's a, it's a very uh, 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 import-dependent sort of economy. Uh, uh, they are really hemorrhaging. Their, their quality of life is spiraling and spiraling, you know. So, so that that's why they, they that, that's why that word came in. So they are giving this false appearance of uh, them being able to defend against the sanctions, but the sanction is domestically really hemorrhaging the economy. It is. It is one man. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that all all is well and good with the Russian economy. All I'm just saying is this. Whatever they are doing right now, I mean, it could have been worse. 
fireworks yes. we are looking at what or if we say the wishes of your enemy the wishes of america was that they not the russian economy the uh, russians would be on streets and that was the idea so that russia would be so squeezed that the people would start to revolt against the government exactly. but that is not happening that is not happening what is why, happening why why, why is that not happening because the thing there is this any country that has refused to key in into opportunities, we are sitting on gas in Nigeria. Why are we not? Uh, it, it, it is not happening because of, because they, there's a crackdown on protest in Russia. This, this uh, uh, I, I, see, see, see. Look, let me tell you, a crackdown. You are only able to crack down a group of people if they are not resilient enough. In Nigeria, if 40% of Nigerians decide to go on the street. The economy will collapse. No government will even face it. How many are you going to kill? That is what happened in the Arab Spring. The Arab Spring, the people that protested were in three, four, five, six people. It was a mob. And that is how you change governments. And that is the kind of mob. It's either you change it through that way or you change it through the, through the ballots. But, but so, that can never so, happen in Nigeria. Thank you, one man. Well, well, I am not saying it's not going to happen. It's still going to happen. No, uh, it's, it's it, not it, because it can, of the can, because of be. the ethnic mix. Because of, it won't happen no, because no, of no, the ethnic man. mix. Do you know? Do you know the only time it will happen? Any day they not when it comes to that aspect. Any day the northern youth decides to protest, then it, it, the, the revolution is on. But the the youth, they, they, will, they won't protest if they say Never. northern president. And the southerners will not protest if the southern president. Well, the thing, the issue there is that the northerners have not fed better. And they've not fed better under. Is someone want to talk? They've not fed better. They've not fed better under under um, another presidency. So, but the thing there is that you see, when poverty becomes a part of you, it's a problem. When you normalize poverty, it's a problem. Then you will be able because when you normalize poverty, then you'll be able to weaponize it when you want to, because you have a control, you have like a remote control on how to move these people back and forth. Because you start making those people believe that this world is not in there. What do they do? They turn to church or the mosque. They start believing in miracles, they start believing in what the prophet is saying, even though people in Saudi Arabia are living differently. We sometimes you wonder if northern Muslims, if they show the picture of Saudi Arabia and uh, uh, and Dubai and the uh, 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 the UAEs. So that is where I'm coming from. I don't want to take much time. Maybe one man, I might just like exit and come back because my internet is giving me some issues. Oh, oh, all, all right, right. We, we, we look forward to hearing more from you. So back to you, Abilako. If yes, you can remember man. where you were. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 So um, well, in my own opinion, I believe that um, Russia. Russia is doing well, and whatever the struggle might be, of course, it's not going to be easy because this is a war going on, and there will always be even, even those who are not fighting, they were struggling as well. So, but for Nigeria, we have to look inwards and solve our problem, and it starts with basic, just common economics. That is it. It starts with how do, for instance, how. Do, but the thing is, can we solve the greed? Can we solve the the the, the systemic greed in the system? And that's just the point. But after that, we looking at how do we even make food available for people? How do we how do we make sure that people are motivated to work? An average Nigerian doesn't really ask much. An average Nigerian is that if you see eight hours electricity of the twenty four hours, it will be like wow. And we plan his life with that eight hours as if he has twenty four hours electricity. So there, there's no big thing that the the, the average Nigerian is demanding from the government than just for the government to be. To, to have the common sense to do the needful, just the needful. But no, because they know that the average Nigerian can 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 simply endure. You know, we are blessed with endurance. They go below the needful. They, they, they even try to test the resolve of what endurance is in us. And that's the failure there. So uh, I don't know if, if we can solve this problem because so far there is no will. But maybe as um, Peter B once said that, when when you are hungry, there's no, it is not that maybe the full and is on, uh, it is only the the south the Yorubas that are hungry or the Igbos that are hungry. It is everybody. Hunger knows no tribe. When you buy bread for one thousand naira, it's everybody that buys the bread <laughs> for that price. 
So eventually, some one day, one day, one day, I don't know, maybe it's going to be my generation, or but one day will be one day that this fight, but only that, as I've said in the past, that there is a fan of hope because one way or the other, people are getting more interested now. And that's what we've not seen in Nigeria for a long while. If people are getting more interested in politics, then we should continue to help fan their interest. And that's why I beg people like you, one man, who have platforms like this, that even if it is at the end of this whole show, put a snippet and let people understand that, come, your future depends on your knowledge of what is happening in your country and who you vote for. And not just that you vote for him and go I'm and not going to be answer. encouraging anybody to vote for Peter Obio because that, that's self harm. That's no, self harm. No, I'm not, no, one man, I'm not even saying maybe we should vote Peter Obio. Look, in this this season, it is not a matter of who you vote. It is simply go and vote. Don't be discouraged. Just go and vote and put your name out there. Look, one man, I believe that if like 80 million, for example, of Nigerians come out to vote and the winner maybe wins with 35, 40 million, look, that person, we know that he's not indebted to somebody who rigged the election. No, for him. He is indebted to the number of people who voted him in. And that is it. So if that person doesn't do the will of those 40 million, which one we are is the will of Nigeria, if that person doesn't do the will, posterity will judge the person. Because that person won't go there the second time because he knows that he's coming in. It's not because some people went somewhere, some yellow went somewhere, and somebody is putting his finger, uh, you know, his fingerprint on like 1,000 ballot papers in the in the in the dark for him to win. No, everybody simply came out under the rain in the sun to vote for that. If it is Tinubu, all fine and good. If it is Atiku, all fine and good. And if it is Peter, we all fine and good. No problem. But the thing is that if people come out to vote, when there is vote. When there is no political party again, then that knowledge will be transferred to the coming generations, and everybody will begin to understand that my future depends on who I vote in. To the Senate, to the House of Rep, to the House of Assembly, to the local government chairman, everybody will begin to put their minds to who they put in that will make the right decisions gradually. But when people don't want to vote, and the people who win win by 15 million maybe just a gap of two people, two million. And it is simply those two million, it is because there is a big vote from Kano and an under eight, two-year-old is voting and somebody is pressing his own fingerprint somewhere in the Southwest, you know, the Yaloja is doing a thousand votes for one person. You Automatically, that person knows that he owes this microscopic number of people and not the majority of Nigerians. And that is my own view. So that's why I, 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 I urge you, to continue to support politicking and people should be aware to promote awareness on those people that you need to vote. If you like, go and vote a dog in. It is your business, but make sure you vote. And that is the knowledge. Uh, all right, brilliant. Well put. So, well, well put. Uh, Emiloko, of course, uh, anytime it comes, it drops a gem. So, thank you, uh, em Emiloko. So, let's go on from Emiloko. Emiloko and, thank you, man. and I want to, I, want, I, I didn't see yesterday because I was expecting to, to, to watch the, the show. And I want to say I'm already fond of this program that I, I hope all is so well. hope you are healthy. And of course, you need to rest as well because it's not going to be easy doing twice show. So, I appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Very much. Yeah, th thank you. Uh, I, I, I was, I, I was, and still am a little bit carrying a bit of a flu. So, I just, I just need to take yesterday just to try and flush it out of my system. But I, I don't know. Maybe some, maybe one of the kids picked up a. Anyway, I, I, I was, I was bogged down. You know. So, so, yeah. but, but thank you for noticing. I didn't even know that anybody cared. I thought I was just a tool to be used by people. But uh, <laughs> there, 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 there it is right there. At least, at least, Emiloko cares. So thank you, Emiloko. Always join us whenever you have the time. Of course, one of the fans' favorite, Emiloko. Uh, but then he's supporting Peter B and he's saying Emiloko. So quite what is in play there. I don't know. They got you. The Iphobians got you. Look at this guy. But the Iphobians have not gotten Solio. He still stays strong. So, Solly, you are up next. Solly? Look at that. He's gone up to Smokey. Go. I'm here. Oh, all right. Okay. So, there, there he is. So, so Solly, so, so two it then. This uh, controversy that, that was... um not, not even, I didn't even think it was controversial till, till Ovie came in. Uh, but this uh, narrative that was happening with Ovie around the expose by the PBC... Uh, this um, 
So they went to interview these bandits that are savaging and ravaging, and those people were glorifying and peacocking on screen. The Nigerian government now, rather than address the content of that documentary, they are attacking the messenger itself, accusing BBC of glorifying bad banditry and threatening sanctions. So Nigeria, again, uh, the, the, the spin doctor, Lai Mohammed, he pivots it to them against us. So what are you then making of the Nigerian stance against the BBC? Well, I'm not surprised. I don't know why everybody is surprised, as usual. I'm never surprised. You know, when when Nigeria government takes one step, you know, Nigerians used to re uh, relax. You don't know that. The way the government thinks is, if these people are not going to stop me, it's just a natural human reaction. If somebody is not going to stop you, you just keep on going and doing more and more and more. You know, when they say they wanted to ban social media, they are fighting for laws for this, they want to tax them, they, they want to control everything. They want to control the whole narrative. And they, and they showed the example by banning Twitter. You know, they will still do more. That's what I believe, you know, if Buhari could stay longer. But um, now, them giving backlash to BBC, I'm not surprised. There was a time Rick Ross came, he did a music video. He was showing the reality of how Nigeria was, you know, even put a Biafra flag in the music video and they banned him for some years. So Nigerian government has been doing this kind of thing since. You know, if somebody comes and they don't, they make the country look bad or they try to show some kind of view of it, even if it's reality, even if it's facts, they always, instead of fixing the mistake or owning up, you know, they always give backlash like, oh, eh, don't say that, or you shouldn't be saying that, or, you know, how can you be saying that? How can you be showing us in this kind of light? You know, and they always want to prove that they are a government and they will show you, you know, the power of government. But also, uh, the bandits that they were showing, where where are they from? Are they Fulani? No, of course they are. They, exactly. They, they, they are so, the bandits are Fulani. you know, that one to plays another part because they have a, they, they, the, Fulani, the Fulani agenda. You know, they want to uh, bring their people to Nigeria because, you know, they know Nigeria is a fatal grind. It's we Nigerians that don't know the value of our own current, uh, our own country, you know? So they want to... Um, um, I, I think the Fulanis that they were showing, they are indigenous to Nigeria. Ah, well, yeah, I don't know. But at the end of the day, they are Fulanis and they are, have agenda to protect these Fulanis, you know? They are even planting some of them in Lagos, you know? I don't know what it's for, but, you know they have agenda so obviously they are going to be protected they are not going to go after them because you know who is going to go after them for, for like really who is going to go after them is it police you know police just wants to collect their own money they don't even care about their salary because their salary is not even up to the amount of money that they collect from the streets so if you like protest for their salary or you want they don't care you know always going to go against them i mean that their hands is already full you know how many how many uh, groups are they fighting in the north? They can't come back into the state zones and be fighting uh, bandits also again. So we are left on our own too. There, that's the reality. When you are saying you are on your own, you've always been on your own, but now they are officially telling you because some people still want to live in delusion. <laughs> you know, you've always been on your own. You know, private security is what we need right now. We need federal security. You know, and I don't think any Fulani person is going to put that there for you, basically. All right, brilliant. So, um, <clears throat> our Governor El Rufai confirms that he was the first to tell Buhari about a viral video of terrorists threatening to abduct him and President Buhari. So, well, we've been speculating as to how much Buhari actually knows about what goes on in Nigeria. And this commentary now by El Rufai, speaking in, a, in an interactive session in Hausa language, he now, uh, for, for Buhari not to even be aware of this until um, El Rufai brings it, to, brings it to his notice, then that just tells us then that this guy is being shielded from what is going on in the country, Sully. Yes, one man, I've said this before. I've said this several times. And I, and I still remember you telling me, how would he not know? And plenty of people on the platform telling me, how would he not know? They can do it because they also have their own agenda. They also don't want to look bad. So they will cover up their asses. It's so easy to hide information. He's a human being, just like every one of us. 
So it's easy to hide information from me. When you when you surround yourself with bad people, narcissists, liars, they are always lying. They are habitual liars. So they can shield you from the truth. They can give you what's the name of this thing. They can gaslight you. You know, and a lot of gaslighting is going on in the government. They gaslight the people and they gaslight themselves. So I was saying it on this platform, but now it's officially being said. So I'm not surprised also. You've never said so, it, Sole. Why I've is everybody said it, I've said it here on this platform. One Sole. How would you know? Sole. Me? Sole. Yeah. The, uh, Sole, um, uh, just, just to um, add your, your point. Do you re did you remember when uh, Aisha Buhari was saying that the, um, the cabal has taken over Asorok? Yes. Yes. You know, we took what she said with a pinch of salt. Um, but in real, yeah, I mean, for for some of us, we knew it was serious. But you know, for many, they took it as that's a woman talk. You know, probably she's having problem, having attitude problem. But the thing there is this: there is a cabal that is caught, that is shielding Buhari from the rest of the country. They control the information that gets to him. They control the information that gets out of him. And that is the reason why, if you notice when Tinibus, before Tinibus started talking about, you know, his, uh, his right and the discussion that they had, you know, at, at the, uh, at, uh, uh, prior, you know, to, uh, to this um, present election on how power was going to go to him, you'll find out that there seems to be a disconnect I mean, so many people saw what happened with the announcement of Lawan. If you ask me, the true um, uh, uh, candidate of Buhari is Lawan. And Obsi Banjo was put in there to see if he can whittle down the power of Tinubu. And you see, Tinubu might have won that. Uh, 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 that primary, but in on a larger scale, on a larger scale, the South won. The South won. Look, if you listen to that interview, the terrorists gave, you will see that with the, 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 some. I didn't know if anybody noticed the this, uh, the, the 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 aggro between the Fulani and the House. I remember the guy was saying something like, "If anything comes that the House that takes it, that the Fulani is being." relegated to the background. There is war in between them. But what happens is that they control what goes out to the media. And that is one of the reasons why the government is you know, uh, angry at BBC. Because when you do such interviews, it's just like we talking on this show. It is unfiltered. Everybody is staying in their mind. But if we are going to an Arise TV or we are going to an NTA, our views could be controlled, especially with the kind of questions they're going to ask you. So it would be hard for you to give to say what you actually have in mind. So just to support what you're saying, Mr. Stoney, thank you. To be honest, I really didn't understand. <laughs> no, you but... don't understand most things, do you, Sully? But uh, go, go on. You are still a clever guy, though, but uh, uh, Alexander tells us you're a super brain, but uh, Sully, eh? Yeah, so I think I, I made my point on that topic. Oh, oh, all right. Let, let me take you to another space, Sully. Uh, Nigerians to pay more for phone calls and data in hmm. new federal government parks. You hmm. know, this really upsets me because, uh, because I imagine uh, it's not the you and I, it is the Dems that you and I have to support. So that person, of course, that is just holding on tight to respectability. The Nigerian male completely emasculated are hiding behind their wife's uh, purse. So the wife goes out, she comes back with, with money. The man doesn't really even want to ask questions about how she got the money. She's just saying, I'll show me 2,000 naira and bear, and he only wants to go and drink. So this is the emasculation of the Nigerian person in taxation. Uh, Sully. Well, one man, what can they do? You know, must they go out and drink? Must they, must they, must they, you know, that they must go out and drink or what else is no. there to do yeah well that's one of our problems nigerians don't want to face the reality of where they are you know sometimes if you say nigeria no, it's, it's the reality of where they are that drives them to drink sorry 
well, they can, at least they can afford to drink. If they add up that money in a month, what would it come to? It's not an excuse. You know, it's really not an excuse. You face your reality. Sometimes when you tell Nigerians, Nigeria is a third world country, they can almost fight and beat you. <laughs> you know, but it's, it is the reality. Nigerians are not ready to live in the reality, but, you know, how bad this government it became is making them wake up to the reality of things. They are crews. They are still doing small crews, you know. They are still not ready. They are still not serious. Big Brother is going to come and disappoint all the online supporters, you know, because everybody's attention will go to Big Brother. You know, history will repeat itself again. But let's see what happens. <laughs> you know, now they are going to tax them again. It's just more billing and more billing and more billing. But you say oh, Nigerians as, as, are resilient. Nigerians are not resilient. They are being forced to be resilient. You know, there's nothing they can do. You know, they are going to pay that tax and there's nothing they will do about it because all of them just complain online. They don't have the courage to do anything in reality. You know, until you, t until you see the police protesting with the people, that's when you know that change has come. But, you know, police will not protest with them because police, the way they enjoy the chaos, you know, it keeps them in business. It keeps the money flowing to them. So you will not see, you know, I don't know what it's going to take to make them protest too, but uh, this tax will not affect them. It will not affect people in government. It will not affect people in the army. They are increasing their budget also. You know, the ones that they cannot uh, pay, they send them on the field to go and buy, you know. So it's only the people that are suffering and they have no power. So they will pay that tax and nothing will change. <laughs> No, they have to they have to anyway because um is it will just be embedded into your data so what you used to buy for a thousand naira it will not be a thousand and twenty five naira and you need the data of course to do whatever it is you you want to the do best with your, thing, uh, yeah the best thing nigerians can do is to find out how to fit it into into their budget so that this extra money that the government or they are being taxed for will not really you know, come out of, they will not really get it. But Nigerians don't budget. Nigerians have a waste in that. What do you mean fit it into their budget? They've increased the tariff on electricity. They've increased the price of petrol. Then reduce your consumption. Well, you know? how, how, how much for that can you reduce it? You, you know that Nigeria are living on the barest minimum already. Well... They're, they're, they're squeezing the life out of the people in that country. That's what they're doing. They're squeezing the life out of the... And there's no commensurate improvement infrastructurally to say that this is what people are suffering for. Well, what, what, man, what me I'm just trying to say is that no matter how much somebody tries to... Because the reason why they are squeezing these people... You out, know, if they increase data, but you had, let's say, even 12, 12 hours electricity guaranteed, mm -hmm. you know that insulates that. Because then you, the money you spend on uh, your generator, it, it, it transfers over to the to the money that they are taxing you on your phone. But there's no commensurate uh, improvement in 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 uh, the basics of life to justify this constant hemorrhaging of money. Well, what are they going to do about it? They can't do anything about it. You know, they are squeezing the life out of the people. But what are they going? I don't see how they can do anything about it. All they have to do is just find ways to adapt. You know, you can't just sit down there and take it and keep on suffering. You have to adapt to, you know, they have to find a way to adapt. Nigerians, well, even if it's reducing consumption, okay, for example, now Nera, Nera is going down. You can simply just open an online account, like something with like Binance. They have how you can put your money from crypto to crypto. You, to crypto. You're not that bad in Nigeria. Yes, but well, people are still doing it. Well, you see, that's on that me one man. The way I see it, and they are doing it so that the people will not become. They will not have money. They will not become independent. They will not become rich because if they have money, they have independence. They will have some kind of courage. To be able to and confidence to be able to come out and take action against or protest or something because it will be affecting them more but most people when they are poor they are too busy struggling to be able to even fight governments they are too busy struggling to survive you know and this thing that they are doing they are squeezing them out you have to be resilient you have to find ways to adapt 
you know when i'm saying reduce consumption like let's be honest nigerians will go to the room leave the right light on they will leave the water running there's a lot of waste that goes on you know we need to adapt <coughs> and, and reduce our consumption be very active about it calculate your things but are they going to do it no and, and let me give the example of but you said uh, crypto is bad so even if they put their money online they may buy it too. so let me not even talk about that one. but they have to find a way to adapt at the end of the day you know oh, if, oh. even if they say they buy the crypto they can't stop crypto transactions from happening you know so people are still going to be able to transact in crypto maybe not change it to naira but they can still have it in dollars and euros and they can change their dollars and euros back to naira there is always a way to adapt all right they have to adapt oh, all they right have to adapt, though. they have no choice oh. because nobody is fighting for them and nobody's going to fight for them uh, it looks as though you have adapted the last time you were here you were an obedient now uh you, tinobu is your avatar no one so man wh much, why, is, why is tinobu your avatar now no too much insults too much insults the ability to not even be able to ask questions you know the moment you just ask a simple question the first thing you get is a reply of insults the moment you reply with logic the second thing is i'm shy and obedient you know so and i've looked at it very very well at the end of the day these full and people are controlling nigeria you need somebody that will be able to look them in the face and fight them back when tinobu one is delegate race or primaries or whatever i looked at straight at Buari and uh, what did he even say again you know he just said something you know you, you have to be able to look these people in the face and destroy their structure you think this will be is going to be able to do that easily you want to go with your delusion he himself knows he can't win he's just carrying you guys along the cruise but at the end of the day it's still it's taking away at two votes so me i don't mind it but me i'm not going to be around to be chopping in sort up and down necessarily you know why didn't they take the same energy for for so it was it not there since you know oh we didn't see the russian vote for that but we should pretend like this thing is not tribal it is tribal support and if they were in my position would they vote for my tribe no even if my tribe brought out somebody that was very good no you, you know all this all this all this you know it seems but, like but, but, but like, surely, surely they voted over sanjo uh well i don't know about that and you and you you did not believe in Abbas Sanjo, but we voted yes, Abbas I, I don't really see him as a yoruba man not not oh, really. okay okay not really. but it was it was it was a yoruba it was a yoruba it was a yoruba mandate right okay anytime anytime i hear a reason why somebody hates tinobu it's never something who, who was Abbas Sanjo contesting against uh, only for lie. Uh, uh, where is it from? From Yoruba. All right. So it wasn't really there. It wasn't like there was a choice. What's there? Uh, so the choice, the choice was between because, like you know, it was, uh, between something. Yoruba and Yoruba. So. It was Yoruba and Yoruba. So, uh -huh, but I mean, so. we chose we, we, we chose one, right? We, we but we still voted him, right? Mm. That is my point. The thing there is this, and, and Sony, you were you were never you were never obedient. Just forget about it. Okay, I always say this. Okay, I always okay, say this. Okay, yeah, this. yeah, you see, this, this is why I want to say You were never obedient. Don't, 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 don't interject then. Don't interject then. Because I can interject now. Why can't they interject? I was just trying to make a point, but if you feel it, if you feel it, I want to wrap up. I don't even Go ahead. I don't want to argue. This is why I left. You know, you can't even voice your opinion on anything. You know they'll call you tribalistic they'll call you you hate them this one and that one if you have that in your mind that means that's what well, he never said about. that he said you, you no said that's you what i'm seeing in the comments there. already that's what i'm seeing in the comments already you know this is why i left i don't want to be arguing you know, this kind of nonsense argument i just want to say my piece and move on that's why i left you keep on pushing people to that kind of level and you and then you end it with oh it's tribalism and his hatred and you know no i've left i've left i don't want to argue I'm I only I I'm only really asked why you uh are you are you a man, look, look at now? this kind of situations must somebody because somebody is supporting somebody must I be in this kind of situation all the time arguing no please people want their peace so I no 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 now people that. people it's politics now so people will press you on your position okay, well, I I find, no one is arguing I with you I find more peace uh, in this support group thank you uh, I find more peace in this support group thank you. I don't so, have to so, do any so you are, you, so you are like a Gaban man now. Yes, yeah, so give all me right. leave me in, in my own peace. Thank all you. right. All right. I don't want to be doing argument all the time. Oh, all right. Thank you, Solly.
So thank you, Solly. So Solly, let me go from you to to Rational Mind if it's ready. Rational Mind, are you there? No, no, no. go on, go on. I, I I'll join you later. Just go on, please. Go on. Oh, 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 all right. Uh, let me go from uh. Let, let me go back to Ovi then, who rejoins us. So Ovi, are you ready to go now? Okay, let me go to Ajan Lekoko. Ajan Lekoko, hopefully you are there. All right, let me go to Kula. Uh, 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 Ovi, are you, you this yeah. time, uh, are, are you ready? I'm listening. Oh, yeah, I'm here. I'm listening. Oh, all right, brilliant. I'm ready. So, so you were trying to somewhat put a spin on the banditry narrative before Nemesis caught up with you. So, 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 you were trying to defend the indefensible. So let's hear what. So now, no, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't okay. Now again, let me let me put another perspective to it. I, for once, don't believe that the BBC came to do what it did without the consent of the federal government or the military arm of the federal government or that state government because now security will escort them reach there no be nigeria security so the federal government is aware so for them to be asking this kind of question <laughs> you know just again is remember i always said it's a game this is what they want us to do Uvier, because Uvier, of what is not necessary huh Uvier, this is a very serious matter don't trivialize it you know, for you to give it this kind of correlation, I think you are trivializing it. It's a very serious I'm, tri I'm trivializing it. What is the federal government doing? Yeah, the reason you are giving, maybe to support the stand of the federal government. No, see, is me, I will always, I will always be curious. Just like, just like a woman asked me before. Listen, my... listen, 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 Ovia. Don't, don't be, don't try to be too curious every time on matters that are very clear. This you are telling clear. me now how to reason, how to. I it's mean, I, it, that doesn't make sense what you are saying. No, Allow no, me. No, you can, no, I can only no, be me. There's no, nothing no, you will tell no, me. I will say. No, what I feel I've observed is that every time you want to be on the other side of a point. If people are always uh, and now you want to change that, you want to change that, Abi? Is that what you are trying to do? <laughs> Ovi, Ovi, please let me just <laughs> answer. Ovi, do you know that um, that interview is not necessarily that the B a BBC person came to Nigeria to do that interview? We again, you guys are just uh, trying no, to. No, 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 no. Just, just let us. I am not out. saying it's the owner of BBC that is doing the interview. Come on, man. Come I'm on. not that dumb. Don't, don't, okay? uh, nobody is dumb to obviously is the owner. What I'm saying is this: you said uh -huh. that the, the the person will require security and this and that. Obviously, look, this guy that did the interview is an independent. Independent report, I can guarantee that. You, you, you guys so are missing. That, you are missing the yeah. whole point. I don't it's question that you, are the it. It. that you are saying. Yes, what you are saying is that the government will one way or the other has a hand in that report from the BBC. That it, maybe the government yeah. even wanted the BBC to put the report out. That is what you are trying to say. Because you now say that it's in a soldier that even escorts the reporter to even go and ask that to, to go and make that interview. Which what did I start I with? What did I start with? You you saying there are three sides to a coin. Actually, that's what you started with. That there's the truth. And uh -huh. there's no the different sides to the story. Maybe we not want to know. Is it that if the BBC made the report because of the Nigerian citizens, or there is an ulterior motive towards that report? Of course, the BBC oh, yeah, has oh, not. Oh, is not oh, yeah, the BBC is not the intention. Just address the context. <laughs> Exactly. Why are you guys? Why are you guys helping me to make my point? You don't have to agree with my point, and there's no, no, no way no, no, I can no, say this in the way you are I saying it. That's right, what you know. I, I have the right on this platform to query your point if they are not going in the line of logic. That is it. Because that doesn't mean, that point? doesn't mean that I am going to change and follow your own no, logic. You, you prove your logic right to be logic. Don't just come and force. My logic doesn't have to make sense to you. You guys keep getting it all twisted. There are over hundred people that are watching. My logic does not have to make sense to you. Get that? It doesn't have to make sense to you. It has to. You understand? I did not come to this platform to talk to you. No, there are hundreds of people who are watching. One of them will see my logic, and I'm cool with that. Okay, what is? I don't have to see where the way you are saying it. 
one man you asked me that if uh, if the bbc actually carry out this uh, this in favor of the federal government with federal government criticize them that is the but you didn't you never asked me if i will criticize them or if i will follow suit I will well, you, will, you, will follow, you will follow suit because you follow the government's line, don't you? No, I will always, once I know the reason they are asking, I want to laugh about it, no matter how ridiculous it is, because I believe that these people, are they know what they are doing. Uh, like Mohammed coming out and do blah, blah, blah. It's not that it's a breaking news to him. It's not a breaking news to him. They know all this. These people don't just wake up and face the camera. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> that's not how it works. So me asking question that, oh, to me, I'm seeing this that they are more glorifying the warlord as, as, far, as far as I'm concerned from that uh, the documentary. That's what I'm seeing. They are glorifying the warlord. And I'm asking, okay, what is the point bringing your camera and others to glorify the warlord? On what uh, help are you doing this if you are actually helping? I mean, don't I have the answer to answer this question? If you don't have any reason to give me, just you don't have to. But now trying to make me reason the way you are reasoning, that does not how life works. No, we're no, different. No, we're our, our source of information is different. The kind of books we read, we're different. The kind of people Obvious. we meet is different. So we, there's no Obvious. way we can sit in the same way. Okay, but but you said you can ask these kind of questions. What people are giving you are their own answers. They are not trying to force you to have their point of view. Exactly. So let's move on. Why are we you staying on that space? I mean, obviously, you understand my question. Fine, and you answer it. Then we move on. Why are you guys trying to make me? Don't be doing it. Don't be doing it. I don't come here to talk because of you. There yeah, are hundreds of people who are listening. Uh, you uh, don't uh, have to see my logic. You don't have to. That's okay. I'm not here so anybody can see my logic. I don't have the final say. Uh, uh, all right. You don't. You don't. You don't leave. You don't leave thoughts on answer. That's the thing. You. 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 Well, like, you what is that no answer? You should, no. Let me. Let me just land. You should stay true to your thoughts. If people are asking that, oh, your your logic is faulty somewhere, you should try to. To disapprove the disabuse that, that is not how to uh, ask now to argue with someone. You can't just say somebody is lying and you stop there. Tell me, don't say, no, but, don't say, okay, this is your reason. Don't say it. Don't tell me you are lying. Maybe, I don't maybe, know I'm maybe, no, 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 no. Maybe, maybe somebody has said you are lying. I don't think I use that word because I believe no, you are if you are saying yeah. my thought is wrong without building an alternative, you are telling me mm. my thought is wrong. I don't say your <laughs> thought is wrong. Get you see, you, you are not even following the logic. You already have a preconceived notion about it. No problem. There's only no man, let us move on with that. Oh, oh, Thank oh, you. Oh, 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 <laughs> all right, oh, all right. But but to be clear, the BBC were not glorifying the the warlords. All, all they were doing is exactly their job. They got the opportunity to interview these people, and they put them on the line to say, "Look, why are you doing these things? You know, uh, where is the humanity in what you're doing?" And these people, they, they actually they looked bad. So I'm not quite sure if they were glorified. But really, oh. what what struck was that. A lot of these people that the uh, that the Nigerian yes. government are telling us that they are fa working hard to to cap to capture or to or, or to delete these people, the BBC was just able to go and interview them. So so that that really it, it brings to question then the purpose that the security operators are serving. But uh, one man, I've, me, I've known this thing before. I've been saying this from years back. See, all this is now politics. Government cannot tell me they don't know where these people are. I mean, Gumi, 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 and Obasanjo and Kuka, they, they visit these people there. They can't tell us how they are ferrying. So I don't want to need BBC to come and tell me that's how it's wrong. I don't need them. If to see that AI and NTA run this documentary, what would have been the reaction? We could still ask questions. So why not go ask special because in a BBC? I know it's not. I'm not among. I'm not among all those that say, "Oh, the military actually don't know what they're doing." No, that's that's uh, that would be too naive. No, but, say, but, but it is it, 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 it's like you are shooting the messenger and no. totally <laughs> ignoring the message. No, 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 no. No, one, one man. It is your question. Now your question is that why is B, uh, what's in Mohammed? Uh, like Mohammed led government are uh, saying they are going to ban these people. That was what we are discussing about. You are not asking me, man, that video where you see so all these things that these people are talking, or are they actually the what are they talking? Because I actually understand how that's not what we are discussing. We're not discussing the content, we are discussing what play out after the content was given to us. So we need to stay focused here. We are we are questioning the federal government uh query to the BBC. That's what we are. That's where that's that's where your question is centered on that. Oh, 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 all right. So, so, and I'm not trying to say maybe the, the only reason 
that I know of that the federal government will be asking to query BBC is maybe because they are not cool with the outcome. This, this could be the reason I was trying to analyze it. And I say, hey, I don't care if it's BBC, CNN, or anybody, because I will ask why I want to know. Don't, I'm not too novice, naive to know that uh, how government work. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying that, since you guys agree with me, the BBC, man, whoever that saw that documentary, whoever that person is, cannot just be out there doing that without the oh, consent of the oh, federal yeah. government, without their knowledge. That, oh, that, yeah. that, nobody can convince me about that. That they know that something like that was about to take place, and at the federal government level or the state government, so it didn't happen spontaneously. Can I, can or I interject? Yes. Of it, if we are to be Nigerian media that carried out that kind of uh, expose, what what will have been your position? The same question I will ask. That I just said I said to say the NTA do one. I will see ask question. I don't care if it's NTA or BBC. I will see ask. Why? Because well, I do have appreciable knowledge of what is so, going on. They don't have for the past three years now, be five, ten years now. Don't they have no be today now? It's not new to us. Not something that was shocking. We know that that is as I said, Gome or Basenjo and uh, Kuka. Then they go visit them for their creek now. Come tell us what is happening. What solution they are preferring. So this uh, this is not new. So me asking question is not because oh I'm shocked that oh this is how this power operating. I'm not sure. No. So what you are saying now is that um, Gumi and others that have um, visited these people to talk to them, to persuade them to down their tools and not terrorize uh, uh, um, the state anymore. So you have question against those people too? Because it's the I same think, thing. In any way you I, want to look at it, it's the same thing. These BBC people visited them to question them, to ask them why why all this? Why the killing? Why are they doing this to Nigerian state? The same thing that uh, uh, um, uh, Alaji Gumi and others did as well. So, yes. And, uh, so, uh, yes. When Gumi and Co first came on TV and said, This is it, we are going after this, we will visit them, this is it. What was the response from Nigerians? No, <laughs> Gumi didn't tell, like, oh, Gumi no. didn't tell well, anybody. Like, hold on, we all hold questioned on, that you. space. We, I on, did question on. that space. I uh, did. Uh, hold now, on. Let me speak for myself now. Let me not speak for everybody. When Gumi first came on channels, they thought, I said, Come, this guy is a spokesperson to the terrorists. So that's how we name him. That is the spokesperson to them. We were not glorifying him when he said, oh, you exposed it, you exposed that. That was not the first thing that come to me on, on many Nigerians' mind. The first thing that came to me, I said, who be this man? You're not a terrorist now. Why are you making case for this the way they do all this? Thing? That was our question. So, before sorry, we begin so, to say sorry, 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 Ovie. Why, why were people saying that he was the spokesperson to the terrorist? Why, why were they saying that? I mean, of course, that's the that's no mind that the, the natural issues that came to everybody. Nobody actually paid attention to say, no, what, what, what he was it. saying, what he was saying, was sympathetic to the to the terrorists. That's why people were saying that. The, what yes. I'm, I'm yeah. saying, I am yeah. I, listen to me. I am saying the same thing. I said before people begin to even say, "Maybe we sit down, hear this man told to say, okay, why did he prefer this pollution?" The first thing I to condemn him for obvious reason because in a imam, in a military, full of imam, in a in a cleric. That that judgment came to a lot of us mind first before we were able to see beyond that. Before they begin to mention and say no be only in the visit or passengers. So, so what you are saying are in essence, in let me tell you, let me tell you this. I, you know, this I, is not I, the, the first person, we always question that space, regardless of oh. who is involved. Oh, okay. let, let me let me let me okay. tell you. I just want to I just want to tell you this. This is not the first time that you will see a media house like BBC or CNN or some other international media platform visiting terrorists, uh, BBC oh. or maybe CNN visited, visited uh, Osama Bin Laden, they visited yes. um, um, uh, uh, Abu, Abu Bakr Abanawi, Ab, Ab, they visited, Banawi, yes. uh, all of um, them. Um, you know, they have visited all, so, all, all, I mean, all these people in the past to 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 know their position, to know why they are fighting. You see, the media, maybe you don't understand the job of the media. The media sometimes 
have to represent the people. So that job they are doing by visiting these people is to know what is going on with them, why are they fighting, so that not only the government we hear, we understand the position of these people, the people of the country themselves that doesn't know what is really playing out between these people and the government and why are they fighting the state, the people can really understand their position and the people can really know if the problem is solvable or not. So what this thing is telling us is that these people are available somewhere and people know where they are, but you have irresponsible government that does not take up a political will to go after this criminal. So you should be going after the government and not BBC. You should be blaming well, your government well, for sorry, their failure to secure I, I, you, to your failure you to secure you, your people wait, you, that you resulted in the killing of thousands of your people or millions of your people. You should be going after your irresponsible government and not this media. So this you media have really exposed them that these people are available somewhere. They know where they are. If people, if even the, the BBC you are talking about, Adalego, and what Adalego. to guarantee you is Nigeria that facilitated that visit. Adalego. Those people, Nigerians like Adalego. me and you. Adalego, you, believe you that? said something. You said mm -hmm. something now that make me actually question that you said. You said the media sometime. That's the word you use. Sometime work for the people. That's sometimes, that is what will always make me question that it doesn't matter if it's BBC, if it's China, if it's NTA, I don't care what media it is. Because of that sometimes, why is it sometimes? Why not all the time? I will always ask questions. That's, that, that's what I'm here to do. It doesn't actually, matter if it's actually, BBC or if it's not BBC. I, I, I will always ask. Actually, let me tell you this. If our country is not a country that doesn't respect the media if we have a country that allow free press to operate in such a way that it ought to, to, to operate in a democracy a lot of things will have been revealed in that country but you see this government make a lot of draconian law against the the, the media against the press in order to silence uh, them. Oh, you know, all right. Ophir, just round off your thoughts on that space, then I'll move you on. Uh, because the, I think we're just going to, we are going to be going around in circles. Yeah. yeah. Since, since we are making super cool about those media, you know why I respect this country that I live in? Why I respect their greatness? Is the ability and the way they market the country. I don't go me and you to live for America. I don't need to tell you what Sharak mean and why they are still calling Chicago Sharak. Now, what zone on the street, even as we speak, but do you ever hear that on the on the mainstream media? No, just a reason why. <laughs> because if they begin to put them out there like that, who could come to America? Who could see bring the best Who could see come work here? Nobody. I'm not saying that is good. No, but that's the reason why they are doing it. As we speak, it's literally war in the street of Chicago. As we speak. So, but they have a reason why they are doing that. So if I question any media space, I, I need to the question because, oh, and as I said, for me to say yes, I would. I don't believe that the federal government is not on the known house for that document that is that they are making that document to them. I, I'm naive, and I'm not that naive to know how the government operates. They are all one. But again, you put a subject for us to interrogate, and I'm asking questions. My question has, doesn't have to be like every other person, you know. As I said, I believe there are three coins, too. There are three sides to a coin. The head, the tail, and the head. Oh, oh, we, this... we don't hear you. BBC <laughs> will take, then go take permission from Ministry of Information, actually, oh, 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 before right. they let, shoot it. Let, let me take you to another ministry, OV. So are uh, Nigerians to pay more for phone calls and data in new federal government tax? So this one particularly, you, you know, it really upsets me because how much more is there to squeeze out of the Nigerian person? But the squeeze continues uh, over here. 
Man, I, I mean, who do I, who do I fight on this? I think we are helpless. I mean, the Nigerian masses who are consuming are kind of helpless in a way because the fault begins where the contract was signed between the the company owners and our representative. Because there has been a question mark in that space from the one that they are matched the charge, they are matched the collect, the bribe, the collect, all those things. So, of course, those are things that are playing out now. They have a risk. That we, I, I want to believe their reason is that, oh, the economy is going, the dollar is that, blah, 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 blah. They will always have a reason. They the government, because they are in, they are in bed with them, they collect by and writing. They will always agree to them. But with the masses, what can we do? We can only, uh, as, as far as Nigerian speech is concerned, we can only murmur, we can only criticize, we can only protest. But for us to just jump from that stage to the next level, which is bringing all our cases into one place and swing to action, that's where the problem is. So it is beyond me as, as a Nigerian citizen. I don't know what I've been doing. If tens of thousands of people say, okay, we know what, maybe that would be, that would do something. But at this point, I think everybody is kind of playing along. So I'm not surprised that they increase their tariff. Is it going to be the beginning, the end? No, it's just going to continue. God bless us at school commerce, our best president. Everything will follow suit. So article, just, did, you say, did you say article? Oh, yes. Article is a, is a, is a big time capitalist. These are the kind of stuff he uh, likes. Uh, so. have, have you moved from Kwakwansu to Atiku now? No, no, no. I just, I know, see, you know, it's not. I say, God, go bless Nigeria. I think we go call. No, I be mean, go say her for life. You know, now, my one man, you should know me. And you just say, until we lose, maybe, but until, as you say, maybe your your prediction will come true. You and Kulata, and that uh, it's going to collapse the structure to end that go or, uh, uh, but uh, until that happens, I'm still going strong. Not that now they can't even give us vice president, I mean, let me, let me say, be try ballistic for a minute. I've never played my tribal card. Maybe this is the time to play. Even though the man is far from me, the many people say no see us like them like that. But still, that's the closest I get. I'm gonna stick with it. Yeah, but it's not your tribe, man. Now you are not also man. <laughs> you see, you see, see Nigerians. <laughs> we must find a way to divide us. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> solid, I, 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 solid. If I'm not mistaken, solid. They shout, they chant, the uh, bad, 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 bad. The bad people say they don't, they don't see you as a Yoruba man, even though you were born and bred in Lagos. I've been not being no, Yoruba. No, no. So, 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 solid is not even a Nigerian. Never mind being a Yoruba man. <laughs> uh, you know, he doesn't, he, he, he doesn't speak the language. He doesn't know the space. He, he, don't, he just carries a Nigerian name, and he thinks that. Uh, is not well, idea. let me claim my my people. Uh, the outside is our son. I'm from it's our son, but but you know, I'm not that kind. Of, I know be I know follow Gongoso because I know that's what's going to happen. I just look at what is going on. I say, well, let me take my luck. Uh, you know, now for me, I'm not I'm all I'm not scared of losing or not uh, coming out of the. Let's go there. It's a game. At, at the end of the day, we will be at the receiving end, regardless of who becomes the president anyway. So. It's fun. Let's keep having it. I don't take it to heart. That's why when I they see my brothers from the other end, the obedience are there. They are going out to us like, after 23, which you could fight for again? If your man will win or if you win. So I be concussed for life. I be that's the, that's the only Nigerian I believe that is going to keep our country one. As my reason has not <laughs> digitized from that uh, from there. But I was right. kind of uh, oh, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. I had. I, when you guys are talking about Russia currency, something like, I know who get that. I think I'll be off and on. But I think if there's something we need to take away from that, from the, the way Russia is going with their currency, how they are appreciating over dollar. Pretty much every other currency they fall for dollar. But the Chinese uh, currency has appreciated, despite what our own brother is doing to them. I use that our own brother because the, the Yoruba man that is in uh, with Biden administration, that is uh, the deputy treasurer. Is it is is the one in charge of dishing out all these uh which they give Russia these days where all the corporations are pulling out? Sanction, Sanction. right? Now, uh, now, uh, Kulata, now your brother did then, and I did in charge. Uh, I know, I know, saying that the boy <laughs> now he don't he don't they work on those sanctions since Obama time, he's an expert, in yeah. That area. yeah. So, it's, it's the case. So, one thing we are good, we should learn from them. What did, what did Russia actually do? One of the things they did was to make sure that every business, every business that is registered in Russia, any Russian business, any woman abroad, ninety percent of their money should be being it should be in the Russian money, <laughs> should be in the country. That's one secret that they just pull out. So that's you remember when this Peter of a thing come out when they ban us. I say come, who could look in what? Who pull our uncle out? 
So it's not everything we will just declare because it happened to us. We should sit down and say, you know what, it doesn't it don't happen, it don't happen. And somebody draw another analogy about the new uh, friend, uh, how, how do I put it? There are some countries that are coming together and I'm business right. Lots of Brazil, Turkey. Brick, brick, uh, brick, brick, bricks nation. Yeah, I think the goal there is to atop Dubai Darham to be their source of a trade within those countries. You know, if they don't they buy a Russian gas and everything within that country, then they, we are going to see a little bit of crack in the dollar. I'm not, I'm not saying dollar is going to disappear overnight because of what is happening, but yes, yes, uh, there's a potential that might happen. Obie, yeah, don't, Obie, Obie, don't delude yourself. The reason Russia can pull it off <laughs> is because you, I mean, uh, Russia is open hero by the balls because the gas infrastructure, the, the main gas coming into Europe is from Russia. So Europe doesn't, there's no way Europe can switch to another gas source. And what right now, what Russia, I is, I mean, Russia is dictating that they have to pay in rubles. So well, we are saying the same thing. I think that's once one of the reasons. That's once Europe can buy liquefied natural gas or they get another pipeline russia is bust so don't take this artificial uh, strength of the rubles as anything sustainable well let's uh, see how it goes now uh, because i mean if we are predicting otherwise to them if then if all these uh, sanctions that they come they out will get project, away with it right now because how i mean when we you can't build infrastructure for gas in europe now when we go it will take five to ten years to build another infrastructure so it will take a right. while for europe to diversify that's why you can see france going back to nuclear power. Everybody's restarting their nuclear power station. I mean, nuclear power station, something they abandoned. So they can't so they rely less on Russia. Pulata, don't, don't take your attention off what is happening. Uh, uh, is it Taiwan? <laughs> the Russian Empire. Don't take your eye off their face. Taiwan, no, be Russia. Taiwan are China now. That's not Russia. Hey, that's sorry, China, China. I'll be China, China. That's what I'm trying to say. So don't take your eyes off that zone yet. Until war, no, until China you can China too has been trying to get people to to spend in Rembi. I mean, Shebi Buari went there one time, and we were supposed to cut some deal to be trading in Chinese currency. But at the end yeah. of the day, I mean, I don't know why it wasn't. Enforced. We, we covered that here. We covered this. Uh, so, yeah. what became so of that? So the war is on now. The war is on. So I'm not going to give up on <laughs> Russia yet. I mean, look at what <laughs> look. Okay, look at what is going on right now. Right now, every yeah. currency apart from ruble is losing strength against the dollar because why well, yeah. U U u.s just increased interest rate so if u.s increased interest rate everybody go on invest in america now you go and buy american debt because american <laughs> economy is very very steady and guaranteed so rather than make people make you take your money go risky places like niger everybody is just taking money and investing in america putting it in america buying american debt all over the place so yeah, there's but look at you now. When, to when dollar meet now. them come and go when meet them come and go and the public are take over no, everywhere it's, it's not helping america on the long run because <laughs> america cannot export their product because american dollar is too expensive but it helps to kind of like curtail the inflationary pressure but right now i mean say you go buy american product that will be way way expensive your when your local currency don't fall but at this point in time, every single currency apart from rubles has lost massive, uh, massive. I mean, uh, they've lost gain to the dollar no, no, no. just because of interest rate. So, well, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's an ongoing third war, so we'll see how it go ahead. And I just, I, I'm happy that the, our leaders are kind of in tap. We kind of know understand what is going on there. They're not that clueless. Even as we accuse them every day, they are also doing their own part to make sure. We come out, uh, you know, on top, not on the losing side. At the end of this year, third world war. But we have said it's good. It's interesting. Oh, all right, brilliant. Th thank you, Vee. So thank you, Vee. Let me go on from your Vee for for reasons of time. I was going to go to Rational Mind, but it's not there. But let me go to Kulata then. Uh, so Kulata, uh, so let let's have you and let's start you off. Uh, uh, you are from... One man, one yeah. man, please. Uh, can I seek your indulgence? I want you to address something that has to stop on this platform. Right. Can you please give me two minutes, please? Right. The last session that we did, you asked us to make our closing remark, which I did. And this is my comment. I said, vote for your candidate, uh, Yoruba Lokon. I will vote for Tinubu. Immediately, I said that. Joel wrote in the private comment 
He said, Colata and Thomas, Una know well. One man, please, this has to stop. Please, help me one jewel. Una, this una, is know, well. una know well is... Uh... Is that said, no, no, is that mama, let me finish. Rapper, right? Let no, me come finish. On, come please. on, man. Come on, man. No, let me finish one man. Please. Please. This name calling has to what stop. What was the name calling there? You, no, no, well, that's a jocular comment now. No, no, one man, no. I can't say that to anyone on this platform. I found it insultive. On How me, on you, my personal no, 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 uh, no, man. no, no, one, one man. man. I, think, I think it is not good. That is not good. But we we no. all know the way where we they talk for Nigeria. If you step as you say, you know, you know, you know well, it's an abusive language. Because I'm not supporting Obi. Who cares about Obi? Support no, that, your that's candidate. Where, that's Don't insult people. No, no, that's where you want to go. That's where you want to go. No, 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 that no, is no. why. Okay. That is why I made that comment. Thomas, no. Thomas, Thomas, I am very, very sorry. If no, don't, don't, say, don't, don't say sorry. Don't no, say sorry. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Don't say sorry because uh, no, no. Because, because the context is not a sorry thing. Uh, 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 if uh, if he's saying Una know well, that that is a jocular comment within the Nigerian. No, 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 no. no. It's not I, joke. No, no, I, I, it's I, not I, joke. I, I, One I, man. I, I disagree I, with you. It's I, not I, joke. And I believe that Joel himself knows that. He knows that it's not joke. Can I defend myself? Can I defend myself? Okay. Oh, goodness. Well, don't worry. Okay. I'll defend you. Okay. Jewel, I'll I defend am, you. Very, this is Kulata. Let me defend oh, you, Jewel. No, hold Let on. Let's hear from Jewel. He's the man on the spot. Okay. Jewel, okay. what's okay. the context okay. of that statement? Kulata and Thomas, if you yeah. saw that as being insulted, no, I'm no, sorry. No, no, Kulata is not insulted. It's this, this, yeah. yeah. this is what happened. And I will address Ajene Koko afterwards. What happened was that in the comments, in the private chat, um, Thomas said something like, today, we did not discuss OB. Right? So Kulata responded, and it was all laughter. Then, and I said, um, Thomas and uh, I said, uh, Thomas and uh, Kulata, Una nowhere, with an, a laughing emoji. In Nigeria, I have not seen context really, really matters. And most times, when we use that word, Una nowhere, it's in terms of laughter. Yeah, you guys, that, that's you know, how I, I understand it as well. No, no, no. I respect no. everyone of you that don't, don't I apologize for that. Don't apologize. You guys, you guys are too sensitive. I beg, let me continue. I mean, what, what, what's going on? Don't apologize for that. No, if you have to apologize, then how, I how for, will it for, that for, you Adelaide do? Coco, for Adelaide that jumped in, you see, when we talk about judgment, when we talk about judgment without listening, uh, without listening to the other person, it means that you have lacked judgment in the first place. Oh, no, 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 now you're going to go too far. Oh, no, no, all right. Oh, oh, no, no. no, no. Leave Ajale Koko alone. It's saying that it is wrong. No, no. Oh, 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 hold on. Hold on. Can you hold on, please? Can you hold on, please? But uh, I'm uh, sorry uh, if you no, fell no, off. No, no. I, I don't think an apology is due. In fact, if anybody should be apologizing, I think it is uh, it's Thomas who's trying to stir things up. Uh, so, so, Thomas, don't stir things up now. Don't stir things up. One, one, one man. man. Yeah. Oh, one man. Man. I said, I so find it Don't I have the right? <laughs> no, 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 were you looking to be offended? Was that it? Were you looking to be offended? One, one man. man. I find it offensive. Edjo, no, were you Edjo, looking let's to move on. Please. Let's move on, please. Let's move no, on. No, no. It's uh, no, Ma Ma Thomas. Don't stare things now. But don't stare things. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Kulata, yeah it, it wasn't a serious matter. Honestly, uh, Thomas, I don't even know. Can I say I, something, please? Uh, oh, can I right, say something, oh, please? All right, Adale Koko, but I want to shut that space down fairly quickly. I think yeah, yeah, Thomas, you will shut it down. I, 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 but I, I just have an advice for you. Thomas one is man. being mischievous. mischievous. No, one yeah. man, the way you handle it is totally wrong and it's not good. I have to let you know. Thomas is telling you, is telling this platform what happened, what this guy said, that he doesn't accept it. He doesn't accept it. It sounds offensive to him. And if you just allow this guy, Jewel, to handle it, 
to apologize or expansions or tell us the way what what in what 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 um, um, is position on that but for you to condemn thomas i think it's wrong he doesn't like it when somebody doesn't like the way somebody says something to him we should just accept it like that apologize and move on so uh, no, no, uh, I, 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 no. Sorry. You shouldn't. You shouldn't I, I, just. I didn't feel uh, an apology was um, necessary. Dam, was, you, you are damning Thomas, and you are encouraging, you are encouraging jo Joel to do it again. That's the no, way. That's the way I see it. No, no, and that's uh, not good. No, yes. no. I, I, I say it differently. If okay. uh, um, Thomas said uh, because I was listening closely to what he was, and I was, I was ready to weigh down on on Joel as well. But when he said Una no well. Uh, within the context of the Nigerian joviality, that is usually that that's body to body sort of language, and even Kulatas put it within context uh, as and, a recipient of you know, because we are breaking up. Huh? Oh, okay, oh. Can you hear me yeah. go. So you're still ready. Can hear... we, we can oh, hear you no. in more. Uh, Okay, what about now? Yeah, okay, that's better. Bit Hello? Yeah, go okay, on. now, uh, it, it, it was all in jest because yes. I were baiting, it was, we're baiting Joel that today, me, I said, I'm not going to talk about OB. Let's see how far Joel will be able to talk without mentioning OB. So that was the context, and I think Joel read that. And that Joel, you don't have to apologize to me. No, no, you doesn't. Because I was oh, part into that conversation somewhat as well. And that wasn't the context of, of that conversation. So I think Thomas was almost trying to stare. But don't stare, Thomas. Uh, so I, 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 I knew the context. That's why I, I was very quick to move. I don't you, you know, usually I don't tolerate a foul or offensive. But, uh, you know, fair play, fair play. So no apologies needed, I don't think. Uh, but uh, back to you, Kulata, if you have a better spot now. Oh, OK. I think I have a better spot now. Can you hear, guys hear me? Yes. You, you were going to the space of uh, the um, the BBC expose. Uh... Oh, the, OK. BBC. I, I mean, yes. Lai Mohammed. I mean, Lai Mohammed just being Lai Mohammed. Is it Donbass? Don I, I can say that. It, because look, what is he trying to do? Uh, BBC doing the work any journalist will do, which is inform the people. And actually, before they must have gone through that kind of interview, they will have seeked permission from Ministry of Information because they're foreign, they foreign, uh, they foreign journalist source in Nigeria. So definitely, some approval will have come from the Ministry of Information. So I don't get this nonsense. Lie is doing. Is it because they're just exposing how easily accessible? those terrorist guys are like i mean everybody knows there is like a, a massive conspiracy so the government knows where these guys are uh i mean i'm not even saying i'm not even going to say whether there's a will i think there's a conspiracy to keep this thing going on i just can't prove it because one of my friends mentioned uh i mean he talked to me today about going to abuja and some people informed him that there are some people, we can call them Kabbalah or whatever we want to call them, that want to keep this thing going on to prevent elections from happening so they can pick an interim government. And I don't, I can't make sense out of it. Like, who are these people? Why would they want to do it? But is this something within the range of possibility? Yeah, it's possible. But I just can't prove it that they're encouraging because it's, it doesn't make any sense for terrorists to be constantly attacking in the capital city. I mean, imagine thank Washington, D.C. Thank you, Aluta. For once, I don't know if I ever agree with you, but I did. <laughs> I <agree with> <laughs> what, what is wrong with everybody's system today? Well, carry on, Atlanta. It, it, it's an Atlanta thing. There's a weather issue going in Atlanta. Oh, so, it's been raining. It's been raining, yeah. It's been raining. Oh. Right. So, so th there's something going on. Like, I mean, this is, you're talking about the capital city now. I mean, you guys all talked about why they moved Abuja to the middle of the country. And I mean, they, is it by chance or upon stance that they went to the prison, they released, secured release of some people. After they went to the prison, you saw some bikers, some people going on Okada from Kogi, fully armed, going to Abuja. 
and then they started attacking and attacking. Are you telling me we we won't do anything about it or we can't do anything about it? It doesn't make any sense. So definitely, <clears throat> there's a there's a massive conspiracy behind this thing. But I just don't know. I can't prove anything. I don't I don't know how to how to explain what they're trying to do. But if what they are trying to do is to prevent Tinubu or Atiku from getting in, they're going about it the wrong way. Because you know, at that, the end of the you know that narrative about an interim government? It is something that has been simmering in the underbelly. They've been talking about it for quite a few months now and from various quarters as well. Some people actually say Buhari should stay there another four years. If he had the strength, he probably will. Yeah, but to what end? I mean, the, the means they're using is a crazy means. You're using religion, you're using uh, Fulani, uh, ethnic, I mean, Fulani ethnic jihadists to fight this war. So what end can we achieve but to have Fulani, jihad, uh, I mean, Fulani jihadists like have a domineering seat, like they don't even have enough power already. So, I mean, I used to take all this uh, Fulanization as conspiracy. It's no longer looking like conspiracy in my own mind. It's no longer looking like conspiracy. This is some serious shit. And we are, I mean, the worst part of it is I was speaking to my friend in Nigeria who was sending me Bonner Boy Besser video. I'm like, are you, are you insane? I mean, you have terrorists in the capital. You're showing me Bonner Boy video. So even the people in Nigeria, they're desensitized <laughs> over this whole thing. It's like, it's like us abroad that are warring. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, know, you know, a lot of us are, are abroad, we are probably more up to speed with what is going on in Nigeria than the average Nigerian in, because they are just trying to survive. They don't even know what they're doing. Exactly, know, that's I mean, the word. One man, they are trying one, to survive. That's it, right there. <laughs> one, one Edo friend of mine, one Edo, he lives in Abuja. I saw him wearing, uh, what's it called, tuxedo. He and his wife went for, um, <laughs> went for some ball, some ballroom nonsense. Yeah, tonight <laughs> in Abuja, <laughs> like I mean, it's the same Abuja. So honestly, I don't even know if I should feel for Nigeria or I should laugh at the whole thing because this is serious and people are kind of like living their life. I, I guess the, maybe the big, they're just the, big, the biggest crime. The biggest crime is wearing a tuxedo in uh, Abuja. Uh, uh, <laughs> we <laughs> <don't> <laughs> wear <laughs> we, <laughs> we are not. We are panicking for terrorists. You're wearing a tuxedo to go and to go and for angel. I don't understand Nigeria, so honestly, I don't. Kulata, I don't me. <laughs> Kulata, yeah, Kulata, I, I, do you want to talk about the Big Brother Nigerian space? You know, it's okay. okay. I'm I'm gonna gonna ah, Big Brother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about Obi, but you know that you know it's Obi's going to affect <laughs> because Tinubu you know, you know, voters are not watching Big Brother. Atiku voters are not watching. Not, Big Brother. Let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. Right, so I posted on. On my Facebook page, I said dollar this morning, one dollar to, and that was I think two days ago, and one dollar to uh, seven hundred and ten and naira. And these people are not even bothering. Now they have switched to BB Nigeria. One lady now posted a picture of a a, a housemate that had a, a be obedient and be useful at the back. She now said that they are following that program. But they are still uh, focused on the on the uh, on the main goal. I was them, like, you them, not they're embedding the embedding will be within like sub I mean subliminal will be messages, right? T-shirts. I, 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 I mean, think that guy messages. was just trying to be clever. Now you know, is a phone in something. That's so, what I'm saying. Uh, they were trying to be clever. That's what I'm saying. They're trying to be clever. You know. You, you know, I always check the headlines to see what uh, talking points to bring. And I'm noticing that the BBC Nigeria, uh, the whatever it is, the uh, housemaid something, that's already starting to dominate. One is just, telling us that this just is wait, wait, relationship. Wait till they start they, having the sex. Them are gay, you know. <laughs> wait, wait till they have. Wait till they start having sex on Big Brother. Yes. No, then no, no. The league don't start for it's London. It's 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 one man. Huh? You, you football league don't start now, be. In Europe, uh, 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 well, it's, it, it will start on Saturday when they do the charity shield. Yes, that's that's part of it too. <laughs> the obedience. We'll see how their internet power reach. Oh, Nigerians, <laughs> we're not ready. Honestly, we're not a serious people. We're not a serious people at all. Is it that people don't we understand the gravity of the situation, <laughs> or they just want to parunure? Well, anybody can translate that to English. They just want to forget their sorrows. 
Like, cause it, it, it's ridiculous now. I mean, we're talking about strong U.S. dollar. We're talking about um, we're talking about bunkering, oil bunkering that is reducing our output. Then we're talking about insecurity, and then we're talking about every part of the government on autopilot. A, a, a president that doesn't know there's a threat, as in. Am I even supposed to believe why he doesn't know? Doesn't he read newspaper or newspaper cartoons? At least he will be reading, if he can't read, he will be able to look at those cartoons uh, that Asuko or whatever creates. It's, it, it's not been, it's crazy. Like a governor will have to tell your president that your life is, I mean, there's a threat against you. <laughs> in what world? Are we no, in the world? They're just pulling out. They're just pulling out. Kulata, um, Peter Obi's running mate, uh, the Mauritanian, he said something that was quite pertinent. He said that the Buhari inner caucus, the, the functionings within the Asorok, that is made up of nephews and cousins, and that when he takes over, when they take over, it will be made up of technocrats and uh, experts. So uh, that, that just uh, sets the thoughts going. So uh, we, we all know that the Buhari kitchen cabinet is made up of friends and family. So they are not experts in anything. And they, they have not been in charge of that, this vast wealth. So they will be reinterpreting those, even if it's listening to the news, they'll be saying, uh, uh, this Yoruba again, uh, they will never change. Look at them. Oh, uh, if they did not do this, that one, they say, ah, to Mandela, you know? So uh, what does it know? Oh man, are you speaking out of experience, one man? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Why is the yam head now? We all know he doesn't know anything. <laughs> you say, look at this, you know, my people, they are here again. That, that's that kind of land of experience. <laughs> You know, because you know the Yorubas, they are, they are the ones that are reading the news most of the time. So you, are, or the, when he's listening to Ruben Abete, telling him that he's failing as a, as a president, you say uh, he's a good oh, man. man and a Yoruba My, my, my oh, question man. is that, why are we still petition in this uh, presidency? Yeah, we will forget the presidency and focus, and focus on the main deal. These people are just making fun of us at this point. They will fight them and even like Mohammed. I just, they're just laughing at us. Cause they, these are the rubbish that will keep us busy for the next six weeks. But it's a sick, it's a sick joke. It's uh, a, it's okay, a sick and morbid joke. Uh, but, oh man, I, I think we need to even talk of this Buhari of it because before 2015, this guy was really articulate one way or the other. At least if you ask him a question, he answers directly to that question. But what has happened, especially after he became sick and there was this. Uh, valley of um silence before he came back again i don't know if there's something that was wrong with that guy because and I want, really mm. I want to pinpoint i want to i want to really pinpoint isn't that maybe this guy is exactly what i wanted to say now jibril oh, hold on well, hold on hold on uh okay yeah sorry, sorry where, but... where, where is intelligence only that he, he, he intelligently plays foolishness because sometimes you ask him a question and you see him answering something different. Okay, look at the space of the answers the other time when he was saying the, those people wanted to overtake his government. Does that really make sense? But I think he intentionally do, does these things so that you know it can there's a there's so that there can be a cloud of confusion in the state. Do, do you so think he intentionally that. does it, or do you think he has debilitated quite sharply? Well, I, 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 to be frank, I'm in between two because sometimes it does it as if uh this guy is senile and then but again you see him answer some questions you see him getting articulated about some things you know that you know have, you, have you seen that, that recently that... have you seen that recently okay uh, how does he know that okay except if, if he's still relying <laughs> because how will he say that um, some people want to overthrow his government for example that's okay, what he was told he, that's what he was told, that's what he was told. Yeah. well well, you, well, you know, well. I, I, you know why I was quite keen to hear what you were saying, uh, uh, Emiloko, was in that yeah. snippet, that um, that video that I was playing of uh, uh, of the uh, rice thing. They, they were doing yeah. two segments of news. They were talking about uh, Buhari, uh, what he was saying uh, pre government government, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and I watched yeah. that interview that I did. It was quite detailed. It was quite technical yes. to, his, to to his level, though, not that you know, but there was, there was some <laughs> coherence. But but now in it speaks, it, yes, the, now he just speaks in gibberish, you know, not just total gibberish all the way through. So is it that is wittingly uh, uh, doing that, which will be a stretch, or he has debilitated quite sharply off the back of that ailment? Yeah, and I, I guess senility has set in. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I think that is it. And maybe there is this selective amnesia that is also uh, maybe, you know, I, because, uh, um, for instance, now, okay, he, he told his family that he had, he, he has no no property to hand over to them because one way or the other, he has settled all of them, actually. <laughs> he has, I think every of this family now trying to get married before he finishes this tenure because of the gift they will receive as a, as a president's person. And he's, that is wisdom. He's trying to put some things in place. And for him to even come out and say uh, that this is exactly what he wanted for the country. And that's why I was, uh, when Kulata was saying, uh, is it Kulata who made reference to the fact that perhaps there is simply a fulanization agenda, even though the agenda is not, but he, maybe that's what he's trying to support too. And he's like, okay, now my people yeah, are but, sorted. Okay, but if you so, like, don't. But you see the, the fulanization. So Buhari's pro, the Buhari, I think there's something is it a Buari style or there's something wrong with him, like physically, health wise? Like, he can't because I've heard that, from time that, that, that <laughs> but, but the thing is, even when he was a normal guy, they told me he had this aloof way of doing things. Because when Abacha made him the PTD, uh, PT Petroleum Development Trust Fund chairman, that they were building roads, Buari was just a figurehead. Is this his same nephew's? that I was using to run all those contracts. So they chopped, they chopped PTDF money and Buari was just a figure doing things. So when he was about to be president, because I was one of those stupid people that thought he would be able to like fix corruption. A friend of mine was telling me that this guy that they're talking about, that he's not the one that does the work. Well, he'll just sit down there and let a few people just do everything. I would thought like, ah man, you're just joking. Isn't it the one that did war against the discipline and all that stuff? The same thing that my friend described is what is happening. Because when he entered, he brought his nephew. Then he brought Abba Kiari and shot everybody out. Shebi, they said Tinubu, that brought, Tinubu was the one that said he brought him in. He didn't even follow any APC manifesto because all of us that thought Bari will do okay. We thought, okay, um, they're going to replicate what they did in Lagos. They'll follow APC manifesto. Which APC manifesto? They've not touched anything in any APC manifesto. Is those just his inner circle. That, will, that do everything. Now, within his inner circle, are we now saying he's not even curious enough to pick up a newspaper or to watch news or to interpret news? Like, yeah, well, 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 those well, 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 hold on, Kulata. He's able to watch the news and maybe, uh, I'm not sure how much he's able to read the newspaper. I'm hopeful that he's able to read it. But then, of course, you, you know that when, when you come up, just exactly as we are doing now, you, you then discuss what is going on with, with uh, people that are close to you. But then they give him context to what he has read, and they give him political uh, angles to it, they give him tribal angles to it, and they give him uh, histor historical antecedents to it. So they, they help him digest the, the news in a way that favors their, their ability to continue looting. Because I don't think Buari has enough function to... So he, he, he's surrounded by a bunch of psychophants and he doesn't that, have uh, he, yes. <laughs> he, he doesn't have any truth teller that you can go. You know, I mean everybody should have like an accountability partner that okay, whenever I'm whenever I'm messing up, you are the one that's gonna ground me. Like, hey, don't get things get into your head. You are messing up in this way, that way, that way. Well, the only person that could have been his accountability partner was actually his wife, but they kicked her out. They, they kicked her out to Dubai. You, you know, that's the that's, one fatal flaw that Boari made. And that is the flaw. That flaw is what we are paying for now. He did not put any voices. Uh, and when you're talking about a KGM cabinet, forget all of the ministers and everything. You know, when they want to pick ministers, it is these people that will bring the name. Yeah, it's bring. the same in a caucus. Yeah. yeah. So, but he, he just put one voice in that in a caucus, which is his tribe and religion. So he, he doesn't have a good feel of what the Yorubas are thinking because they've shot Toshiba and Joel completely. He, the egos are even more remote. So he then has just this one singular voice, just regurgitating, and he already a man of tribe and religion. So he's a, already a prejudiced man in terms of tribe. So they just feed him what he likes to eat, you know? So, so, okay. yeah. so guys, I want you guys to think about this or answer if you can't, like... So if Buari, let's just say Buari is a symbolic Fulani patron, which he is, he is. He was one of the people trying to negotiate even on behalf of Boko Haram before he became president. So let's say he's a symbolic um, uh, Fulani patron. Do you guys feel that they have an agreement 
that they will either implement Ruga or some form of settlement, uh, this waterway bill, some sort of settlement that will allow those people to roam freely in the country. And the reason I say this is, I relate it to the beginning of that BBC video, when they were kind of like showing the other side of the information that hey, Fulani are marginalized. You know, everybody has a sub marginalization story in Nigeria. Uh, Fulani are marginalized, I also has taken over everything and blah, blah, blah. So do, do we think there's some form of written or unwritten agreement to kind of like le find a legitimate way to hand over this country to those marauding herders? Can anybody address I, 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 I think so. I, I think in the build-up to the last couple of months of Buhari's administration, you see a raft of uh, a Fulani-centric uh, 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 policies and positions that are embedded within the Nigerian uh, space, difficult to remove. So all this, um, you know, the grazing route that he said they should go and look for the Gazette from mm. colonial times, mm. that, that, that is going to be embedded. And once it's embedded, there's no moving it because the the, the parliament is padded with uh, northern Because you remember in that BBC video, this one of those Fulani guys talked about that there's no longer grazing route. Do you remember? Mm. So, so, so this is it. It's going to do a raft of Fulani things it, 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 just to gift the country to them as it leaves. But know? it, it so, can't get I'm, anyone through the parliament. I respond to your question. Okay. Uh, one man, you remember, if you remember again, my very first days of coming to this uh, platform, you know, when uh, everywhere is pretty much boiling, the east, the west, and everybody... And the question was asked, and that's where I coined that phrase, on our politics. And I went ahead to say that come 2023, there'll be a new sheriff in town that is not going to be the incumbent president. Why? I and mean, because of that, everybody who believe that he can rule, can govern, and in time, has what it takes, are pulling strings, which inform me to say, even the what the Kanu is doing, all because of 2023, the world he is doing, and the Fulani two are not exclusive. And even Buhari said it in that uh, interview you are trying to describe one man with the, uh, is it arise the very first time. And he said that, he mentioned it that, yes, yeah, there are so many ethnicity in Nigeria, but everybody is fighting for, for superiority. He said it blank, but people are not seeing that as if he doesn't know what Every ethnicity believe that nine days superior pass for Nigeria. That's a fact. Even me, we say my, my my people will not reach a 500. I will sit there and say, man, I will get the country. So that's exactly what you are seeing. Everybody is pulling string. However, they didn't feed by killing, by bribing, by whatever, just to make sure it came into 2023. It's a game on our politics. It might sound very it's not, but it's not, right, but, but it's not complex than that, though. Oh. Nobody wins in that situation. Nobody wins. Exactly. But, um, you know. If you're saying all now politics, we're talking about people brandishing arms. Like, they already have the arms. Are they going to, okay, you give them settlement, you think they're going to let go of the arms? Or they're now going to now, like, legitimately, like, legitimately subjugate the locals? Like, we've, we have the legal right to be on this land, and then we have the Hello. guns. To capture you, Kaluta, it's, a, it's a matter of life and life and death, too, just like what we are trying to start. Yeah, so, we've reached really that. Bad. This is now an existential threat. Now, I mean, what are we talking I, about here? Has, has what anybody are we talking gotten about? the power yet? Nobody has gotten the power now. Until then, nothing will come down. <laughs> not then, somebody has to clinch the power. We're not taking it that be, when you get the that power. BBC, I, I, I so much love that BBC article. He exposed <laughs> the rift between Alsa and Fulani. Like, we down south, we were oblivious of that. I, I, no, Actually, I don't think there's any rift. No, there's no rift. Oh, god. Let, let, okay. Fulata, let him, yeah. A, 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 lot, a lot of us in our minds are like, why aren't these Alsa people pushing back? You know, we always think like they're like almost like all day that ah. Come on, why are these people ruling over you? But apparently in Zamfara, it's all about an ethnic fight, ethnic struggle between the Fulani and the Aosas. The worst part of it is the Fulani strike the Aosas. The Aosas go and attack aimlessly based on what uh, based on that uh, BBC stuff. Like they, they just they attack didn't, anyhow. Did anything strike you in that, uh, in that narrative, the Fulanis versus Aosas? Uh, let, let me, uh, in fact, let me not even lead you because I, I, I noticed it. I can you. tell you some of the things that struck me. Yeah. Some of the things that struck me was the, first of all, the obvious, the full is they get reinforcement from outside the country. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing which they've done, they did it to Yoruba, they did it to outsiders in the past in 1804. 
they're recruiting fellow officers to also go and attack officers. How, how are they able to pull that off all the time? I don't get it. Like, because they, they're also using officers to go and attack officers. So Fulani is come harmed with Fulani and Alsa banned entry. It's crazy. Let, let me tell you one thing that struck me in that uh, in, in that uh, uh, that subset. Uh, what I noticed was the, the the houses were vigilantes, and if you go and watch the documentary again, you will notice that the vigilantes they had them guns. Do you remember those? Yeah, they had, I saw that. They, now they, they had them guns. Like guns. But the Fulanis, you, you saw what the Fulanis were carrying. Uh, AK. They, AK. They, they all carried AK. AK. So so there you there you are. There you are. It will take just one full and it to wipe out. Uh, by the time they are putting the gunpowder and cooking the something and then patting the back of it, if they have more but, them down now with AK. Let me tell you why but, I now think we're, we're, in we're in trouble for the longest. It is now a business model. It's now mm -hmm. a business. It's now a business model. And then you can now sell franchise. So all you have to do now is kidnap a few people. Like they're getting closer to Abuja, they're getting closer to the where rich people live. So you think 60 million that uh, you know how much AK is they buy with 60 million? Wait till to wait till they capture a better butter person, they will get 600 million. Imagine the uh, the number of loose arms they can get from Libya and bring it here. Like the entire country will be will be will be so I mean overwhelmed and subdued very very soon. So they've you, discovered. You, you, you see, this problem it has an international dimension. And that international dimension is to identify the depot. I thank you, George Bush, by the way, because what we're suffering now is, is all down to George W. George uh, Bush. A lot of it directly it, to it, Obama. It, 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 is it not him that went to blow, blow, blow up our Lib Who blew up Libya? No, it's Obama that blew uh -huh. up Libya well, 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 thank you, Obama, then. So, it's Obama but, that put it, us yeah. in trouble. Uh -huh. But, but uh, you know, they have to find out because there has to be some depot where all this, uh, and I think it's in the hands of the Taregs or Tuaregs. Yeah, it's in the Taregs in Libya. Yeah, yeah. When they chased like Gaddafi, Gaddafi had bought a ton of like arms for for one decades, man. One man. for decades. Next so one. those arms stuff now is is now like open. Is is being traded in the in the what's it called in the black market, and you, now one thing is not just the bandits making money. The military too is making money because. Because there's banditry, the military budget automatically goes up because they have to keep pumping the money to the military. But when they pump the money into the military, nobody's using it to go and buy guns. They're stealing it. So everybody makes money. The military makes money. The bandits makes money. The people are screwed. That's a it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a terrible it's a, situation. It's a, it's a, sorry to that, just to also put, uh, to just put that in the case. And also, you know that um, there's this even the, the international uh well, for the people who call the, these countries they call international or whatever whatever they have their own angle to this story as well because they know that a destabilized sahara uh, sub-saharan state is their own benefit a destabilized african state is to their own benefit for instance france is benefiting from the francophone countries because even to today despite the fact that each of these countries are standing on their own they get their taxes they pay taxes to france they don't own any of those resources in their own land they and so also is it with this in with the west there, there's there is this if if you look at even terrorism even it has been planned before before now there's the first world war second world war there's a book i can't even picture the name again now. you know the first world war even the third world war is taken to be the one terrorism itself so all these things there's 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 a plan towards it and that is why our people, our government, they, we are, you know, that's why the fact that there is greed. Greed is also helping them to not to, they are servicing the, the greed of these foreign foreign people as well. To make sure that there's the stability in the system so that greed and corruption can continue and the people will continue to, to be servants for their for the rest of their lives. That is just Oh, all right, brilliant. Uh, so, r r I'm sorry, I think Rational Mind wanted to come in. Rational Mind, did you want to add to... Uh... Oh, 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 all right. Uh, round off your thoughts on that space, uh, Kulata, and then I'm... Yeah, uh, yeah, move on Move on to the other topic. Like, oh, is oh, depressing oh, oh, enough? Oh, 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 all right. Uh, I'm not sure if you won't be uh, just as depressed. Nigerians to pay more for phone calls and data in new federal government tax. 
So th this is the thing now. The only thing that does not go up, of course, is the Nigerian uh, 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 worker's wage. Well, you guys will not like me for this, but uh, Nigerians, I mean, Nigeria needs revenue. We are the lowest, we are the lowest, uh, we have the lowest revenue to GDP rate in Africa, probably in the entire world. Our GDP is so high, we're not making money out of that GDP. So the truth is, we're the least taxed country in Africa, and we can't really sustain that position because we don't have any, I mean, the areas where we're making money is dwindling fast, fast and fast. So they need to, they need to find a way of raising taxes. And a reliable way of raising taxes is through the phone because almost everybody has a phone and almost everybody sends data. It's very, very difficult to go after people's payroll because not a lot of people have uh, jobs that you can easily go, I mean, that you can easily tax. So the country needs levies, the country needs fees, the country needs taxes. We're the least tax country. So I'm not going to blame the government. But the only thing I can say is, should be when they were chopping money, we can say, okay, that's oil that is... Uh, offshore or Niger or to some extent, they they shot the hello, they, hello, they taking, Kulata. Can they, I ask you a question? Be, let me I just finish my thoughts. Let me finish my no. thoughts before. Let me finish my thoughts. You can't say no to my thoughts now. Ava, egg be no, 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 hold on. We can interject now. What are you yeah, talking but about? Let me finish my thoughts. So, no, yes, I just yeah, on, but, uh, along that line, I just want to, yeah, but yeah, you, come, you come back to it now. Let me so what I'm saying is if they're going to be taking people's taxes. Corruption has to be taken seriously because you are taking people's money directly. You can't now have some idiot be chopping that money. We need the money, but it doesn't mean anybody should be chopping the money. Okay. Ajande Google. Okay, you said we are the least tax country. In Africa. In Africa. Yes. Do you know how much uh, business organization paid in totality as tax? Relative taxes? To relative to what no i'm just asking you do you yeah, know i'm, I'm also asking you but i'm also okay, asking hold on, you hold on, hold on. To what? hold on hold on hold on when you pay the corporate tax when you pay the vat mm -hmm. you pay a business tax all the taxes do you know that do you know how much totality is, is, that it amount to in nigeria uh, re but first question, relative to what? Then how much is this percentage you're talking about? 55%, between 55 to 60%. That is what uh, but the, business yeah, I mean, organization uh, paid in Nigeria. You are saying that, Nigeria, no, I mean, we are least paid. We are the least taxed. But there are two things about tax. Yeah, yeah. There, there are two, you no, asked a question. There are two things about oh, tax. So we have, oh, oh. we have a situation where the taxable population is low. But the problem, the, 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 the way to fix the problem is you can reduce the tax rate but widen the tax base, meaning tax more people, bring the rate down, not concentrate on the, on the few businesses that are taxable and then tax the life out of them. That's wrong. You, you need to bring that tax rate down but widen the tax base. I mean, go on. That, that, that's what I'm, what, what I'm telling you. I'm talking, to I'm talking in concern. You are not people I'm, don't have jobs. You want to tax them. Well, I don't understand your own. Uh, uh, other African countries that they are taxing, God, they get job passers. They, they get what we get. Do they have the resources yeah. that we have? That's not sense. Come that on, you have to be serious. Because you have resources. Like because you have resources. Because you have resources. When the resources what is dry our minimum wage in the first when, place? When, when, when the resources dry up. No, what is up, our we'll, minimum we'll, wage? We'll all go back to the outside church and be praying. Create for, more joy. When you manner. create more jobs, you get more tax. If you don't create joy, you will not get tax. Oh, yeah. Don't tax the little one that you are giving the people. You're living in a You're living in a society. You're living in a society. And you can see what your tax dollars are doing for you. How so don't do I give me that if I don't earn? If I don't well, earn, how do I pay? A lot of, how do we have 400 and something billion dollars in GDP and we're only able to tax so little of that GDP? You are you are still yeah. now. So the the ordinary citizens should pay for that. Right? When you know that definitely there's you, no job for that. There are many there are many people trading, making a killing that are not paying a single dime. They pay taxes. You don't know. What do you mean? I don't, you don't know. know. What do you mean? I don't know. What do you mean? I don't know. What do you mean? I don't know. How many pay taxes? You don't know. But where, why is that taxes the the lowest rate? It's not okay. They pay a few people pay, but more people can pay. 
Do you think we're only going to rely for oil? Rely on oil for the rest of It is not oil. Nigerian pay taxes. All those, hold on. Pay taxes. No. Your hold argument, on. Your, this, is a, this is non, hold this is non, this is non, this is non secular. We're not I saying whether people pay tax. Or not. We're guys. talking about if we're getting yeah. enough tax revenues, not whether some people pay tax. What do you mean by enough kind of tax revenue? What, what kind is of enough is tax revenue? Okay, tell us your what your definition or what your position about enough in, tax in, revenue in Ghana. In Ghana. Ghana is forget generating... Forget about Ghana. Don't Why tell us Ghana. Why would I forget about Ghana? Don't, what do you don't, mean? Don't Isn't Ghana an African in. country? What, what do you no, mean? No, don't bring Ghana in. Just Ghana, concentrate on Nigeria. Oh, Ga Ghana, Ghana, Ghana is you saying Nigeria is at least uh, 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 You know that. Uh, uh, Nigeria Ghana Ghana is at least you know that. Look, so too guys, many voices now. Too many voices. Come because I, I know this is a controversial position. Country, yeah, you said countries, Nigerians are least tax, right? Yes, we are the least tax in us, Africa. Tell us in what area that you think Nigerians should be taxed. There are many, many areas where Nigerians No, a mention. Tell us. Tell uh, us. So, uh, first of all, property mm -hmm. tax. Property tax needs to be wider. It's wider? Not just going to be, it, it doesn't have to be concentrated in Lagos. Then it you should have... It is everywhere uh, they pay property tax. Yeah, you see, you don't know. Now. Oga, yeah. if you ask me a question, you let me land before you interject. You're not going to filibuster what I'm saying. So They pay property taxes. I'm telling you everywhere uh, in Nigeria. I yes, said it, I said it can be improved. There's still room for improve, improvement. Improve to for, increase to increase. The, That's what you the mean. Traders, the traders, the traders, the small small business. There needs to be more taxes into small businesses. A lot of small businesses. They should are increase it. They are paying taxes. So you are mean they should increase not taxes. All, how many are they taxing? How but many are they you, taxing? This is what you don't know. What you what don't do you mean know? I don't, don't know? Do when say, our tax rate to GDP is eight percent in Ghana is eighteen percent. Does Ghana have two heads? Lata, can I say something to help you out with this? Does Ghana have two heads? Does Ivory Coast have two heads? Does Benin Republic have two heads? Does Congo Brazzaville have two heads? What are you talking about? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let other people jump in. You see, let's have from rational mind. Rational mind. Let's have from rational mind. You see, I think both of you have you have you have points. Lata has points. Um, Koko has points. But the point is this, that from what I've deduced from both of you, is that you need to understand that Nigerians, in some ways, they are overtaxed. And in some ways, they are undertaxed. Undertaxed, yes. So overtaxed in the sense like what, like, um, what's his name? Um, Ajali Koko said that the businesses, like the big businesses, they overtax them. Yes. Yeah. But then average Nigerians, how many of us are paying, I mean, how many of us are paying income tax there in that country? Very few. Maybe, maybe in Lagos, perhaps. Other states. A lot, okay, look, look at the look at the farmers. How many of them are taxed? And they make income from that. So you see, the point is, like Kolata said, there's still room for improvement. Uh, another thing again is the, the graft in that tax in that taxation uh, area. There's a lot of graft. I give you an example. In Lagos, those guys that stays on the road that collects money, FCO Luomo and his people. Do you know that they print their own separate um, tickets? That is graft on their own. That is money being siphoned through some, some means. So if they can harmonize all these things, Lagos will get more tax. Same thing with other states. If they have something like that too, they can get more, they will block those loopholes. They will get more accountability for those monies that are coming in. There are some individuals will be through some kind of loopholes or some kind of, some kind of means. They will be, I mean, taking advantage of that and taking money out of the system. So, like I said, Ayala Koko has points, Nicolata has points. We just, we just need to understand that middle ground. Where that, yes, there needs which to is, be an improvement. We need to which they, is, they which is, we need to widen the tax base. I tax agree with more you people on that. And lower the tax rate. Yeah. Lower the tax the rate point. across the board, widen the base so we can collect more tax. It's, it's not rocket science. All African countries are getting more from taxes and they're poorer than us. I mean, but, yes. But, we, but, but you, know, do you, know, do you know the difference? Let me give you an example of Benin Republic there. Benin Republic, they have a very good tax system. You cannot, you cannot swing, you cannot swindle the states. You have to pay your tax. But in Nigeria, anybody just do anyhow in that country. That is why people just pay tax and they just go like that without having any accountability for that. That's my point. Um, um, rational mind. Every business is that small or big in Nigeria, in any way you want to define it, pay taxes. The problem is that the government does not use the taxes well. They don't invest that taxes on infrastructure, on general well-being of the people. And that is why they cannot 
make more taxes. If you invest the revenue on taxes and levies well in building infrastructure, in building good school, in building good hospital, in building good roads, you will make more taxes because we create environment, I mean, a, a good environment for investment and how do I say expansion, business expansion. But so currently, you know, our tax receipts, our tax I, I, I receipts want to tell is you, low. Our everybody tax is low. pay taxes in that country. No. People that do businesses, small, big, medium, any way you want to do it, they pay taxes. This is what I know. You cannot no. escape it. And they are double, they are overpaid. They the few are, people, they the few people rather, that pay, rather, the few, they are the few overpaid. People, the few tax. people that uh, pay taxes, eh? the few people that pay taxes are overtaxed. The majority do not pay a single dime in tax. Tell me, tell me those pay. those that you know that doesn't pay tax. Tell me. Uh, go to go to Fiditi. Go to Fiditi market and tell me they should show, show their tax uh, receipt. I mean, they should show their uh, what tax return. Go to Fiditi market do, or go to. Do Ibo, you know that those places, go those Fiditi market seller you are talking about? Do you know that local government if, uh, levy taxes on them every day? Uh, do you know that? There's no. Do you know that there is no you know taxes that? coming out do of those. Do you know that? <laughs> no. Do you know that? You I'm have telling to blame you, there's nothing the coming out of there. People pay taxes. Uh. You blame your 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 government for not put, putting in place a good tax structure the, that there can needs show to be, accountability. That is the problem. But there Nigeria needs to be pay taxes. Oh, oh, there all needs right. to be reform. Oh, 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 all right, hold on. Uh, so Kulata mentions that Nigeria is under tax. So. Let, let's give him the space to 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 to, to explain that. So explain that uh, just as as uh, as because much as you can, see and then I'll we, move you on. Yeah. See from if you look at every country, see why we're struggling with all these revenue issues now because we only rely on one main, major source of revenue. Is because every sane country are able to tap into their GDP. Unlike us, if you look at our debt to GDP, is one of the lowest. But when you look at our revenue to debt, it's one of the worst right now because right now we're over. We're not able to make more revenue out of our GDP. And the way you make revenue out of your GDP is by taxation. Every, I mean, Ghana is able to borrow more. They're able to leverage more. Other African countries are able to leverage more. Other world countries. So we can't just remain a country where we, we're, we're turning around GDP to tax around, I can't even remember the figure, was it 8 or 9%? Something that low. So I'm not saying increase the tax rate. I'm saying increase the tax base. Tax more, but reduce the rate. So that burden is shared. Across Kulata, is can, shared. I, can I interject a little bit, please? Because this tax issue, I think we're just a little we're liberal on it. Can I just, just make a short comment to you? Um, when you say that you are going to increase the tax base, um, I would like to make you understand that. Are you increasing the tax base? When was the last time the um, minimum wage was increased? Uh, well, so, minimum, so, so, minimum wage is 30,000 right now. It's 30,000, right? 30, 000, right? 30, so, 000. Well, let me tell you. But you can't, you, you're so, talking about. Joel, you, you, in every country, you don't tax the most vulnerable. I, I, so let, 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 let me just come down. I'll just, I just make it very fast, okay? Um. When you come to the taxation system in Nigeria, the, more, the areas most taxed are areas in the southern part of Nigeria. We are being overtaxed. So when you put this VAT, you put uh, uh, the person in the market, you're talking about people in the market, they pay to the local government. So when you keep piling up these taxes on people, when you keep piling up the taxes, it will be hard for them to, to, uh, 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 to expand. It will be hard for them to make ends meet. So you cannot just have a, 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 a keep on taxing people without a corresponding so, way for them to a, 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 a create income. So what now are we you're talking about? So, the base. so what exactly are we doing? We're creating an inertia. The, you can't move no. forward. You can't move backward because no, first of all, no, no, no. You have there's to, no, you have there's to no first, money. You have to first invest in critical sectors. You Joel, have to start investing Joel. so that people. Well, so where where, where would you get the money from? Where, where, where would you get the money from? 
you, you have to no, borrow. No, no. Hey, hold on, hold on. You, you have borrowed to build a, 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 a and if you um, borrow, you have to pay. Line. You have to pay the principal and interest. Country. See, there's nothing wrong in it. The problem with yeah, us, we've always we're not this. being Joel. We're not being if we can't afford to pay our debt right now. Don't you know what That's the problem what I'm is? I'm telling you, but at the same time, it doesn't mean that we cannot borrow. What I'm saying now is that we can let me tell let you what I'm borrow to invest. Let us borrow you and invest. Joel, you cannot do that. Can do that. Let me Joel, you can do that. Let me yeah, do this. Okay. Sorry, sorry, please. You can what do what we need to do. What we need, hold on, hold on. What we need to do is allow private investors come in, create an environment for them. Give them That's a chance. What I'm talking about. Hold on, hold on. You said we should borrow money. No, we don't need to yes. borrow money. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Like okay. Obi was saying, I don't, I don't, I like, I hate going to this Obi, Obi production to whatever, whatever. I hate saying, right. that. but like he said, what we need to do is create an enabling environment for investors to come in. Investors yes. invest into Nigeria, they create jobs for the people, the private sectors, they employ people. You can tax them. That government. It wasn't Obi that said that. It was Atiku. Either, either way. Obi said, no, no, o, o, Obi that too. All of them anyone, said it is anyone. fine. It's, 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 it's common sense. Yes. It's, it's common. Yes. That is common economics. People need mm -hmm. to work. I've said this on your platform yes. here, one man, even before Obi comes into the scene. How this year, we've been saying it about since last year. That what Nigeria needs, we need to put our people into work. They need to work. When you work, when the you, work, work you the can work? tax. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You can tax them. That tax, mm -hmm. if you are being put to use, like Adele Koko said, you can put it into the system by creating infrastructures like school. You employ more teachers. These teachers are also taxed. The textbooks they buy, a lot of printing will be made. They will make more textbooks. If maybe it's um, ICT or IT, you, you will. You, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a circle that you will create. You will well, how, much, the, how, how much do you think that how, how much do you think that we get from taxes that we we, we are going to uh, we are going to use in making all this investment? Where are we? No, how no, many no, taxes no, are we, we going to get? get okay. for one million dollars. No, 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 for one, 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 one megawatt of electricity. Oh, um, uh, you get, you're not getting it right. You're not getting this. What I'm trying to say. Allow private investors come in. Either our electric sector, let them take over it. Like Siemens, allow them. We have a deal with them. Bring in other foreign investors, like financial institutions. Let them come in. Nigerians abroad who wants to invest, let them come in. Create an enabling environment for them. Give them a tax break. I have, a, I have a target that from this also year to the number of years, we're going to give you a tax break. Let's stabilize the economy first. From there, after a while, you can now start taxing them because people are now working. Thank you. You can but, afford to pay tax. Rather, you go and borrow money and be doing some super infrastructure, infrastructure that, does not, that does not even do anything to the system. Look at all the money they borrowed. What is the impact no, on the system? But, but if you borrow, if you borrow to build like a power plant, that is not that is not that is not. Um, uh, uh, but we know how we've been doing all these years. Look at sixteen billion Joel. dollars, sixteen billion dollars that this guy borrowed. Rational right mind, rational mind, Joel. Let me let me let me let's land on some realities right now. Today, interest rates are high. They are very high in America and everywhere. So if you are going to borrow today, the rate of interest you are going to be able to pay back is going to be stupendously high. There are many. Properties I like buying, I would like to buy. But right now, I have to rethink because interest rate is high for a mortgage. So if Nigeria goes to the markets to borrow, they will price our rates so high. It will be borrowing right now is almost unaffordable, number one. And number two, even the debt we currently have, we can't pay it back again with our revenues because we can't generate more money. So th those are another realities. Then um, foreign, I mean, the only money we can rely on is either drug money or abroad people sending money into the country. So if you're going to have, is, I mean, you can't borrow. It's too expensive right now. Uh, for, to bring in foreign investors, you have to create an enabling environment. How are you going to create an enabling environment? You have to allow investors to be able to make money. You can't start dictating terms. If I'm going to bring dollars to go into Nigeria, I have the option of taking the dollars and going to put it to sit in American Reserve Bank because I'm going to get more interest rate today. But if I'm going to take it to Nigeria with all the risk, then, to, I mean, to, trust me, I will dictate my terms. That means all these price controls you want to give, like let, um, let people not pay this tariff, let people not pay that tariff. That's nonsense. I'm not going to sign any deal with you. So the service I'm going to offer is going to ex be expensive. So if Siemens is coming, you're, you have to be able to pay out of your nose. So how do we manage all this situation? We have to be able to milk more. I mean, we said we're sitting on 400 billion or whatever per year that we're deluding ourselves. We have to be able to, to get some money out of it to be able to even fund more borrowing 
or be able to let investors come in that, hey, if anything goes wrong, there's money in our tax revenue that is guaranteed to be able to pay you back. And if you don't have that, then you have nothing coming in. No investor will come in. Nobody will borrow you any money in this time that interest rates are high. Then you're screwed. You can't go to the bond market. Nobody's going to buy your bond when U.S. bonds is there. U.S. is almost guaranteed money with high rates. This time, this interest rate going up in U.S. is really messing a lot of things up. You can hardly borrow anything right now. Then what are we left with? Central bank to do ways and means gimmick. We've, we've already maximized ways and makes gimmicks to the tone of 19 billion. So how many options do we have? If you're going to bring investors in, investors have to get their money back. How do you guarantee their money back? You need taxes or you need to remove subsidy. You need to, something has to give. So let's not delude ourselves. These are difficult okay, decisions okay, you have okay. to make. Okay, okay like, Rata, this is the thing then. If, if, we're, if we're going to do it, if we're going to do it, if we're going to solve the solution, right, locally, like uh, uh, Peter B said, right, then we need to cut cost of governance. You cannot increase taxes of the people, whereas those in government to keep whatever thing they are earning. You see, it has to be a sacrifice across all board. I agree. I agree. I, 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 I agree. I agree. I agree with you. Uh, we can't then sustain. We have to tighten the loopholes as regards to the kind of loans the state government take. We cannot continue to have a state government that goes out to borrow to pay salaries. Because this is all of them. I, but the thing so, is, you can't and, stop and, state and government. In addition, if, if, and in addition to this, then. all this um, collateral that Nigeria doesn't pay tax, let me tell you, Nigeria pays huge taxes. The problem we have in Nigeria is that Nigeria doesn't keep accountability of these taxes. Most of these taxes ended up in private pocket. They are looted. They are not declared. They are not declared. That's the problem. So all those GDP stuff that you say you're looking at, you are just looking at a fake declaration. Adrian uh, Lekoko, we can't be, so, when we're talking what, serious, what, we can't be, we, we, we need no, to no, no, this is You can't what, be saying, what, you can't be saying what, data that the entire world uses is fake this, is fake that. Come on, uh, let's, uh, get, uh, let's uh, get real. There needs no, to be a basis you, for you something. May not, you may not Nigeria get real. Is not, Nigeria if is you not don't that want exceptional to, of it. Hold on. If you don't want to get real, then you may not get to, but the reality is what I'm telling you, what operate in Nigeria, every money end up, a lot of this money end up in the pocket of some people. We are seeing a serious looting in the oil sector. So it goes with the taxes that people pay. Most of those money paid by people ended up in, in people's pocket. They are not declared. So... That is the I problem. So this GDP you are looking at, it doesn't reflect of Yeah, it doesn't reflect how okay. much Nigerian pay taxes. But I know, I know people that have businesses in Nigeria. I know people that have invested in industrial sector in Nigeria, in industry that ended up to pack up because of all these outrageous taxes. In Nigeria, industry, so, no, no, a lot of no, business. Even the small business, it is based on people that question. run small business, they pay a lot, a lot of taxes. Look, I got to go. An industry can pass tax costs to the customer. It's forex that really drives a lot of industry away, not taxes. You can you can increase your prices and and I mean you pass. Yeah, yeah, you, 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 you are just talking, saying it as if it I is easy go. to operate business like that in Nigeria. I got to go. Can I ask a question? You are here in America. Yes. Now, the IRS, the IRS, the bulk of mm. the money that the IRS make, what do you think they made that money from? Bulk of how much they make? They make, yeah, they the make from they make. small businesses. No, it's income tax. Well, maybe you might be right. I don't know. I they, don't have fact to that they, effect. They generate more revenue from income tax. From, okay. So, okay. You, you, you can do anything to IRS, so, but your income tax, they don't play with it. We can talk about that, other taxes like properties and all, property, uh, property taxes and all of that taxes or whatever you generate. But well, then, anyhow, it is either you earn money from your property or anything you earn money, you must pay tax on it, which is more like an income tax. That's so, right. the problem I'm trying to make you understand is this you see, our, our, our people are under tax. I mean, like maybe, maybe let me say that they're under tax. They, 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 they are taxing but, the But field. rational mind, oh, workers no, pay taxes too in Nigeria. Workers. You say what? Workers, Nigerian workers, they pay taxes. We know, they, but compared yes. to the people who are not working, 
I got to go, oh, but you oh, don't yes, get, just yes. you get it. You're, you're right. Yes. The unemployment is so high in Nigeria. It's like one every one person to so maybe like ten thousand person working in Nigeria. That's the ratio. That's how I that's how I see it. One person in every ten thousand. That's the kind of people that work in Nigeria. Or maybe like, maybe it's too, maybe it's outrageous. Maybe one person to one thousand person. When you have when you have that high number of people not working, what do you expect? And the book we go on those people working. And people, people that have businesses like you talked about, so like uh, like Kulata said, we need to we need to we need to expand that base and improve on the taxing system so that there will be no graft like you like you said at Jalekoko, those those corruption those loopholes that people will have to siphon money into their own private pockets. And people uh, will but, go but, and cut deals with uh, with but, the book called. But the rational mind, <laughs> rational mind. Rational oh, mind, but you know what? You, you know what? You know why? Uh, you see, when when Adeleko, called, I was thinking that where, that's where he's going to, right? When he was talking about that the Nigerians are being taxed, right? So we are talking about the government tax, and we are talking about the taxes that and uh, the they pay to these uh, abuelos on the streets, right? It is part of the taxation. So when you say, so I think somebody was saying that they they have their own ticket, right? So that one, that one that you are paying to the aboros, it's not being accounted for in all those statistics that is being given out out there. So Nigerians pay taxes like that, you know, and the government takes their own part of the tax without protecting the citizens themselves from these aboros. So the government is take my own, there you go, and you tax the people. So the people are paying more taxes, but on paper you might feel like we are not paying. The ones that are paying are paying too much taxes. Joel, part of increasing the base is getting those taxes away from the agbaros and into where it belongs. If it's how a serious, you stop, how, can you, how can you stop it? If, how can oh, you stop come it? On. It's the same thing. They it's the same. It. They have to this, it. It's the same. And, and, and one man, let, let, let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. We were I talking think, about Soludo, right? I think Soludo is actually doing that in another oh, Okay, project. okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you. Soludo did something, right? Soludo said every KK should pay 15000 every month. Show me the common sense. Now he was, before that he was saying that every uh, KK uh, uh, will have to just pay. When you pay that money, that is it. Today, where they, uh, I think uh, yesterday or, or day before yesterday, the KK people, they protested. They said that the Amaros are still taking money from them. Yeah, but then that, that's a policy matter. That's a policy matter. Do you understand matter. what I'm saying? So, what, what, hold so, on. What, what's Soludo? Because I, I'm monitoring so, Soludo quite a lot because, as you know, I'm a fan. Uh, what Soludo did was he introduced a digitalized system to the yes. Agorosis spaces. So he's telling them that through your device, you just pay into this portal and that is your payment for the month. And then the receipt for that payment then is your proof of payment. So you don't have to be paying to Agberos anymore. So if Agberos are still wailing them on the road, then that's a policy matter because that's, that's law enforcement. Yeah, that's that's law well, enforcement. Well, well, okay, okay, okay. But the thing there is this, right? We cannot, we cannot, we cannot like pretend like we don't really know if the government is serious about taxing the people and at the same time telling them this is a a, a clear path from from what they used to have. Then the government is part of the state. It's the same executive that will protect the people from uh, from the aboros. The problem with that uh, with that policy you're talking about is this: What if, for for instance, I travel out of town for uh, 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 for a business or, uh, uh, um, occasion, or I travel for a burial? Probably I stayed a week or two. So does it mean I will just pay fifteen thousand? Well, that, I that, 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 that's down to you, isn't it? That's down to you. Drill. I, I, no, no, no. I, 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 I travel a lot. I, I travel a lot for my work. My living in America. Every state I go to, whether I'm seeing one client or the other, I need to file taxes on those states. They will get their own portion. You know, you know that, right? They will get their own portion yes. in this America. You you don't play. That's why it's serious countries. You do not play with your money. America doesn't play with their taxes. UK doesn't play with but, their but, taxes. But America will not tax you if you did not work. If you did not right? work, no, they will, they will not tax that's you. What I'm they, so that's you what see, I'm saying. So that's what I'm saying. Look at travel. America. Look at America. America will not tax the very very rich. They won't tax them so they can be making business, and they will not tax the very very poor. It is Mekunus like you and I that are middle class or upper middle class that mm -hmm. suffer the brunt mm -hmm. of this I tax understand. matter. We are the ones that but, leave the country. I'm and that's saying exactly that in America will not double tax you. 
the so that's what I'm saying. Like, it depends. No, it depends. No, it depends. No, they no, may they do. Double tax you. It depends. They will double tax you. They will double tax you. So, but anyway, but what if I traveled? I don't even. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. If I traveled out of town, if I'm in Nigeria, I'm staying in Ogun State, and probably I want to go for a burial in in, in the east, right? And you're taxing me fifteen thousand for a month, right? So. If I travel no, no, and I stay no, for two no, weeks, oh, oh, hold on. If you are, it, it depends though because you you pay the tax, so they don't deduct it by direct debit. So if you are going away, then you simply don't pay until you come back. No, 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 no. They said that at the beginning of the month you pay, you pay, you you pay, you pay the fifteen thousand. No, I, 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 no, I'm not sure that that agreement so, uh, obtains that. No, because no, because they, 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 they protested. They protested. That's what Joe. I'm saying. Simple yeah, analogy, yeah. Joe. If you are paying mortgage, if you are paying mortgage in your house and you don't live in your house, it's the same thing. You know that's what I mean? exactly my if you are paying mortgage, yeah. you are not living in your house. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the sure that that's not care. That, 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 that analogy does not really I mean this is like because this is like a, something that, that being paid, you are being paid, you are paying a mortgage to live in. But this one, you are being taxed based on what you make out of that business. So if I travel out of town for a burial and I am not working for maybe like two weeks because I went to for a burial or I went for a ceremony or I even went on a vacation. So why should I still pay the 15000 when I did not work for two weeks? That no, is that, my point. That you still have to pay it because, I mean, is you're the one determining your vacation time or not vacation time so it's yeah. not a matter of uh you yeah. have like you have all i mean you have tax holidays there are no tax holidays. But, but but life happens what is this what is this like what is the tax for the tax for is meant for to develop infrastructure around where you are doing business so whether you are there or not there those infrastructure are still being developed are still making they're still being kept to make sure they work well so exactly. you exactly you have to pay, and, yeah. and, and, and that is really where the argument is. If they yeah. pay that tax for a year and they don't see the results, uh huh, they can go after yeah. for Ludo. Uh, exactly, for yeah, now you can find. Oh, oh, all right, round off your thoughts on that space now that you have dabbled everything. Kula, I said my that, I said my uh, opinion will not be popular and yeah. follow through. And Oga, yes, when I travel, I go and work, I don't travel for leisure, I travel to work, so I have to pay taxes in those states. So oh, that, maybe that's the summary of my opinion. I knew it wasn't going to be popular, but hey, oh, that's okay. Oh, 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 all right. Let, let me take you to this uh, space as well. Um, no, let me leave the economics for a moment. Uh, and El Rufai telling us that he was the one that informed Buhari that the, uh, the uh, bandits, they created a special room for both, both, uh, both of them, and they are threatening to kidnap uh, Buhari and El Rufai. So it's just that narrative of how much of what is going on in Nigeria Buhari is actually aware of for him to be hearing it first time from El Rufai. Buhari is absent. Whether he's absent-minded, I mean, he's absent in the brain, or he's, he's absent, he's nowhere to be found. And I think the guy can't wait to get out. And even without that... I wait, mean, I Plata, you believe El Rufai? You believe El Rufai? Uh, well, you see, whether <laughs> I believe El Rufai or not, I'm judging it by Buhari's actions. Whether El Rufai is lying or DSS. not. He's putting the DSS and security around us to rock under the box. That's exactly what he's doing. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a little bit of... A, I mean, you're right. It's a little bit of a stretch to say Buhari, <laughs> at the very minimum, will pick up a paper and read that, hey, they, have, they made a threat to your life. At, at the very, very minimum. And of course, I mean, the security people are not, aren't they doing their job by informing the president? But besides the point, it is what Buari does with the information he's been given. And what is Buari doing? Nothing. So whether we believe it or we don't believe it, right? The, the, the proof is in the pudding. Buari is not doing anything. And that man, he needs to be impeached. He needs to get the hell out of that country. Uh, uh, and I hope this interim government rumor, I hope, I hope there's no teeth to it. I, they said they've kind of like reshuffled some of their defense. I'm seeing a lot of southeastern and southwestern names being propped up. I, I hope that, is, that will make a difference. Because I read, what, was it Premium Times or something that they said they made some, they shuffled some positions around. And I can see they're giving our southern people power. Let the people that know how to fight this thing fight. I mean, we know the intel. We know where. I mean, I, 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 I hate to sound tribalistic or 
or sectionalist. But we know the southern area is where the intellectual capacity of the country is. So give those people the, that have brain power, let them go and do this fight intelligently and let's stop monkeying around with serious <laughs> stuff. I, I use my time. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Kulata. So thank you, Kulata. So that's Kulata always coming here to cause trouble. So, so that, that's Kulata. Thank you, Kulata. Let me go on from Kulata to Rational Mind, if it's ready now. Rational Mind, are you ready? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. All, all right. So, Rational Mind, I want to play you a short clip, uh, which, which I, well, I would like you to respond to. This is uh, from your favorite uh, person, uh, the uh, vice president incoming. Uh, so, let's see. Have I got it lined up? Yes, I think I do. So, so here it is. Let, let me unmute it. Yes. All this madness will evaporate. So, I read my chair. So, this is um, what's his name? Uh, Elon Musk is talking about constricting the journey from London to New York to Taiwan. But unfortunately, 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 the topical issue in Nigeria is restructuring. Restructuring my food. To hell with restructuring. <laughs> Let's improve on the quality of government. Let's work for the people. Let's invest in education. Let's create jobs. All this madness will ever forget. I read my chair. Elon Musk is talking about constricting the journey from. Okay, so so that is uh, Senator Shetema, uh, who uh, never equivocated in his thoughts. So he's speaking to the restructuring narrative, and he said it's a total nonsense that the focus of the country should be really on uh, how to get the country working. And if the country is working, then that is really uh, where the conversation is. So so what are you making then of Shatima's position? He never equivocating in uh, his thoughts. But is it right in this instance, rational mind? You see, I was listening to um, uh, Dr. Ruben about it this morning when he was making comments. Uh, I think the forum where he was speaking uh, was about uh, restructuring and something like that too. And then he was saying this, you see, this, I'm, I wish for us, I wish for us as a country, as Nigeria, is, uh, that this is a person that would be number two man, if Tinubu ever wins. Uh, sometimes I wonder why Tinubu has not really vetted this guy, but I'm not surprised because uh, like this man helps us understand, uh, Baba, Baba, is it Baba Chila, well, from former SGF, um, uh, secretary to the federal government, I said Baba Chila, right? Or is yes. he the other guy? Okay, anyway, so yeah. he, um, yeah. So the point is, what well, the point is, uh, we, well, let me not go into that. Let me just go straight to the, what you're asking me. So I, I wait for us because if anything happens to Tinubu and this kind of person gets in there, you see, you need to see the way this guy talks. This guy doesn't talk like somebody who, I mean, he's not, he's not presidential, not, neither is he vice presidential. He's somebody who went on national TV and insulted the, uh, the current vice president, calling him an ice cream seller. This guy has no bride. He has no. He doesn't bridle his, his tongue. He just he just speaks anyhow because he feels he has the, or whatever. The rational or mind. Or whatever. Can I interject one minute, please? That what? This video what? that uh, one man brought brought in for us. I don't think it's new. It's uh, it's an old video. It's it's uh, two thousand and nineteen or so okay. when. Uh, it's not. Wait, no, uh, I know it's, it's, I know it's, it's not, not new. new. I know it's not new. Oh, I know it's okay. not new. Okay. But we're talking about. Does it matter? New. Does it matter? That's what he believes. It doesn't matter what he believes. That's, that's what he believes. So when okay. we have somebody like this who's going to be the vice president, automatically someday he will be the president if anything happens to Tinubu, which I don't even like. I said on one man platform here, on other platforms. I don't doubt. I mean, I'm not, I'm not wishing him dead, but the way I see him, I don't see that man lasting to finish his tenure, perhaps. Very likely. So my point is that. If this is a guy that is going to be the next of Kane, that is going to be the next in line to become the president of our country, we are doomed. I mean, we've seen these guys spoken in many forums, and the way he speaks, he speaks like a thug. It's, 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 it's very bully. I mean, he speaks like a bully. Just imagine what he said. Restructure my foot. I mean, there's a better, better way you can speak than okay. Where did, I did, you, did, you, did you listen to the substance of what he said? Uh, or uh, maybe that that, that except is well, yeah, that that's just the only part. Maybe the whole totality of what he said. I'm I'm, I'm oblivious to that. But what I'm just saying is that uh, just that that part where he let, says. Let, let, is, let me play it again. It's only a couple okay, of seconds. Okay, uh, it's uh, okay. Yeah, it's only a couple of seconds, so it's not a, a, a real labor. But um, 
let me let me yeah restructuring my foot to hell with restructuring let's improve on the quality of let's work for this let's invest in education let's create jobs all this madness will evaporate I read my chair. Elon Musk is talking about constricting the journey from London to New York to 31 minutes. But unfortunately, unfortunately, the tropical issue in Nigeria is restructuring. Restructuring my food. To hell with restructuring. Let's improve on the quality of governance. Let's work for the people. Let's invest in education. Let's create jobs. All this madness will ever for it. I raise my head. So, so that's 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 what it. That's the totality of it. So, okay. uh, set, so setting aside your dislike for the guy, uh, the no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, one man, I'm speaking. I'm not. I'm not. Well, let me not attack him. It's, I mean, I'm not really attacking right. him. I'm only saying, based on what we've seen, is at is at antecedents of what he has done and is doing currently right now. I mean, up to the few weeks ago, when he brought in some fake uh, pastors and whatever, um, deacons and whatever, bishops. Now, what I'm trying to say is this, that like Ruben about to say this one, which I listened to him, which I also share that view, is that you can talk about what he talked about, like invest in education, uh, restructure the government or whatever. I mean, bring about a good governance without even talking about restructuring. There is no way. We cannot continue. If, if, you know, whoever you brought brings in and to come and govern Nigeria with the present situation, with the present setup of the system we are running right now, Without reorganization, or let me, let me use another word, the, the, word, the word that we throw around in Nigeria, restructuring, we are not going anywhere. So that's to say that yeah, this guy does not, he does not have a grasp of what the problem of that country is. Or maybe he's just pretending not to want to accept that there's a need for restructuring. Because all those things he's talking about, like he's talking about uh, investing in education, investing in this, good governance. There is no way you can do all this thing, you can achieve this thing without reorganizing the whole system. Or putting in place a new system, or revamping the whole thing. So that's to tell you that this is, if this is the guy who is going to who is going to lead us in the next eight years, if he wins, if he's a uh, principal, do, 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 do you not think doomed. it's do you not think it's telling a tale of uh, mix, misplaced uh, priorities? Is that not what that is what I'm is saying? I mean, it's, 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 it's not even misplaced priorities. Maybe that, that's what we should. In one way, we can say that too. But what I'm saying is, he doesn't have a grasp of what the problem is. And if he does, no, he's but telling... that, uh, 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 hold on. You say he doesn't have a grasp of what the problem is. He's saying improvement in 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 uh, in, in the quality of governance, improvement in the education, growing the economy, and creating uh, uh, employment. How do so, you so, achieve that, one man, without restructuring, revamping yes, the whole system? But, but, but he's saying that that is where the central conversation should be. But then how do you talk about? How do you how do you talk about all this thing without even I mean revamping it or reforming it? Maybe that's what maybe, maybe that's a better word. I mean, according to um, I mean, international relations system, we talk about reforms. I mean, that's a better choice of word. Maybe we should use strong uh, around. Rational mind. So, think about there it should this be a way. Reform. Go on. Think, think about it this way. I think this guy understands totally what's going to happen. But when you think about restructuring, think about winners and losers. Who are the people that are going to win in the restructure? We Nigeria? know. We know. Who are the people that we are going to win? know why he's not doing that. He might exactly. possibly, I know he understands. He understands that there's a need for restructuring. Sorry. But the point is this. Of, My point I'm trying to make are the winners. I don't know. The winner, the winners are going to be Southern Nigeria, like regardless of the people in the north. I mean, it's simply because of our yeah. massive education difference. Because it's if we restructure, let me explain. Let me quickly explain. I don't want to take up rational minds time. If if Nigeria gets any sort of FDI or if we make any sort of economic progress, middle class will grow. The area that middle class will grow is mostly down south. In the north, middle class may grow in Kaduna and Kano, and that's pretty much it. Maybe some parts of uh, 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 Plateau State. But the general south, the entire south gets lifted. So all the time we've grown a middle class. We've always grown that middle class in southern Nigeria. And if we restructure Nigeria, southern Nigeria will benefit the most. That's all. I disagree yeah, with you. I, mean, I, right I think, there. yes, you're right. We, we I all disagree know, we with all know you. The, the losers... Mm -hmm. You, 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 you know what? If uh, what Shetima is saying is true, that development on education, development on economy 
you can as well do it at the state level, develop your educational system, develop your infrastructure as a governor, and they can achieve what you are saying that they'll be lacking behind now. But they fail to give their people, large population of their people, that basic education. And that is why you see al everywhere in the north. That's why you see the largest population of children out of school in Kano. Kano, which is the, 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 the most populated state in the north, the most, uh, uh, the, the best economy, the heart of the northern economy is Kano. And still, you cannot give the children education there. So if that you, has nothing to do with if you give them, what is if you give them, if you give them, and all this if you give them, to do if you give them education, how long is it going to take them to catch up? The gap what do you mean between by catch up, catch up the, what? The, the are gap, you telling me that the, in Kano they don't have enough people the, that are educated? The educational are you gap me they between don't have, the south and the north is how super long? Are you, do you know when they have been talking about this catch up? Do you know when they've been talking about this catch up? You're not putting things in perspective. Okay. Do you know we have a Ministry right. of Education. Do you know we have a Ministry of Education. Yeah. Under 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 what tiers of government is the Ministry of Education? The Federal Ministry of Education. Federal Ministry is under the federal government. And yes. every time they, every time every year they make budgets. This is the federal government. It goes into the the, the, the the annual budget of the federal government of Nigeria. In a real federal system, states should have absolute control over their education in their space. But the federal government is the one that dictates. Thank you. The, 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 the Actually, budget. states have control of their state. Oh, it oh, is no, state that controls the elementary and secondary school. We, all, we always yeah. go around all these things every time without even looking at the substance. Yeah. The budgeting is from the federal government. It goes to the states. However it goes, I don't know how it goes. Maybe they give it to the bosses to the, uh, to the governor, to the governor, to the uh, each... Uh, Whatever goes into the uh, eventually goes to the state uh, education, but that, that is not how it is. In a true federal system, every state should manage their resources, and from their resources they can get money to pay for their educational system. That is how it's supposed to be in a federal, in a true federal system. Not the federal government dictating, giving out money, this bossing money like uh, uh what's it called, like the Babia, like, uh, Babia, Babia system we're, we're, we're running in that country. That is a part of the restructuring. You, you cannot talk about these things without really restructuring, revamping, reforming that system. A system whereby the federal government has control over every part of everything that every, every other state has to do. Without the federal government, they cannot breathe on that, in that aspect, in education. Let's, let's agree that, yes, each state has control over their educational, uh, educational, educa I mean, the educational sectors. But that isn't just in name. But in the actual sense of it, the budgeting comes from the federal government. So if we don't take that out of that, if we don't re reform that aspect in the constitution, that they are fraudulent uh, 99 constitution, we will still continue having this problem, the bottleneck, the bureaucracy around that, uh, that, 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 that area. So let them control their, control their absolute, absolute control over whatever resources they have in their, in their space, based on whatever income or whatever thing they generate, uh, revenue, let them finance whatever, anything they need to finance in their state, educational, whatever they are doing, you know, let, them, let it be that, that way. Rather than having to wait every month for allocation or whatever allocation from the federal government just to be able to I mean, put right their own educational system. That is part of this, that, that's, that is still part of the restructuring. You see, this guy does, I don't think this guy has a grasp of what he's talking about. That was why I said. You, you know, he does. This guy has a super brain. No, I don't know why people are. They say so. Me. They say so. One I know, I've heard people say do, that. Do not, do I, not see I it. I can tell it, from it the way he speaks. I can, yeah, I know from, from the way he speaks, he has his. He has this facade of somebody who is well educated. I know. But what do you mean facade? Uh, she, 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 when I said when I said facade, uh, I said, hold on. Yeah. When I said facade, oh, yeah. I agree. I say for me, it's, to me, it's an appearance of being educated because in the true. What do you mean an appearance? Is in actual fact and educated man and, and, and a educated. sharp and a sharp brain. This is my nuance and just my own kind of way of saying that. Yeah. It, you, you, it's not just about just speaking English knowing what to do or whatever but in the actual when, attitude when you say facade, that means it is putting it on it's not putting it on now it, it, uh, we know it. we know it's just my, my i know what, what man don't pick oh, on oh. mine i know maybe you can pick on it if you want to pick on them what oh. i'm just trying to say is this i'm just trying to say is in the actual sense of it it doesn't it, it doesn't it doesn't his actions 
the way he speaks, the way he carries himself eventually, I mean, his, his character does not show that he's that kind of a well-educated person. Cite like, an instance. Cite like an instance. I mean, the way he talks in public. I mean, look at your example of what we're talking about right now. It gives us an, it gives us that, uh, that, that idea that, oh, this um, impression that I understand this problem of Nigeria. Let us investigate. Let, let us invest in in uh, in uh, education, which is not which is not wrong. It's right. Let us do this. Let us do that. But he says, restructure my foot. No, you can't talk about restructuring or reforming. I mean, you can't talk about all these things he mentioned, which of course we are lacking, which of course we need to do them to get the system right. You can't talk about that without he, he bringing doesn't in doesn't have brain at all. Uh, right now, have, that guy does not, not have brain. It's because the stru the structuring, it, it the structuring is one of the options that can make that country work. We, we, we can define well, it the way we want to define it. So it, it, it doesn't have form. brain. Say the restructuring under my foot. It doesn't let's have brain. Let us use the word restructuring anymore. Let us use the word reform. We need to reform that system. That system needs to be reformed. The educational system, the governance system, like somebody said here, which I've always said in the past, that the cost of governance in Nigeria is too high. The taxation system needs to be reformed. Everything in our country, every aspect needs to be reformed. Maybe we should not use the word restructuring because some people, when we use the word restructuring, it sounds too far-fetched, I mean, too, too, too deep for them. So but for him to be saying that, restructure my foot, then how is he going to get it right? Which means we continue the same spiral. Give up money, get money from federal government, any, any, every state has to, because I mean, it's allocation to the each state. They don't know what, uh, there's, no, there's no accountability to that. But if For rational have... mind, rational mind, are you suggesting we go back to regional um, regional governance? Listen, for me, I would prefer we go to a regional system. But even with the state we are running, we can still do that. But all we just need to do is practice the true federalism. How it's supposed to be practiced. All the, all the federal states that we, all the federal states seen so far. Is it in Germany? Is it in Nigeria? Or is it in, even in India? We we'll see how they practice their federal system. The state has power of some sort. So uh -oh. the point I'm trying to make here is that they need, they need, there's a need for them to reform that system for us to get it right. That he's saying that I'm searching my foot. That guy, you see that he knows what he's talking about. He's just pretending not to want to do it. Telling me that we have to continue the same spiral, the same round spiral we're going, and we're going anywhere, nowhere with that. And I'm so, I'm so sorry that if this is going to be our vice president in the next eight years, if to never win, I'm so sorry for that. We are doomed for that. You, you know, I rather like the guy. I, I must confess that. You know, uh, if, uh, if, if anything ever happens to Tinubu, I would not object not to Shetima being, being, being the president. Being the president. Yeah. No. I yeah. Not. So that's that, that's just my take on that one, man. Oh, all right, brilliant. And uh, to the BBC narrative, uh, the uh, back and forth of that, uh, BBC versus Lai Mohammed. So he wants to take on all the international bodies. Yeah, for me, what I, what I, what I <coughs> excuse me, what I see about that is this. You see, I watched that video, that BBC interview. It's just it's just about what I see there is that I see about that BBC interview is that is about let me say let me say it this way, if which I know this will never happen. What I mean to never happen is that, I mean, if we're to be a Nigerian uh, network, uh, television network that did that interview, would they have also considered them like we have, would have considered it with BBC? Probably they would have done the same thing. But the point now is a foreign body now, because some people were, somebody was saying, was it OVA, saying that I don't know where he was going with what he was talking about. I don't know. I just really don't understand it. But if that's what he was saying, that he meant that uh, there's a motive. Of course, I, I mean, behind everything, there's a motive. But what is the motive? Do we have to question every motive? I mean, like Ajaliko rightly said here, I mean, we, we saw people, somebody who, who interviewed Osama bin Laden back, back then and how the US or whatever country then was trying to like uh, put him in trouble, but there was no legal ground for that. Even with the, uh, uh, with the terror acts in the United States back then, they could not, they could not prosecute him. But on a moral ground, is as if failed, but left for everybody to judge that. So for me, what I think is this, that the BBC has done no wrong because this is something that the federal government is trying to hide from every one of us. When people say there is a problem in the North, we don't see NTA reporting all these things, thereby putting people in the dark. When we talk about, oh, Fulani people are, uh, they, they are, they are behind these things, so people say, no, they were not Fulanis. You know, so all these things, when people say, when people try to, try to say what is, it, what is the, the true thing, 
These people try to cover it up. Yeah, but they want to put us in the dark. And somebody has to go out there now, risk his own life, and go do this information and bring it out and bring it out. It's, it's, it's left everybody to judge if they were trying to promote. For me, I don't see them promoting anybody. They only reporting it the way it is. They interview them. What was your problem or motive with the federal government? I mean, for fighting the federal government. We got to know what was the root of this whole problem. It started off between the houses and the Fulanis. They were battling for over space. That was what I heard. I understood from what, what, what happened. They were battling over space that they come into their lands. They need their land and they eat their crops and they have to fight. It leads into communal like, clash. From there, the uh, Fulani had to go harm themselves with more sophisticated weapons. And you saw what those people were carrying, those uh, vigilantes. They were all carrying, you're carrying uh, what's it called, uh, Hunter's uh, rifles, which is not even compared to the uh, AK-47 or 49 that these people carry. It's, it's more, <laughs> their own is more sophisticated than those Hunter's. But then you will not allow them to harm themselves, but you allow the Fulani to get in. So all these things is being brought to the fore that the federal government, and even they said that even the security, the Nigerian security architectures, they were complicit too. They will not allow, when, when they inform them that the Fulanis are raiding here, they will not go there. So, I mean, even when they go there, they give us personal, of, okay, we are trying to create a peace. But then they go, and then the next thing, these people attack again. So, you see, for me, it's an expose, like you use that, that word, one man. It's an expose of the wrongs and the complicity of Buhari's government. So many wrongs by the Buhari government. Buhari knows that his clan's men, his king, I mean, his clan's people, they are in many ways at wrong. Everybody has grievance against the federal government. In Nigeria, that people, guys, have it. The Yoruba people have it. Every, every, every ethnicity has problem. But what makes you people so unique that you have to go and take arms against the, against the state? You have no reason. You have no basis. Everybody's marginalized. We are marginalized. Uh, rational mind, rational mind, please. Are you seeing from the perspective of OVA that those uh, BBC reporter cannot be going around without security agents? That of maybe the government even well, gave them gave them the quiet to do that. Well, either they go. You see, let's not let's not force over this. Uh, they go with security or not? I don't. I don't know. At least we saw this idiot. What's his name? The other man, uh, Sheikh Gumi. When he goes out to meet those bandits, he goes with security, doesn't he? And the Nigerian army, I mean, police and army know among them. They were among them when they go to meet those bandits. So what's the problem? So but, but, but let's, not, let's not go into those, some of those trivial things. Of uh, you know, My point is this. What they did was educating us, telling us what was the root cause of this problem. That yes, Nigeria is under siege. The country is under siege. They did, they did not bring it about. In fact, the guy who did that, who did that he said he's, he's half full and he, half outside. He said his father is an outside man. His mother is a full and he. So it's half and half, or it's, half, or it's both and both. So he gave a balanced reporting of by interviewing the houses and also the full and his, but I think he did more of the full and because they are the people in the spotlight here, that the people who are were looking at here. What were their grievances? They keep saying that they were marginalized by the federal government. Who is not marginalized? You can't just, you just be carrying your, your cattles and everything and roaming about every, I mean, this is your so called. Uh, it doesn't work in the 21st century. It doesn't work. You can't talk about you can't, you can't insist to have a, 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 a grazing road, a grazing route that never longer exists because of the expansion. I mean, population has, uh, has increased over, over the years. Nigeria back then maybe was about 20 million back in the 60s, but now we are over 200 million. You, you see, the top of, those, are, those are the things that you people need to know. We know, fine, you people are not being educated, but whose fault is it? When you move around, do you, have, do you expect us to be moving in school with you as you're moving from one camp to another camp? I mean, you see, when you, when you look at all these grievances, it makes no sense. I just think they're just looking for excuse to cause mayhem in that country, and that's what they've achieved. But the man who is there, so dull, so idiotic himself, I mean, he should have sit down and see how to handle this matter. Maybe like Jonathan was going about it then, create, tell them, okay, we want you people to have a place you're going to stay, we'll make a school for you, you can go to your school. If you want to make it Arabic and partly Western education, it's up to you. But then, no, they're insisting that it must be their own way. You cannot insist on your own way. And because of that, because of government, you have to take arms against the state. Who should the state be crushing? They should be crushing them rather than crushing those people who are not harmed like them. So, you see, one man, is a way that we could make, there's many ways we can slice this and dice it, but the point I'm trying to make here is this. Uh, BBC, we know BBC is known to sometimes to be biased in their reporting. But this very one I saw that I see for me is a balanced reporting. 
it only showcases the wrong that is going on in that country. That the lopsidedness of what Buhari's government, watching his clansmen, cause mayhem in that country and is doing nothing about it. Similarly, his body's language still shows that he's not ready to do anything about his people. Because he just wants his people to continue causing this mayhem, kidnapping and killing and whatever. That's what he wants. And maybe that's, that's where this philonization agenda is coming from. Because if really this guy wants to have this thing sought, he can have it sought. I tell you one man, this thing has solution. But the, one, the point is, his body language tells us otherwise. And he doesn't want to want to solve. Because every time you call security, who are you firing? Are you firing anybody? Are you being firm in what you're saying that I want this taken care of? And if you people don't do that, I'm going to change you. I'm going to fire you. you no, it's, it's, give, it's only giving them their marching orders. It's marching no, orders every time. Uh. So one man, if you look at it very well, for me, BBC has not done any wrong. Well, I know we know, like OVSS, they can be biased in some of their reporting. But this very one I saw, I don't think they are trying to, I mean, they're not trying to promote you. Uh, they, uh, they, they only try to showcase to us, this is what these people are doing. They kidnapped, they did this and did that. So that we know. So that we all be prepared. Because already we're seeing it. Look at what happened in, in uh, the back of Suzuma Rock today. Of the uh, the checkpoint that was there and how they attacked them. From what I heard. They have the infantry to come in there at the checkpoints. That's just, that's just to tell you the level of impunity going on in that country with these people's class, this guy's classmen. They come into the checkpoint and attack the army of a sovereign state, which is that country called Nigeria. So for me, one man, for me, I just think um, what a line Muhammad is saying. We know you always talk, uh, I mean, talk in uh, promotion of his, uh, his uh, we, we, we just imagine if this were to be, you could not have doing this back then. Imagine what they would have said back then. They would have chastised, I mean, chastised him the same way. The same thing that they were accusing Jonathan back then is what they're even doing worse than Jonathan. But they don't see it that way. So one man for me, I don't think, um, I, well, just to answer your question, yeah, no, they've not done any wrong. I see that's a good thing for us to know what is going on. It's an education to all of us. All right, brilliant. Well put. So a uh, rational mind for time, let me go on from yeah, you to, 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 to Saki. So Saki, are you still there? Saki, Saki, father. Yes, I can hear you all well. Brilliant. Uh, so Saki, uh, the conversation, long and involved, but it started off with the BBC uh, going there to do that expose about the banditry, which somewhat has embarrassed the Nigerian state and Lai Mohammed predictably promising sanctions against uh, the BBC. Uh, your thoughts, Saki? Uh, just like Russian Abad was saying, uh, it is possible that uh, in some instances, uh, BBC might uh, in some instances, they, they can be biased. But in this instance, I think they did a very good job. You know? They tried to educate the Nigerian populace, uh, at least to make some expose of the, of the tendency, or rather the point out to the fact that there is possibility that the Nigerian government is complicit in all these things. You know? So I don't see what... Uh, uh, is wrong with what they did, you know. Uh, I think Uvier was arguing about the intention, you know, but he doesn't want to talk more on the content, you know. Uh, this guy that is coming out to to threaten sanctions, he is doing it because uh, he doesn't want. Uh, uh, the international community to to see what uh, the perceived injustice uh, in Nigeria or other from Nigeria government. You know, if uh, it was some, if it if it was a sect like uh, maybe ESN or IPOB that was covered in this documentary, and uh, maybe the British, uh, the BBC was. Uh, able to, to produce a documentary that shows that uh, maybe um, maybe the ESL or IPOB are, are doing some terrorist activities. I don't think uh, somebody like Lai Mohammed will come and say uh, and threaten action. I think he will even like it so that the federal government will see reasons to expose to maybe international community 
on why they are prescribing IPO or on why they want other countries to to see uh, something like IPO as terrorist organization. But in this very case, you know, they they wouldn't want the international community to see uh, most of uh, the perceived injustice from the, the angle of the government. You know, so in my own view, what BBC did was quite uh, educating. You know, it made us understand a lot of things. A lot of us that watched the, the documentary were able to infer a lot of things from the expose. So I don't see anything that is wrong in, in that place. Oh, all right, brilliant. Uh, so, uh, uh, Saki, so, so the narrative then, the Nigerian person, as though uh, he had that much left to spare, uh, Nigerian to now pay more for phone calls and data in new federal government tax. So does the Nigerian person still have room to absorb any more taxes? Is the question. I don't think at this point, the government's uh, Nigeria, average Nigerian has, average Nigerian has been has been reduced to to heighten pressures, sort of, you know. I don't think the Nigerian government should keep her, uh, you know, overburdening the average Nigerian. Things are very hard at this moment, you know. Um, uh, Kulata was arguing about uh, the revenue to tax uh, ratio. I mean, the, the revenue to, is it the revenue to GDP? You know, you know, Kulata, and I will turn everything into numbers game. No human, yes, yes. No, human no human factor. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. But, uh, but uh, why you are also to talking about all those things? I think you should read the book by Adam Smith on uh, the world of nations, one of his classics on the uh, is it the, the uh. I've read moral, it. Moral sentiments. I'm trying to remember. There was a discourse he did on moral sentiments, you know. So he argued a lot of things. So the average Nigerian in this case is already overburdened. I think what the federal government should do is to is to try to you know look at how to you know um, uh, like you know or like uh, Ajale Koko was saying. Uh, Nigeria is not at the end revenue we have already. We are not actually getting 100% of the end revenue due to a lot of leakages in the system. So I think the government should first of all look into the system and see how to act, how it can actually get the, the end revenue it was supposed to be getting from the people that are already paying taxes. Because a lot of people are paying taxes but at the end of the day, it doesn't go to the to the to where to the channel it was supposed to go to so i think the federal government should focus more on that than to be taxing people a lot of nigerians are unemployed a lot of nigerians cannot even eat i don't want to say eating three square meals because nobody is eating three square meals in nigeria uh, a lot of nigerians now are not even eating three meals you know so uh i think the federal government should not be doing those there are all there are already multiple taxation just are paying st stamp duties they deposit they pay money they withdraw money they pay stamp duties all those things you know and you are also increasing the uh is it uh adding like charges again on data you know so uh i don't think uh, they, they want to squeeze the last drop of blood out of the, the last no. drop of blood. So, you see, you guys, uh, you see, when we start talking human factor, one thing, one thing, one day, one of one of these sessions, I think one man should do one thing. I think you guys, should, no, you, you, you guys, no, let, let me just quickly make a point. You guys will have to tell us how you intend to fund anybody's plan in this current economy, in these are current realities. I want yeah, to right. hear realistic approaches. Yeah, very yeah. simple. Stop the looting. Yeah, right. There yeah, are so things government, a serious government should start doing so that we Sa Saki. Yeah. Uh, Saki. Yeah. I think Yokulata is still hammering on taxing Nigerian peoples to death. 
Maybe I should just ask him. Oh, a I don't talk to him make they kill anybody now. No, 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 hold on now. <laughs> ah, look. Oh, first I'm be cock pan when you want Lea be. Let me ask you this question. Uh, uh, wait, she, what, are, we, the, are, are, are we richer order? than Congo? Or hold are we richer on. than uh, Central oh, oh, African Republic? Let, let, let me ask you. Tell tell us the two primary responsibility of government. Uh, all right. Be, be, before you do that, let me share this data that Kulata has uh, sent in uh, so that people might see where he's coming from. So I'll put it on the screen and then Kulata, you talk us through it just but very briefly. Uh, apologies, uh, Saki, but uh, this is the data that Kulata sent in. So uh, I suspect this is where you want us to be, which yes. is uh, tax to GDP ratio 2019. Nigeria yes. is in green. Uh, so talk us through it. Uh, so you can see all other African countries that are way poorer than Nigeria, they're able to get more money from the government, from their GDP, because your GDP is just the money you guys can generate in the country. And for governments to be sustainable, any serious government in the world, you need to be able to tap into some amount of it. And the amount we can tap into, this is, screen, is small on my screen, I think is... This one says 6%. So you can see extremely poor countries like Niger, like Chad. They're making more money from taxation than Nigeria. Like, see, I'm not even talking about, look at Togo. Togo is like 15%. Look at Senegal. Look at our GDP. If we can turn that 6% to just 12%, you know how much difference it will make in, in, in things. Like, we'll have more money, but we still have to, I mean, of course, we have to seal the leakages cut the cost of governance, but we need to do some serious, we need to put serious effort into raising revenues. Look at how low our revenues are. If we did not have oil, we'll be Somalia or we'll be one of those places. Let me let Saki take over. I, 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 I asked him a question. I, 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 can I ask him a question? Can, question? can you let him just answer that question? And I want to take him up on that. This is very unpopular, but two responsibility of government just to uh, number one and number two, two. first of mm -hmm. all to, to to i mean to secure the, to secure and protect the country that's number okay. one that's yeah. number one responsibility number two responsibility will be to provide some basic services such as education well, and health. welfare welfare uh, welfare well let's just okay. call it welfare tell yeah. me the welfare tell me how nigeria are provided welfare for nigerian people Based on how much are we making and how many people? No, 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 no. You just tell me when government provide welfare or take care of the welfare. Of okay, the, okay. Of let's even citizen. talk about. Okay, let's let's talk the, about welfare. Yes, let's talk about it. Government because when you don't it, give, you don't. Let, take. let me talk. Uh, let me talk. Yes. Now. To yes. to an extent, to an extent, education hmm. in education in Nigeria is 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 basically cheap because a lot of state governments do provide free education from primary to secondary. So that's some form of wel uh, welfare. Health care sucks. We don't have that. But at least education, they do fund primary and secondary education. Even some states even pay for, come, I mean, for what's the name of that thing? WAEC. Mm -hmm. Even some states do pay WAEC. So they, they play that part. Health is where they suck. But at least education, they take care of primary and secondary education. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I think um, Saki wanted Kulata. to ask you. Yeah, yeah, Kulata, the, the data you are looking at, you are just looking at numbers, right? Yeah, everything is always numbers. But there are indices you've not also considered. Have you considered right. the unemployment rates in those countries? Yes, 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 yes. Nigeria doesn't have a worse unemployment problem than Niger or Chad or one of those places. That's why I'm showing you pictorial evidence of extremely poor African countries, way poorer than Nigeria, that are doing a better job in generating money yeah, from the uh, GDP. Yeah, what I'm trying to tell you is that it is possible that Nigerians are actually paying more taxes than those countries, but those end revenues are they remitted in the right channels to a lot of corruption and... Yeah, people. but the, the methodologies they used to measure all these things, because all these countries that we're seeing... Are you trying to tell me they are not also corrupt? They are black countries like our country yeah, they are too. Corrupt, but Nigeria, I think Nigeria is more corrupt than all, all no. There, there the was. I mean, corruption. They, we have a corruption index. We're one of the worst, but we're, we're not the worst. We are. Uh, we're almost. Uh, 
in the corruption in this. We are. We we always up there, but we're not the worst. We're not. The, you can go check it. We're always up, but we're not the worst. So the, oh, all this yeah. country, I'm showing all this country because everybody says, "Oh, we're poor. We're this. We are poor. More poor people from any way you want to look at it in Congo, and Congo is still better than us. And in in Chad, in all these places, there are way poorer people. So it's not like just about oh, this sub story. Like Kulata doesn't care. Of course, I care, but well, at the same time, I want the country to function. Well, I thought uh, that Kulata, it, it, can I, it, it, Kulata is just a cold blooded statistics Kulata, man. Kulata, cold can blooded. I tell you something? He wants see, to kill our people. See, using no <laughs> eh? Eh? It's, a, it's a dekiti headsman. It's a dekiti headsman. Like, where are you from? Are you a headsman? You know? eh? <laughs> Look at this man. Eh? Can I say something? Be gone. See, Kulata, see, yeah, when you are looking at GDP and you are using that one to compare taxation, that's the worst misrepresentation of the situation you can ever get in economics. What's the now, better one? You, wait, if you want to flip it over, you don't go to per capita. Hey, you know? We can look at per capita. Uh, we're it, we're it, still like exactly. 2,000. I mean, an average Nigerian uh, wait, makes like 2,000. Uh, wait, wait now. Wait, we make like 2,000 something dollars now, and it's still better than Chad. Go and check how much uh, they make uh, in Chad uh, or Cameroon. Now, let me learn. I've checked these things now. I'm just going to open mouth. Oh, back, back, like let that. me learn now. Let me learn. So, whenever you use per capita, right? Uh -huh. Are we the, so are we the worst in per capita? Farabale. 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 Now, you know, there must be some band, bundle of income that you make before you can even pay tax. When yes, no. Tax. Wait. Now, do you know the boundary in Nigeria, for example? You are what not boundary? aware. What boundary? What do you mean by boundary? I don't know, too. You are not aware. That's what, what, but that's what do you mean by boundary? I don't even understand where you're going. No, no. Like, like, for instance, like, like, for instance, um, you have to be earning, let's say, uh, over... Ten thousand pounds before you start. Before you start. Oh, yes. okay, okay. I get what you are saying. Now. Yeah. Uh, so now, I mean, so, so now, now, okay. that measure, with that measure, you see, we tell you about the household income and how worthy per household. Now, a household must be worthy enough to pay tax in any country. Yeah, yeah, but wait, you see, wait, 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 before wait, you land, no wait. matter how much you talk it up and down, left, I mean, north and south, east and west, um, you are looking at that graph there. There are countries doing way worse in terms of income, Let poor people and poor than Nigeria, Let and they're doing land, a better land. job. So there's Let no way you land, want to spin it. You still land in the now, same result. Now, those taxation you are seeing, you cannot really break it down to whether it is company income tax Oh, individual it doesn't matter tax. at the end of the day is how much revenue is available oh, wait, for the government to oh, spend wait 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 farabale now when you look at those countries too you want to compare the informal sector and the formal sector grammar now, at the end of the day all these this countries now, still bring this farabale, tea. Farabale, at the end of the day this farabale. is what it becomes and, and let let Allah counter no, oh, you oh, now no, you no, are the no, one that brought this thing i don't think Allah is countering him because what Kulata is saying is that uh, these are like for like and even subordinate economies. So whatever criteria you are using as a measure, it applies not only to this country, but it's even worse in this country than it is in Nigeria. So what, however you are crunching it, these are worse off by all parameter countries to Nigeria, but their tax generation system a lot better than Nigeria. It's better. Oh, okay, so what okay, oh, okay. Let, let me now go to that place now. People are telling you that Nigeria are overtaxed already, but yet you think it is not. No, the data is not saying that. that it's, it's, not showing, it's not showing, it's not showing. This is the data you're looking at now. Is it not? Is it, is it, is it a data. Data. That's a fraudulent data you are seeing there. Okay, here we go. It's a fraudulent representation by Nigeria. Okay, yes. That's what I'm saying. This data is not telling you the real situation. Okay, exactly. Uh, I just continue. I, I can't, I can't. Do do Look, everything you want to factor is applicable to all of these countries, is the point. Do you concede that? See, see, see no, no. See. Do you concede that? Do you concede that uh, 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 anything uh, uh, you want to factor is applicable uh, to uh, Congo, Congo, 
Chad, Equatorial Guinea, Niger, Madagascar, Uganda. No, those countries are not as corrupt as Nigeria. Oh, right. <laughs> that is no one. Yeah. 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 They are yeah. not. Kilo, yeah. Kilo, yeah. sorry. <laughs> those countries are not, are not as serious. corrupt as Nigeria. This as is what they still have Bay, electricity. Bay, Bay. You, they still have electricity in those countries. They still have a lot of things that work in those countries that compared to Nigeria, you'll be shocked. I, 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 I see, see in Nigeria, in Nigeria, the impression you were giving me the other time, the way I understand it is that we don't pay tax. Now that these taxes eventually will not end up in a treasury, that should not even be the problem of any common Nigerian. It should be the problem of those people that are benefiting from all yeah. these things we are talking about. So Zim Zimbabwe is more tax, corrupt than Nigeria. Eritrea is, uh, is more corrupt. Congo. Guinea-Bissau more corrupt. No, uh, no, 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 that is not true. I've got the corruption index in, on my screen. Evil, evil, get the corruption evil, index. Evil, evil, say yeah, okay. They will say that one. They will say that one to his fake data now. I yeah. mean, why so should? This is 2021. If, 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 if you are saying they are more corrupt, in what aspect? Let me give Look you an this example. Guy. Let what, me give you an example. Let me give you an example now. For example. Can someone tell me how much of income from our senators, for example, we have in the post of Nigeria today? How is that supposed to be the problem of someone selling at at Orebu? Now, because those well, that's, are that's, that's not the that's not when no oh, God. no see the way we are looking at this thing, these taxes that we are talking about, these taxes we are talking about, how are those countries like? All those poorer countries, how are they able to even maximize even their former sector? And there, this is our informal sector we are talking about in Nigeria today. They pay some kind of taxes that at the end of the day we don't find in the treasury. That's exactly what we are saying. Oh, so God. if you are saying these guys should start paying tax now, you now to levy them without even eliminating all those leakages. You are, you want to we all said we need to they, eliminate they, they, leakages now. They have now. leakages in all these countries, is what we're saying. They have leakages too in those countries, but oh, they're still doing a better job. No, because they oh. are just presenting you data. Do you know the details? Oh, oh, of the all data? right. All oh, hold on, know. hold on, hold on. Let me share another screen with you. Let me share another screen with you, and then and then I want to go back to uh um to uh Sakifad after that. So this is the corruption index, and in the corruption index, as you can see, Nigeria is number twenty four. So, so we go further down, we are uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's Zimbabwe, Eritrea, that's Congo, that's uh, Guinea-Bissau, uh, that's Sudan, that's Chad, that's Burundi, that's Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, this is Equatorial Guinea, so, so, and, and on and on it goes. So a lot of this country, and, and then let me, not, let me so, so, so keep those countries in mind, and then let me, let me, let me then remove this and pull up uh, Kulata's, uh, uh, Kulata's uh, data. So if we pull up Kulata's uh, data, so in Kulata's data, you'll see uh, a lot of these countries. So this is Congo, which is more corrupt than Nigeria. This is Congo Democratic Republic, more corrupt than Nigeria. Uh, uh, and uh, on and on. Mauritania, more corrupt than Nigeria. You know, uh, um, so, so countries more corrupt than Nigeria certainly represented on there. You know, so one, one, one man, one man, it seems as if you are not good. what are the inputs to the data. Now, for example, <sighs> you want to go to Alausa to get a uh, C or four to get land, you pay a good for example, it's an it, 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 it's one of those indices you can compare, right? We, you see, the the in the, the no, there's an equivalency, data. there's an equivalency in other economies you know, that are more I, corrupt than Nigeria. We, we need to know the input. What are the criteria before we let, start? Let's just let's out. forget uh, this. Uh, all right. Let, yeah, let, let's get back to Saka. No, uh, let, let's just see, get, see, I don't think you get the point, but uh, let's but get back. I don't get the point. No, no, okay. I don't think you do. You know. Okay, but, no problem. All right. So, so back to your Kulata. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, like I said, I, I don't think Nigeria should be. At this point, Nigeria, Nigerians are almost overstretched. You know, people are barely feeding right now. So, I think the government should start by reducing allowances, reducing wastes. You know, in the public sector, 
you know, something like these, uh, what do you call it, private jets. I don't know how many increase they have, but I know it is not one. Yeah, they can sell off others, you know. Uh, they just try and reduce waste, waste, I mean. All these uh, senators that have special advisors, and each special advisor has special advisor. The other special advisor, they should reduce all these things. And by so doing, they can generate some some revenues, you know. And uh, this time, Nigerians are suffering very much. So I, I don't think it is a good idea to me. All oh, 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 right. Uh, Governor Erufai confirms that it was the first to tell President I, didn't wa I wouldn't yeah. want to go to that space. I wanted to go to the space of uh, Shetima. Oh, all right. Go, go to that space. You saw, did you see the video clip? Yeah, I saw the video. I saw the video. Oh, okay, your your comments on that. Yeah, one more. I don't even know what makes you think that guy is brilliant. I don't know whether it is because the, because of the way he speaks. I don't know. You know, I don't really know. But uh, to me, that uh, statement he made is quite uh, uh, is quite laughable. You know, uh, it, it, Nigeria cannot work if we don't if we don't restructure that country. To be very, very, very hard to every expert has said this. I've listened to Suludo several times. There was a, a conference he went, he went to in Ghana, presented a speech, and was comparing African countries and performance, you know, compared to that of Nigeria. You know, and he did, he said a lot of things about that. You know, a lot of experts, even in Rufa, you're talking about, has talked about restructuring like it is an imperative you know it is something that is like uh pressing that nigeria should do so for shetima to come up and say uh that nigeria should be talking about uh, uh improving the quality of education improving how can you do this in this kind of uh in this our nigerian environment right now you know, it can it cannot be achieved. You know, so restructuring is very important. You know, and they keep saying that the lot will lose if they restructure. I will tell you, necessity is the mother of invention. Necessity is mother of is the mother of invention. You know, if people feel that every month they will go to Abuja and collect the national cake, everybody will be lazy. Everybody will be lazy, you know. But if you make people feel that if you don't work, you will not chop. If you don't, if you don't put in efforts, you will not make money. You will not gain revenue. You will not do this. People will compete. And again, during the national confab, is it the confab, the one they did in two fourteen during the time of Jonathan? I think, you know, I think they came up with this restructuring plan. And one question was asked, what about those uh, states that, 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 that don't have resources, you know, to actually boost their economy? You know, people suggested in that confirm that if we can restructure, that in the first five to 10 years, that those states that are, like, that are very viable economically, that those states can be remitting some little percentage of what they earn to support the states that are not yet there until those states goes to the level they can sustain themselves. You know, so in our society, if we don't do this, we cannot progress. And that is why we are being dragged down. How can you imagine that the South is well educated? The South has what uh, there's one in theory in economics, I think these stages of growth. I'm trying to remember that. Rostow's model, yeah. Rostow's model, you know, he was talking about a situation where a country has like preconditions for takeoff. The southern region has has these preconditions to take off towards the path to development, you know, but what the northern region is dragging us back, you know, and if we continue this way. Will be will be will be nowhere. So for him to be to keep on saying that restructuring is not is my restructuring my foot. This is not what we want at this time. I think 
I think that is an do, do you not think he was making a broader point, though? Do you not think he was making a broader point? Um, I don't know the point he was making, but what I understood, he said he was giving an example with uh, Elon Musk. Is that not? You, no, was... He, no, he was saying Elon, Elon Musk was looking to condense the travel time from uh, New York to London, and that is where their conversation is. But in Nigeria, we are fixating on something as as. How Perukia. many years? How many years did 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 it, did, it, did it take America to get to the level we are talking about? He was talking about, you know, if you read that Rostos model of growth, they said that only America has been able to pass through those full stages. The last stage of that growth, he called it stage of high mass consumption. He said it was America that was a was uh, fast enough to have got to that stage. And it said that it took America about 100 years to get to that stage. So at the stage we are, he cannot be comparing what America is thinking right now. If he's talking about what America is thinking right now, then by now, we, Nigeria should be thinking about how to go and uh, uh, dwell in the mass and forget about the heads. So at this point, at this point, you know, the current federal structure we have, the current federalism we are practicing now does not lead us anywhere. Restructuring is inevitable. That is the focal point. And let me tell you, when you restructure one, there will be competition. Every state will begin to compete. By that time, you will see that all these northern states, they will see the value of agriculture, the value they have. They actually have more potentials, I'm telling you. They actually have exportable commodities, you know, if they can use their lands to the full potentials. By that time, you will see massive migration, you know, because every state wants to secure its states. At least security should be in every state. So you will see massive migration from maybe southern zone to, to northern zone for those that are interested in agri. By so doing, the, the country will progress. There will be competition. And once there is competition, there will be progress. Government will generate more revenues. You know? So that is my point. I don't think what he was saying, he wasn't reasonable at all. You know? Every other expert is talking about restructuring. Pat Otome, restructuring. Suludo, restructuring. All the, these people you know. So how will Shetima keep on saying? Because of uh, maybe, I don't know why the, why most of the northern elites, I don't know why they are just more much afraid of that word restructuring. Whatever you talk about it, they, they become afraid. We can't continue that way. You uh, know, we can't continue uh, that all way. All right, but if he's your vice president, then you can forget restructuring. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But and, honestly, I, I, and I don't think I don't think Atiko I don't think Atiko wants to restructure either. Honestly, one man, I don't know why you think you keep saying that that Shetima is a brilliant guy. I just like but him. I don't, I don't see, know why, you know. I just like I don't see any anything he was and i didn't Sa I, I, I watch some of his interviews sometimes when he starts quoting some numbers and you go and check those numbers you're kind of like looking like what kind of brain does this man have he has a broad world view <laughs> as well you know what I, is going on in the oh, world though. and i was listening world. to when he was talking about artificial intelligence and all that stuff like shoe like i mean don't uh, underestimate that guy he, he's brilliant and he's also exposed you know he was in zenith bank and it was general manager or something before he became commissioner so don't don't look at him oh, with that kind of not a person if he's well exposed he will not be talking the way he talks he will he's not a politician, be discriminating no? he will not be making a very derogatory statement against the entire Igbo people uh, uh, prejudice is it different be, from exposure look, look, no? yeah, that, he's that, not that was a private conversation well whether private that is who he is and we have seen another one saying that uh, restructuring under my foot. And you said he have something in his head. It's brilliant. I mean, Atiku is, is somebody. Atiku is somebody that stand by restructuring. He said he He said when he was young, and Nigeria was in the region. He said that it was the best time that everything worked for for them. He said if they didn't have that system, then he wouldn't have gone to school. But you're conflating two things. No, it's no, I'm not thing. conflicting to sin. You guys should stop promoting or defending this criminal. This guy is a criminal, and we have to, to reject him. It's, it's, it's a danger. 
It's but a it doesn't mean it doesn't have high, it doesn't mean it doesn't have high IQ. Forget it, it about suck. the high IQ. When, when you have high IQ and, and it, when you have it's high IQ, as you are describing guy. him, and he is so he, he has so much heavy hate. In his heart, is is hateful, yes, but doesn't mean you there. I mean, you can be hateful but still be brilliant. They're I don't even things. think it's hateful. I think that was a jocular conversation, it's not uh, jocular. Uh, it's a one man, that just, just stop it, man. This is this is an audio that run for about 15 or 20 minutes, and it was very specific and very, very, you know, it, 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 it was very firm. On the same point that it was ironing out against Igbo people. Yeah, that's both terrible. What he said on that call, I've that, repeated that it several times. Very, that, very terrible. But it, Nobody but, like but, that, that should that, be given a position no, of leadership in that country. It's going to be scary for for a lot of Southerners if he becomes president because of that is uh, that's that, I mean that is uh, what's it called? Is and you know the way I'm, I'm looking at hatred. it for that hatred for that hate speech. I think in my own heart and in my head, I think that the same way that he hates Yoruba people too. If at any now, time you, that why he, he has why will he anything... Like Yoruba, why will he like Yoruba people when he hates Yoruba people? He's going to look that, at all Southerners the same. That, that's all I'm thinking. Yeah, so, I mean, and, and our position is restructuring no, 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 and, and the no, no, position no, 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 of no, no. the entire South is restructuring and it's uh, restructuring under my foot. So he doesn't have no brain in his head. He doesn't. He just want to. He, he just like this. The, the status quo to re, to remain the way they govern their people, and they continue to govern them, suppress them, and them uh, 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 no progress uh, uh, for, for 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 common man. That's the system that he like. I mean, he have nothing in his head, man. Yeah, but I, I no, 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 Okay, I, because he hasn't come, he ha you have not run into conflict. Yoruba interests have not run into conflict with Abusa Fulani interests. Uh, that is why you always, know that always, the, the same way he hates people, that's the same way he hates I can't say the same. Maybe he hates Yoruba less because some of our cultural values may align with... No, they don't even... Yoruba, Yoruba yeah, interests... Let Yoruba interests run in conflict with Abusa Fulani. You will know his color. It's not Abusa Fulani, it's actually... It's well, whether, well, well, whether it's a... Um, um, where, which, uh, uh, Kanuri. Kanuri. Yes. How, how uh, uh, when you see them, do you know different from uh, the, the Yoruba them? interest is always in conflict with the northern interest because it is always the Yorubas that are tussling power with them. Yes, and and that is why you saw what they did to Abiola. They did it to Nubutu now. And uh, so let us see. So this guy is a is a bad guy. Is not fit for that most exalted position. And I, I'm telling you, it's very dangerous. It's a very dangerous person. I would prefer him to Okowa and certainly to the Mauritanian. You prefer him to Okowa. You prefer this um, uh, dangerous person to Okowa. Oh, is Okowa. If I you prefer Okowa, this one to Okowa. I think I would. This, this person. This person that is making a very derogatory statement against. Uh, what do you think that he make a very derogatory statement against? Um, um, uh, what, what do you call him? Um, um, uh, Oshibaju. Do you think he cannot make such a statement against Tinubu or any other Yoruba person uh, uh, in the future? This guy is it, a, it wasn't, it wasn't a very a bad guy. Statement. It was a political put down. It, it was is not. It is a very it derogatory. Was, was he ridicule of his office. He ridicule his office, and he ridicule his personality. The vice president of Nigeria saying that. I mean, how did he describe him? He said, he said, I uh, he said ice cream eh? seller. He called one person. How can you describe the vice president? And eh? you are in the same party with him. You describe eh, the vice he, he described like that. And he described Buari. He, he described Buari like that. Yes, yes. He described oh. um, he described Lawan, which is a northern. No, can he describe Buari like that? We he are said, talking of the most exotic. Can he describe? <laughs> Um, 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 uh, uh, this thing I, like that. I don't think I think you are reaching. You are searching right now because he described Lawan as a tomato seller. It, that way, a president the, is the president the, now. The, so the, yeah, that means is a is a person that lack orderliness, and that is the person you want him to represent you. And you I don't want him to represent. I don't want him to represent me. But you guys ignore a brilliant. It person. must not represent oh, oh, anybody. Oh, oh, oh.
Oh, all right. If it's not representing you, then you have this guy. So this is the guy that you can have. In, in, Maybe one man will oh, you oh, want oh, him to represent on. you. Oh, all right. Uh, I, I want him to represent me before this guy. <laughs> Your Excellency. Look at that. Uh, former Vice President <laughs> and the candidate of the People's Democratic Party and by the grace of God, the incoming president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The, the chairman of the board of... Look at that. So, so <laughs> that's, that's, the, that, that, that's, that's a very, that's a very, very intelligent and very smart guy. Very smart, very intelligent. It is no controversy. Oh, what's no mal, no mal, no, 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 what do you mean, sir? Have you watched his interview oh, like before? A, One man. Have you watched his that, interview before? That, that's have you watched now. this guy's interview not, before? Is that not the Dirish? Have you watched his interview before? <laughs> <laughs> you never watched one of really? his interviews before. Go and sit down and watch this guy's interview. You know that he's a very intelligent guy, Okowa. We need him to get braces first before he interviews anybody. You know, you, you want him to get braces. Okay. What I have discovered about one more, one more like somewhere that. Uh, that has baby, is it like speech? Like it looks no, no, uh, somebody that has that punch, 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 and verb, punch and verb. Okoa doesn't have punch and verb now. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. has punch and verb, you know, but uh, Okoa, and one my, man, my, it, it looks like my, somebody, excellent, it, uh, yeah, what's that, but, I mean, it, look, it looks like that. somebody I would tell that go and sit down there, he doesn't you know? command, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So if something happens to Atiku, that guy will be president. Do you, do you, can you imagine that? Huh? So so there it is. Uh, but, but back to you, sir. Jonathan, right? Huh? Another good Jonathan. So what, what well, do you mean? Another good Jonathan in the office, right? No, no. Somebody, somebody was saying that uh, if anything happens to Tinobu, Chetima will be president. So okay. we, then, we then brought up a, a clip of uh, Okowa to see what the alternative would be. And it doesn't really bode well for Nigeria. So oh, I saw that. That's so what I'm saying. If he becomes, if he takes over from Atiku, then we have another Bula Jonathan, another very docile. Yeah, yeah. Those some do the dealing. Yeah. So, so, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, so so back to you, uh, Saki. Uh, actually, Okowa Okowa might be very intelligent. So uh, well, it maybe, could well be, but uh, you know. Maybe let's let's forget about the way people speak English. Or, the way people present themselves, you know. Uh, let's focus on more more uh, results. You know? Does it does he have the brain to to you know assemble team of uh, ministers or team that we like get policies that we drive the economy to where it should be? So I think that should be our main focus. I I don't want to be carried away by the way people speak, you know. Uh, maybe this person knows how to talk or people are gifted differently you understand so uh, i don't want to be carried away by that that's oh. my take on that oh, all right brilliant well put so uh sake i said a pressure of time let me go on from you to ajale koko who cannot seem to con uh so now you have the floor ajale koko so start off start out of uh ajale koko which the bbc controversy like mohammed he's got the koboko out again and BBC to get the flogging this time around. Uh, is it right to dish out punishment, Ajahn Lekoko? Well, uh, we know that um, Lai Mohammed is the messenger of the government. So when it comes to issues like this, he will hurriedly come out and defend indefensible and promote um failure so um what bbc did um should be commendable i mean it's commendable rather and um they inform us 
of a lot of things that we didn't know, like the conflict between the Hausa and Fulani. You know, generally, a lot of our people will think Hausa and Fulani are, you know, as being described, Hausa and Fulani, they are one people and, um, you know, they, um, they, 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 they are one brother and they, um, they, they see things the same way and they, uh, uh, as if they, they are the same, as if they are the same people. But in that video, we are able to see that the Fulanese and Awusas are at war with each other. One side, both of them are trying to kill each other. Or rather, let me say they are killing each other. The Awusa Fulanese, I mean, the Awusa are known that, are known as farmers while the Fulanese are herders. And the herders are trying to take their land, drive them up from their um, ancestral home. And those people are fighting back. But who are the ones that are, are better armed than the other? The Fulani are better armed than the Fulani, I mean, than the Awusas. And the Awusas were saying in that video that, look, these people, they are like chicken that they don't have no strength that if they can get armed as they are, they will finish them. So the problem between Awusa and Fulani was, I mean, that, that, that video brought it to open to us that these people are not, as we are looking at them, they have sharp division among them, and uh, uh, there's conflict among them as well. So it's, it's a video that revealed a lot of things. It revealed that uh, those criminals can be, you know, they, they can easily get access to them. They are not living in the sky. They are not living on the ground. They know where they are. Um, Gumi revealed that to us several times. The Nigerian state, Nigerian government know where these people are. But for one reason or the other, they refuse to go after them. Gumi said it on national TV. What has the government done? Nothing. But instead, they allow these people to gain more ground, to, you know, gain more strength and become more powerful and make more money. And now they are even stronger than, than, than even the state. They are stronger than Nigeria armed forces. And that is why they can be so, they can, they can, they can have that, you know, um, they can be so emboldened to come to the capital city to attack the last line of defense in the state, the brigade guard. Brigade guard are known as the last line of defense. They don't come out and fight. When, it, when the fight reaches them, you know that, yes, they are they are out to defend the authority, the power, the seat of power. That is specifically what they are meant for. But look at the way they were killed in, in Abuja, like chicken. So um, this video is a very good video that brought a lot of fact to Nigerians that this administration, you know, for one reason or the other, lack the political will lack the the strategy and 
and um, it, it shows that they they are not they they are not they are incapable of winning this war. So BBC got access to them. They interviewed them from what they or they, I believe that video they must have covered that video for several months before they package it together and release it to the public the way we have seen it. So it's just shameful to Nigerian state, and that is why they are so. That is why they are so mad at B BBC. That is why they threaten them that they're going to do something. But what they don't know is this, that all this humiliation, all this attack, all these draconian rules and law and measures against the media is sending, is sending signal to international community that that country is not safe, we are a democracy that is not open. We are a secretive democracy. And a secretive democracy is a democracy that can never be attractive to investors and to even people that want to come to your country for, for vacation or for any other business whatsoever. So that is what they don't know. Nigeria lost a lot of money, billions, when 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 they slam um hammer on on twitter nigerians that use it twitter to run their businesses lost billions upon billions i mean trillions of naira for those several months that they they they, they closed down the operation of twitter in nigeria so and we are saying that we don't have enough money we don't have enough forex a lot of businesses that generate for us for that country, this administration killing. And what are we talking about? So BBC, commendable, good job. And uh, it's not new. They are not the first, it's not the first time for them to do it. We have watched several video in the past when uh, uh, media houses um, visited um, um, tag terrorists in various places, interviewed them. And uh, we watched them on 60 Minutes in America. We watched Osama bin Laden. We watched uh, 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 Abu Musa Azakawi. We watched several others. So, what is the big deal about them? They should. This should have. This should have helped them to improve on how to go after these people. BBC have done well to inform, to give them enough information about these people that if they are serious administration that really want to fight this insurgency or this um, um, uh, 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 terrorist, they should have used vital, I mean, uh, vital information that is released in that video. They should have got in touch with BBC to see how they can get some intelligent information from them and use it to go after these people and, 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 and eliminate and exterminate these people. But these are the people that don't want to do anything, but they like blame game. They want to, they want to, they want to, uh, all, all they do is to run this administration with lies, propaganda, misinformation, and then, you know, um, blame others for their failure. Now they are blaming BBC. Let's see how it will end up. But BBC have done well for common people like me and you. If not for BBC, we won't have this issue to be discussed on this platform. It's a rich flag. It's a it's a rich. It's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a it, it, I mean, it was a video that carries a lot of huge information for 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 the world about what is going on in Nigeria. And it's a shame that our Nigerian state are deteriorated to what it is with we, we uh, what we have seen today in terms of uh, um, insecurity. So that's my take. One man. All right, brilliant. And to the space, uh, a new tariff to be introduced to uh, mobile phone calls and data. So yet more squeeze on the poor Nigerian person. This is another way. When you see a government that doesn't understand, when you see people in position of power, in position of authority, that doesn't know how business works, that doesn't know how uh, economy run, this is the way they work. We are in a very, very serious economic crisis. Do we need more money to run the state? Yes. 
What measure are they taking to prune down excesses in governmental circle? What have they done? Nothing. But then they don't want to call down on their excesses. They don't want to call down on their um, 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 uh, 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 government um, uh, how, do I, how, do I, how do I put it? Spending. spending particularly on um, salaries of politicians across, across the country and the advisor. They don't want to count down on that but they want to heavily tax businesses businesses that are struggling businesses to run business in nigeria now is is a is a big problem nigeria is most anti-business economy in any way you want to look at it most anti-business the worst place to run business in the world why you say that why what was the basis what's the basis Mm. So you want me to tell you the basis? Number yes. one, insecurity. Number two, you don't have good infrastructure. Number three, heavy taxes. Number four, you cannot even get access to forex if you want to run if you are, if you want to run international business. We see businesses closing down. You just see the the airline, the the number one airline in Nigeria, the aero contractor. The, the 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 Dana, they just close down. And pity this our man, this Igbo man that runs this airline. Oh, that yeah, guy, man. Yeah, man. that might that guy might close down too. Is that the economy that you want to go and invest your money? What are you talking about, uh, 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 Kulata? This is the worst place. So this is the most anti-business economy I, I, I ever well, that, in the world. I'm just, just, I'm just asking you to back it, your statement. Well, I'm backing it. I'm backing it. I've just backed Ajah. it. I just told you all this reason. Yes. Ajah, Ajah, let, me, let me help you. Kulata, you said you're in this platform that you were doing business in Nigeria, that you had to, you had to close down your business because of all this crap going on in Nigeria. Didn't you say that? Yeah. I, I shut it down. Now, when Barry won't kill me with. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I told you to back up your statement. Uh, you, you just make and then he's backing and inside and that back he should tax up. people to, to debt. And he <laughs> can close his own business down because he cannot run his business. It, the environment is not uh, is not uh, no, it, it's it's because business. It, if I was living in Nigeria, I would have still continued. But I have a choice now. I can take my money to another economy. That's the thing. Oh, There's really? A why did you take... Why why did you, uh, is that good? Uh, is that uh, good? What, what, what do you your mean? money to another economy? Uh, uh, I'm citizen of two countries now. Oh, so really? Shabba, Shabba, my young. You yeah. see how selfish human beings are? Huh? You see how selfish, selfish we are? Now, money you see how selfish we are? Two countries as well. I'm there's, citizen of two countries as well. Ajande Goku, there's a difference eh? between charity and business. If oh, you want to send money really, to Nigeria, really. I send money to Nigeria but you almost want, every you week. You want other people there to be taxed to death. Ah, the you country. are recommending them to be taxed. But you can run, you can move your business out, run away because... Am I not, you, am I not taxed in America? Are, is, are you heavily taxed in America the way you are heavily taxed in Nigeria? Oh, yeah, yeah, I am. That is not I true. Am. I am. That is not true. I am. I, I don't know wait. the kind of I don't know the kind of business that you run that you want to tell me you're very tax. Very, oh, I, very I, I run a business. I run a business too. You get well, tax return in America. Well, you get you get tax return. You get tax return. Uh, it depends on how you file now. You, you may not you may not you may not get anything back in your tax return. It depends on how you file. You get tax return. You get tax return. No, I've been paying back. I've been paying back a lot of taxes actually. Not even getting any returns. You make this figures. And, uh, you don't need to tell me exactly what you make, but if you make six figures, then you get a, you get a lot of tax. 
six figures. Are you joking? So does Kulata sound like a six figure man to you? Kulata, Kulata sounds like a seven figure man to me. Uh, six figure, uh, uh, six figure, uh, get category uh, now. Six uh, figure, get category uh, now. Uh, 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 when you say that it's heavily tasked, that means it's, it's making six figures now. He said no, no, I'm heavily tasked. No, no, it's making I mean, seven figures. Seven what, figures. What is, That's what it's making. And the high, the high seven figures, not just the low seven figures. The people that are getting taxed are the people not making too much money. If you are making too much money, you won't pay anything in tax. If you are not paying any money, but it's the people in the middle that suffer all this taxation voila, in most countries. It's the middle class that suffers it. So let's not pretend like uh, you don't have to be making anything special to, to, be, to take the brunt of the taxes. But if I'm a billionaire now, I won't pay a single cobble in tax. But if I'm poor too, I won't pay a single cobble in tax. That's just how it works. Colata, the only way you get that kind of tax you're talking about is if you make six figures. Let's forget this billionaire thing you're talking about, we know. But what oh, I'm talking yeah. about is that if you're paying every tax, it makes you make six figures above. That's right. That's right. So what, are, what, are we, what are you talking about? So you are that's right. you more money then. So... So but I'm paying the, the, the fact that the I'm paying taxes is everybody's paying taxes. What, like... Yeah, you get. Uh, I don't think you're complaining about us, uh, I don't even know what you're complaining about. I don't know. Tax the thing they bite person on, but let's just. I just need to go. Here in Australia, the most, the big, the billionaires here, they pay lower tax. Some people pay yes, somewhere now, in America, dollars. In America, too, they don't pay any taxes. They don't they pay tax. get money back. Uh, they, they claim get, they, get money back. they do more charity and they claim it back on their tax. And they will declare losses as well. You go and buy, you go and buy painting that someone painted and you value it, whatever. And then you say it's uh, part of the uh, wanting, wanting. That's how you get tax break. So there's so many, I mean, let's not talk so, about that. So Nigeria, Nigeria is a hostile place for business. You cannot run business in Nigeria. One man. I stopped running business in Nigeria since the time of Jonathan. When Jonathan introduced some taxes, and I can envision it that the way this guy is going, they will continue to increase this tax. I just stop it. And the worst is what we are experiencing now. So wh what I'm trying to say is this. This administration trying to tax the... Do you know, do you know that the taxes on the telecommunication company is... Um, they are compelled to pay that tax in dollar, not in Naira. MTN. They are compelled to pay these taxes in dollar. And when they pay in dollar, convert it to how much it's going to be in Naira, and then look at um, who they're going to pass it on. They will pass it down the line on the customer. And uh -huh. that means that, and that means that Nigerian people will suffer because you know the way they run their own this thing, they pay for data, they pay because it's, it's the poor people that will be affected most. The rich people they can afford to pay anyhow, but the people, the middle class, particularly, they will be affected most. The middle class and the poor that are struggling to survive, to make ends meet. Those are the ones that will suffer it most. And when you when you crush your population with heavy taxes, it will kill businesses. It will, you know, kill your revenue generation and your economic growth will suffer. So what are they going to achieve? They're not going to achieve anything. They will save it. I mean, the economy is the economy that is going to suffer more by these heavy taxes on Nigeria. I mean, on this uh, telecommunication, because we know what telecommunication represents now in the world. Telecommunication is the most important to use tools in running business. You don't have it. You are, you are, you, you are nowhere. You are not in this world. All right. But now they want to put heavy tax on that. That will cross some people on the personal note. It will cross some business on personal note. I mean, it will cross some businesses and it will affect 
government to of revenue generation from businesses because a lot of businesses are struggling now they are struggling to survive petroleum or diesel the cost of diesel is killing businesses in nigeria because nigeria have no electricity the only source of provide providing electricity is diesel to fire generating plant and the cost is killing businesses a lot of businesses are killing are, are closing down so they don't understand how to run business and instead of them to see a way of solving the problem they're trying to bring uh, economic hardship on nigeria and that will further kill uh um, um uh, our uh, that, our economic growth will suffer severely for, uh, 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 suffer severely for this and uh, um it, 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 the result is going to be economic backward for nigeria already we are we are experiencing it revenue is oh, not right. is not as much local. as what we we are paying to service the debt so we are we are gradually creeping in into economic disaster one more that's my take on that all right brilliant thank you Ajale Koko. so Ajale Koko, we've come up to the six hour mark so let me go on to ola quickly ola you came in laterally so just a quick commentary on the uh, main story, which is the BBC narrative. Just a, a short sounding from you, and then I start to round off. So, Ola, BBC versus Lai Mohammed. So, nothing much for me to say about BBC the, uh, versus Lai Mohammed. You know, Lai Mohammed is one of those people that um, made use of uh, the media to his own advantage to send propaganda. So, uh he knows the implication and he's trying to block everything so giving that man the chances of bringing that in he will return to decree number four so if that guy doesn't want anything so nothing much to say so it's just a oh. dictator oh, we really right. see uh what they are saying but it's not even saying the implication what the bbc are trying to do that they are trying to help nigeria to solve the problem by showcasing the problem to the world but he's only concerned about himself. So he's just a dictator, nothing more. All right, brilliant. So so like I said, we've come to the six hour mark and you know, obviously we, it's long enough, isn't it? So so we seek to start to round off, uh, of course, to like the Le Coco. So be just as uh, succinct as you can. We kick it off with rational mind. So rational mind is that time again. Yeah, uh, well, thank you. Um, yes, I will just be quick on this. Um, our tax law needs to be reformed. Uh, remunerate those people who collect taxes. You will call down on corruption among them. Um, yes, Nigeria will not move forward if the federal government cycle uh, the media, like we're trying to see what they're trying to do right now, because that's the source of our information that we deliver to on here. Uh, woman, thank you so much. Uh, every Nigerian should um, make their own decision. We are only here just to talk about these matters. We we'll analyze them to our to the best of our abilities, and it's up to you Nigerians to decide what you want to do uh, going forward. Uh, one man hope to be here with you guys in the next session. Have a good night, good morning, and good afternoon. Brilliant. So thank you. Thank you, Rational Mind. So, so from Rational Mind, we're going to Thomas. Thomas, to you. Uh, thank you, one man. Uh, Nigeria pay taxes. Our problem is remitting the taxes to the appropriate quarters. And even the little they remit to the appropriate quarters, which is the government, is not being used in a good uh, in a in in, in what is uh, meant to use for. That is for simple basic amenities and infrastructure for the government. Um, Canvas for your candidate, vote for your candidate. Everybody have a choice. Uh, but Yoruba local. Thank you, Wama. May God bless Nigeria. Thank you. Uh, th thank you. Thank you, Thomas. So that's Thomas. So thank you, Thomas. So from Thomas, we're going to Saki. Uh, Saki, you, you know, the routine. Yeah. Thank you, Oma. That's been a very wonderful session. We have tried today. I don't want to take your time. You know, keep educating the Nigerian uh, populace. You know, anytime I come to this space, I learn new things. You know, it is a space for enlightened minds and space for enlightenment. Give it up. I'll come join you in the next session. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Saki. So that's Saki Father, the man with the, I would say, the best voice on the platform. 
uh, maybe exploding myself, but uh, the man with the second best voice. So thank uh, I'm only joking, but uh, thank you, Saki. So from Saki, we go on to Ola, Ola, that time of the day again. How many minutes are you giving me? Well, it's just a, a short window. You know, it's, we are six hours I, and five, and I five minutes. I just want to copy because uh, why I'm saying it is this, when I start speaking sometimes, when I see people speak for two minutes, when I start speaking for one minute, the next thing I start saying, no, 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 I never tell you to hurry up unless you are going excessively, you know, but, but you, you, you've seen the template from others, so, so maybe follow that template. Because what, 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 can, what, I, what I can say here is this, on the taxation issue, if you are saying we should plug the leakages, I understand. There are a lot of inputs you consider when you are running taxes. You don't just tax people for the sake of taxation. As it is now, Nigeria, based on my own personal data, and I try to visit all those, uh, some revenue agencies to even see what Kulata was posting, not just to believe in the data presentation there. Nigerians are overtaxed and dubiously so, more than most countries you see there. And, it should not be fault of Nigeria. So advocating for more taxation now, when we are not even effective with what we have, to me, is not going to all go well with the well-being of Nigeria. And we should not even try to entertain that. Other than that, thank you, everyone. Hope to see you later. Brilliant. Th thank you, Ola. So that, that's Ola, of course, one of your long-standing voices on the platform. So from Ola to the guy who started all the controversy, Kulata, the Wahala guy. <laughs> Thank you, Oman. Uh, well, Nigeria is in trouble, revenue trouble. And uh, we can't generate external revenue because of insecurity of um, oil bunkering. And we can't generate internal uh, because of insecurity. Our agriculture is shut down because of insecurity. So uh, we also need to sit up. We need to plug leakages. We need to block corruption. And we need to stop paying for a government, over bloated government we can't afford, and start phasing out, um, phasing out subsidies. And we need to generate more money with taxation. I mean, I'm not saying increase the rates, just expand the base and reduce the rates. So if we want to get serious, we have to make a lot of tough decisions. And that's, how the, that's the only way the country can be sustainable. So it's not popular, I know that, but it is what it is. Thank you. Oh, brilliant. Well, cool. So thank, thank you, uh, Kulata. So that's Kulata now. Uh, we are a helmet the next time you are coming, Kulata, because they'll be coming for you. So from Kulata to the man that you are, are who have been waiting for, the mighty one, Ajale Koko, the final word. Uh, thank you, woman. Thanks to everybody that came on the platform today. Uh, please, uh, you have done well. Come back again tomorrow and let's do it again. Um, taxation over taxation is not good on an economy that is struggling. The general economy is struggling. Businesses are struggling. Any introduction of more tax will not stimulate the economy, but rather kill economic growth. Nigerian people, people in charge of Nigerian economy doesn't know how economy work. They don't know how businesses work. And that's why they are coming out with this measure. It will kill economic growth. It will reverse, you know, everything in that country. And uh, that country cannot have economic prosperity as long as they continue to put more tax because Businesses are not doing good. They have to start from the top. Government SSEs must be cut down drastically. They have to cut it down. All these positions must be cut down. Pay must be cut down. And that is when Nigeria will see that, yes, leadership are leading by example. Leadership are sacrificing and people will be ready to sacrifice. But when we don't see that, people and businesses will not see government as serious. So, other than that, let me thank those of you at the commentary section. You are the strength of the platform. Keep doing what you know to do best. From our brother, Alexander Gomez, chairman, uh, um, one man went to more. 
thank you, Alessandra Akashi. Secretary, thank you, our celebrities. Thank you, Oga. Thank you, uh, Rahim Ibrahim. Thank you, um, Ortiz, the serviceman. Thank you, and uh, every other person is there. Uh, thank you all. So you have done well. Come back tomorrow. And to one man, the man that drives us every time, bring us together, I say thank you a lot as well. So one man, the ego, bring it on to us tomorrow, and we shall join you to do it again. See you tomorrow, one man, the ego. Have a good evening. Thank you, Ajale Koko. So, thank you, Ajale Koko. So that's the mighty Ajale Koko rambling things off as only he can do. So that was Ajan Lekoko, and that tells you that the session has come to an end. So when you hear closing uh, remarks from Ajan Lekoko, then you know that you are not hearing much more from the platform until later, only to invite you to uh, click on the like button if you haven't done that already. The, like, the likes on the, on the streamings, they're never really that impressive. There was a time I was pushing hard for it, but then I just gave it up, uh, you know, because it keeps saying click on like and you don't see it. So it's just despairing so somewhat that you even put in this effort and then you're just asking people to click on just one lousy button and then that seems to be a task. So I'm not quite sure what the task is to click on a like button, but if you are not that lazy bones that cannot even move an arm, then move an arm and uh, click on that like button. So click on the like button and if you are not already subscribed in that same motion, swivel to the sub subscribe button and click on that as well. Haven't done that, uh, come meet us tomorrow where we shall do it all over again, uh, almost likely twice tomorrow. So I'll leave it there, carry the conversation that we do in the comment section, but here I say, peace.